Congratulations, everybody. You're all in the money at the 2023 PSPC. Welcome to the Bahamas and the PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. This is day four. It is the penultimate day of this unique $25,000 buy-in tournament. 52 players remain, and today we play down to the final six and make six millionaires. Every single hand live and cards up. Hello, I am James Hartigan. Alongside me are Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Griffin Benja. Hello, everyone. Griffin, you are two for two in PSPC caches. Yes. 14th in 2019, <clears throat> 141st place finish in 2023. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what trend that is. Maybe uh, in 2026, I'll finish 1412th. But <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was incredible. I was just very grateful to, to sneak into the money, if I'm honest. <laughs> So we started with a field of 1,014. As I just said, 52 remain right now. Most of the near $25 million prize pool still to pay out. And Joe, when we do get to the final six today, that's when we're talking seven-figure scores. Seven figures, two commas, six millionaires, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth, not bad either. Good point. And of course, $4 million for the winner. Now, yesterday was the day that the bubble burst. Let's see how it went down on day three. Two hundred and twenty-five players return. Well over a third of the field, platinum pass winners, hoping to make the money. Naturally, play slowed as we approach the bubble, but some familiar faces entertained us on the main stage. <laughs> it's a table full of washed up guys. Table full of four. We got a lot of memories, you know. Hand for hand play lasted for over two hours. The short stacks clinging on for dear life. Then, the bubble burst. Maurizio Pice eliminated in 176th place. The remaining 175 all locking up a min cash of 35k. As expected, the post-bubble bust out bonanza followed. It went into hyperdrive. Do we even know how to play poker? <laughs> And as the bust-out frenzy finally settled, Bulgaria's Peter Kalev backed the chip lead, ending the day with a stack of over 3.3 million. We knew going into day three, Joe, that this bubble was going to go the distance. It did not disappoint. Uh, no, it took a very, very long time, and I guess they sort of worked out. It could have been somewhat frustrating. I'm sure it was frustrating for the players. A little bit frustrating for people watching, but that tension that it built because we were all so invested in people cashing and it paid off, I guess, literally and figuratively. Uh, Griffin, how long was it for you? How did it feel from a player's perspective? I, I mean, honestly, it was actually pretty surreal. Uh, my experience of the of the bubble was like, it was, it was it was like it went from 188 to 178. It felt like 10 minutes. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is uh, this is going. We're we're really moving here. And then it felt like it was at 178 for an hour. And it might have been. I don't even know. And it just nobody was busting. It's like, how is this even possible? And I, I listen. I was running out of chips. <laughs> So how many chips did you actually have? Like, how many big blinds when the bubble burst? Yeah, so the reason I say running out of chips is because I literally did not have plural chips. I had a single green chip that I called the chip of destiny, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I finally got in about three from it coming to the big blind, and I was really considering, and, you know, and even between hands, asking people, like, what do I do in the big blind? Do I call off my extra 1,000, the 12, 12? Like, like, do I wait till the small blind for another hand? It's... I've never seen anything like it. Incredible stuff. Now, of course, 
Many of the Platinum Pass winners made it into the money, Joe. In fact, Christoph Volkenhorst, one of the German uh, Chase Your Dream qualifiers, he cashed. And I saw him this morning. I said, Christoph, are you happy? And he went, I'm overwhelmed. And he said the bubble was so stressful, it gave him a headache. We have got 15 Platinum Pass winners remaining. That's just under 30% of the field. Yeah, the bubble was so stressful, it gave him a headache. It was so long, I grew a second beard. It was very, <laughs> very stressful for all of us. I guess the point I'll bring up, though, and I don't want to be a Debbie Downey here, but 15 platinum pass winners, we got a 28 big blind average. Yep. That doesn't mean everyone has 28 big blinds. That means some people have 50, and some people have, like, 9. And as much as we want the platinum pass winners to continue on in this tournament, the sad reality is we're going to lose a bunch of them today. We desperately need some chip consolidation, especially if we are going to get to six today. Uh, you did highlight not everyone is shallow. Not everyone is short. Who are the chip leaders coming into play today on day four? Still a lot of talent in this field, Griffin. Yeah, absolutely. And and we can see not a single stack over 100 big blinds. Pretty irregular for so deep in a tournament, but I really like that for the Platinum Pass winners. You know, if it was longer levels and bigger stacks, that wouldn't favor the uh, the Platinum Pass winners. Yeah, now two pass winners in that top 10. Dominic Nitscher is an accomplished pro. Yes. I, I am thrilled to see Tom Parsons in the top five. He is a Twitch regular. He's a member of Lex's community. One is passed at Lex Live 2. And Joe, he was a guest on the Poker in the Years podcast. He was our Reservoir Dogs super fan. Do you remember that? Nice. Yes. M Mr. Pink, the ear, um, a lot of swearing. I know you remember the movie. Do you remember the quiz? I don't remember the quiz, but I remember, you know, Tom from yesterday. Yeah. I mean, chances are you probably lost that quiz. <laughs> um, now, of course, Peter Kalev. We saw him, Griffin, at yeah. EPT Prague, made the final table. DJ Kalev, he's in a strong position today. Yeah, very much so. And there was a, a huge hand against uh, Fedor Holtz there. I, you know, I didn't actually see what Fedor had, but I saw a suited wheel ace in his hand and a lot of chips in the middle. So I think we saw one of our classic sourdough-like situations, and, and that's given him a massive stack going into the, the, the day here today. I think I'm right in saying, Joe, it was ace-three into ace-king. Yeah, I, I right. didn't quite catch the hand, but it was a low suitor days. Yeah, mm. yes. Uh, so Caleb got a little bit lucky. Uh, he is the big stack coming into play today. We caught up with him at the end of play last night. The tournament is going very good so far for me. I'm really excited that I have that moment uh, to uh, run that good in uh, that special tournament. Uh, I, I I'm playing good. Uh, I'm very happy how I played uh, the hand. Uh, I run good in one very big hand, which uh, I uh, won a very big call win against Federal Holtz. Uh, and that made me the big stack I'm currently having. I will prepare my mind to, to be calm and uh, focused on the game. I'll go to the gym in the morning, then uh, have a breakfast and uh, prepare to crush my opponents. Okay, so <laughs> as a guy that comes from the old school poker world, um, you know, calm and collected and go to the gym, I'm not a huge fan of that, but at least crushing your opponents has yes. still survived through the ages. Uh, <laughs> now we've got seven tables still in play, and the irony is table seven would be the obvious selection as a feature table, but guess what? It's first to break. So instead, let's see who's going to be on the main stage today, starting with our secondary feature table, headlined by Fedor Holt, who lost that big hand against Kalev late last night. Wow, this is a shallow table, Joe. Yeah, I don't think the real story here is how short the short stacks are. It's how short the big stacks are. <laughs> Chip leader at the table has 36 big blinds. That's not a comfortable stack at all. And on the main stage, we've got Blake Bond, who does have a playable stack, 70 big blinds, three platinum pass winners, Jerome Moreau, Omar Del Pino, and Esteban Macillon. Talal Shikurchi is still in the field. Of course, Talal made the final table of the first PSPC. Is it possible, Griffin, that Talal could go back to back? I'm still not over the fact that I, I played against him in 2019 and, uh, and you know, I had him all in with the best hand, ace-queen against ace-nine. So I don't want to talk about Talal. Sorry, did, did James <laughs> ask you about Talal's chances or for a bad beat story? <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, before we get to the action, I do want to highlight the Global Poker Awards. And uh, Hold on a second. So I, I, I don't like to interrupt James very often because he, he obviously 
doesn't really care for it. But we would still like you to vote for us for your fave live stream. But I have to say, the nominations are out, and y'all got it right. Nominated for best broadcaster because he is the best broadcaster. Very proud, very happy. Obviously, that vote is complete. Nominations are out. There's no more work to be done. So now you can continue on and try to get us some more accolades. Thank you very much, Joe. Also, should highlight the Poker in the Ears has been nominated for best podcast. But yes, what we need you to do is if EPT Live was your fave live stream of 2022, cast your ballot at globalpokerindex.com slash awards. I thank you. Right. It's going to take a while to get down to the final six. A strap in for the long ride as we begin day four of the PSPC. Well, at least the players are in their seats at the feature table. I have to say, Griffin, it's actually a novelty to not be sending you off to the table and actually have you with us at the desk for the full first session of play. Is Griffin still in? Ah. <laughs> uh... You know, we got a lot of those really annoying questions yesterday about, I'm not even going to say the names because no, I don't want to start it again. No, 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 no one was asking about you. Yeah, that's weird. But I did bring it up. I was like, what's, wait, what's going on with our, with our beautiful baby boy? <laughs> yes. He must yes, have a lot child, of chips. And, call me. and then someone was like, mm -mm, he does not have a lot of chips. No, no. I'm really looking forward to seeing Blake Bone at this table. Blake's a guy I've known for a long time, an American reg, uh, a fun um, reg slash rec. It's like a soft... C, and uh, he's hilarious. Look, he, he's got a really Thank fun you. style. So we are going to play two levels back to back. 60 minute clock in the PSPC. This is level 23. Blinds are 20,000, 40,000 with a 40k big blind ante. Hand one of the day, Talal Shakurchi. So Talal is a Scoop main event champion. Was WCoop player of the series in 2021. Has had a lot of strong results in high roller events, including a final table appearance at the first PSPC in 2019. I've told the story before, Griffin, but just before the pandemic, right before lockdown hit, I was taking a train from London to Surrey and Talal was on my train. No. It's the first time I've had the chance to really have a, a long conversation with him. There was nowhere Talal could go. Yeah, did he own the train? <laughs> <laughs> Is it his train you were on? I mean, obviously, a really nice, polite guy, yes. but also such a smart guy. Yeah. I did say I didn't want to talk about Talal, though, so it's weird you would bring it up. Unlucky, for the first buddy. Five minutes of the broadcast. Yeah, well, that's the price you pay for telling a bad beat story <laughs> on this broadcast. That's uh, that's fair, actually. <laughs> we have an all in here. Eduardo Lopez shoving from the button with ace eight. Jerome Moreau with ace five in the big blind. Ooh. Oh, Barry Uzi. Yeah, this is this is gonna have to play uh, as a fold at this stack depth, but um, certainly worthy of some consideration. You can't um, three bet bluff this. Well, it's already all in. <laughs> okay, yes, good, you got me. <laughs> it's fifty-fifty whether I I knew it was all yeah. in already. Yeah. Uh, so yes, Joe, you just highlighted <laughs> Barry Uzi, Ray and Shamas sat there in the uh, orange sweater with a monkey around his neck. I, I, this guy's whole shtick was roosters, and now he's a monkey. I guess yeah, he just 30. likes animals of all yeah. kinds. Is it 30? Yeah. No, we won't get our phones in 30. I, I know, I'm saying if we, if we had we're available to know. I mean, Griffin's reinvented himself a million times. Why can't this kid? We all have our spies out there checking. No. Correct. I right there. Too much information. <laughs> Cards PTSD on Twitch says he's My just the right king here. of the jungle, baby. Good old Blake Bone. I got a bone to pick with you. Zoran wants to know, Joe, if your TV was stolen from your room last night. My TV is still in my room. The bed sheets, on the other hand, might not still be here when I leave on Saturday. Just in case anyone's wondering, he is doing air quotes. <laughs> and I did air quotes Saturday. So Lopez in the cutoff with ace jack has just shy of 20 big blinds. Blue chips, 5K, green chips, 25K, white chips, 100K. Uh, 
Oh, that's great. Nice one, Sinister. Uh, you uh, want to touch my monkey? The one kind of movie been... appearance by David Letterman. <laughs> Interesting spot for Chamas here. I think, you know, you might need to fold in this spot more often than you put more chips in. But when you do put more, more chips in, yeah, you're going to want to play it as a call. You know, you don't have blockers in a three bet. There's not going to be any real post flop play at this stack depth normally, unless you just call. You don't want to. Well, now we see Shikurchi, the King 10. And this is obviously a quite a tight fold, but it's because, you know, it's a very calculated one by Talal. Even though King 10, you look at it and you think, okay, that's a pretty good hand. Should probably complete here. The reality is when you start breaking down the ranges of this cutoff and button, you know, they have all the better kings. Um, you know, they're going to have the ace 10 and the like. So that's really where that sort of thought process comes from. <clears throat> Holler at Twitch says, genuinely, is Tom Parsons still in? Guys, you've got to be here on time. We start the show every day, 12.30 Eastern, although tomorrow it's going to be 1 p.m. for the final table. You've got to see the pregame. We talked about Tom. We talked about how he won his pass, how he appeared on the podcast. And yes, he's fifth in chips at the start of the play. Also, there should be like a 15 to 30 minute moratorium on asking questions at all when you get to the stream. Because most of them get answered in that amount of time. Somebody logged in immediately to say, sorry, just got here. How many people left? It was the opening titles. And you can't you rewind on YouTube too? <laughs> just, just wait. Just hang out. Just watch. Just enjoy. So... After the three bet. Oh, no, it's just a no, call. Just a call, yes, yes. Just a call from Ryan Shamas. We do go to a 7-7-5 seven, seven, flop. Lopez still with the best hand, ace high, and he continues. So, Shamas is now trying to tell the story that, you know, maybe I was trapping you pre here. Maybe I have two kings and, you know, I'm flatting because you're raising late position, and now I'm starting to bet. It's, you know, it's not really credible to rep something like pocket eights or pocket nines. Those hands would be played as, more often than not, a three-bet call against the 20 big blinds of Lopez. So it's it's a pretty limited story that, that Chamas is telling. But at the same time, you know, even if you think your opponent's repping aces, kings, and that's pretty much it, if you're sitting there with ace-jack, are you prepared to go down to the wire on this you know, this hope that he's just stone bluffing with a hand like yeah. 10 nine of diamonds. I think it's call downs like this from Lopez, if he can make it, that really separate the, you know, the, the, the players that are going to make huge seven figure scores in this tournament. I mean, there's going to be, you're going to be put in tough spots like this and I'd love to see Lopez call again and again. And does. This is just awesome poker. Check calling two streets with ace high. And now a complete brick on the river. Does Chamas have... Can he... Th it's does amazing. Lopez it's give... Okay, Lopez has given him the opportunity. Now go on about Chamas. I mean, Lopez was... Yeah, he's been check calling. And yeah. gave up. Chamas gave Checks up. Checks it back. So nice play, Eduardo Lopez winning that part off Berriuzzi. And that means Lopez is now playing a 30 big blind stack. That's good for second place on the leaderboard at that this wow. particular table. There are so many shallow stacks right now. We saw how shallow it is at the secondary feature table. Blake Bone is the only player on the main stage who's got more than 50 bigs. You know what's crazy is yesterday... Oh, just very quickly, Joe. You may have seen we just ticked down to 51. I am yeah. being informed. Bruno Voltman, first player out today. Hold on. I know that name. He does uh, online stuff. Great Dant. The Great Dant. Um, so yesterday I kind of thought that Del Pino was kind of playing a little fast and loose with the call-offs, which just involved in tons of all-ins against short stacks. Yep. I think I was kind of looking at things under the lens of the normal tournaments we're covering and and how deep people typically are. Yep. And I don't know that I dislike the strategy as much now, knowing that people are pretty short. And mm. 
if you can win a couple of those flips and just get such a massive lead that maybe that's the right strategy. Yeah, I mean, what what is interesting is, you know, the more shallow we get, <clears throat> the big high roller players are still going to have an edge. They, they've studied these blind, these uh, big blind levels enough that they really know what's going on. The, the problem, though, is is that they're so much better with a lot of chips and you have so much to gain when it's like bigger, longer levels um, that it does offer the Platinum Pass winners a, a, a fighting chance. And in a world where um, how much you study and how much you memorize and, and you know, and how mm -hmm. difficult poker is, this is still Matt Guillaume's all in over the open from Del Pino. I kind of feel like having a tournament like this on poker schedules <clears throat> is something necessary yeah. uh, to keep people interested in the game who maybe aren't as interested in studying four or five hours a day. Absolutely. That was a very uh, pretty impressively ballsy shove there by the two sixes. Um, that was an under the gun plus one open and a shove under the gun two with sixes for 20 big blinds. You have to hope that no one behind wakes up with, you know, those. I mean, I think you're going to fold out sevens through nines, but you can get cooler there. Well, that is an elimination. Fabio Bonato bowing out in 51st place, cashing for $70,700. Takes us down to 5-0. 50 remaining in the PSPC. But not in this tournament anymore. <laughs> I'm rubbing off on you. <laughs> I think you forget who was the original of terrible, <laughs> the originator of terrible stream jokes, Griffin. <laughs> That's fair. Joe asks, where does PokerStar stream in German? I would try the internet. Thank you for your question. I just had this image of you being like uh, Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan Kenobi and me being like Anakin Skywalker. And then I realized that that made James Qui-Gon Jinn. <laughs> <laughs> James is Mace Windu. <laughs> we are now down to 49. Hearing that Demetrius <laughs> Barm Pathanatis has just gone out in 50th place. Still some distance from the next money jump, by the way. Um, and I expect to see a flurry of eliminations during this first session. I'll be honest with you, as much as I don't want to say goodbye to any of these guys, we kind of need it. We need stack consolidation. Oh, it's going to happen. We yeah. need to lose 15 to 20 players this level. If only there were some kind of, I don't know like a machine we could operate in some way. You know, I don't know if there, it, could, it could have some sort of thing that you could... No, 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 no. We don't need Joe to crank it okay. until things are slowing down. Uh, right okay, now, okay, okay. it's not okay. slow. Right now, we're good. Okay, okay, we're okay, good. Okay. What I'm worried about is when things consolidate and then we're back to like a 50 big blind average and then it just grinds to a halt again when, because we're approaching the final crank. table. Yeah. When it's midnight and we're still at 10 players... That's when we need to send Joe out to crank it. It's, Got it. Look, I'm not also, I'm not a young man anymore. I used to crank it morning, noon, and night. But now it's like when I'm ready to get to bed, that's when I need to crank it. Okay. We'll save the cooler machine for later yeah, in the gotcha. day. Right now, we're continuing to watch the action at the main feature table where one of our platinum pass winners, Esteban Maquillon, has opened under the gun. We've only seen one of his cards, which is the Ten of Diamonds. Macion is a Spanish player with less than 2K in live tournament winnings. And obviously he's now guaranteed like a huge five-figure score. Fave live stream, everyone, by the way. So yes. Go ahead and throw that out there. Yes. Also, I hate to say this, but apparently it's two rounds of voting. I don't the, even know the, how that's a thing. People's Could, Choice Awards, so... I know Eric loves hearing from you with feedback on how they run the awards, I'm, so send him another email. I won't complain. I'm not going to complain. It's an impossible job running those awards. I'm not going to complain. I, I'm just telling our people out there that I may... We're probably <laughs> going to have to call on you again for the second round of voting. 
side. The good news is broadcaster's done. Whatever's happened has happened. <laughs> We've just ticked down to 48 players. Sergio Caro Marin eliminated in 49th. Another player who cashes for $70,700. So I know there's been some kind of back and forth on Eduardo Lopez, originally from Portugal, now lives in Brazil, part of the Polarized Poker team, plays Poker Stars from Brazil. So we're going to check with him which country he actually wants to represent in the PSPC. Dude, when someone wrote that he was a Polarized player, I thought that that's why there was an argument over what country he was from, because no one wants him. <laughs> He's so polarizing that they're like, no, 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 he's Portuguese. And everyone's like, no, 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 he's Brazilian. That makes less sense, to be honest, but I get it now. Jack's asking, is Fedor still in? Fedor Holtz is very much still in and is at our secondary feature table. We might head over there shortly. Meanwhile... Action has been folded to the small blind. Omar Del Pino. And this is the redemption story, Griffin. Omar Del Pino won a platinum pass to the first PSPC. He went out in 183rd place and 181 got paid. But not only is he cashed on the second occasion, having won a second platinum pass, He's guaranteed more than a min cash. Could make a really deep run here as he's facing a shove from Macchion. Yeah, nice uh, nice little sh shove spot here, blind on blind for Macchion. I mean, you know, you get pocket threes. It's not a hand that necessarily wins a great deal on, on certain textures. If you take it post-flop, you know, you're going to get a lot of raised folds there. Put in the 23 big blinds, take it down, get up to a million. Forty-eight. Oh, Hello. So yes, four eliminations so far today. Our ambition is to get down to the final six. Six millionaires will return tomorrow to play for the prestigious title and trophy and that first prize of more than four million dollars. Trans Music asking, do we have confirmation what type of monkey that is? I believe it is stuffed. Thank you for your question. Ryan Shamas opening under the gun with King Ten of Hearts. Talal, very interested in the monkey. Yeah, this one's right on the line here. Um, and yeah, we see the tight fold. That's got to be top of range there for Shikurchi. You know, going to be aware that there are some hands like this that are worked into Chamas's open range, but, you know, very few worse aces. And, uh, you know, wants to enter pots as an all inner fold at this Very stage. Literally. You know, you still have to worry about a ton of players behind. I think Talal might be more inclined to shove yep. on the button against this open. Because <clears throat> people can still wake here. up behind. <laughs> King seven of clubs for Lopez. There's a question on YouTube from Slow Poker. Is that Runner Runner guy still alive? <laughs> Actor David Costabile, one of the stars of the movie Runner Runner? No. Sadly, he exited on the first day of the PSPC, but did spend some time with us in the booth. So that question is Slow Poker referring to himself as the Runner Runner, the person that had the platinum pass. Oh, you see, I refer to that as the running man. <laughs> yes. I, 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 Justin Timberlake movie? Slow Poker is doing is doing a self plug in our YouTube stream, which see I kind of had the vision of that promotion being taken a step further, and that basically when you catch the guy who has the platinum pass, you have to kill him for it. I was just offended that no one asked me if it was me. 
I was out playing events in Northern California, Southern California. I was out there in the mix. Not one person accused me of being the runner runner. Now back to climbing for dollars. <laughs> which is literally what they're doing right now. Lopez with the flush draw. We have a post-flop flip in our hands. And Lopez yeah. is going to call the 140K, Griffin. Yeah, and now we're looking at an SPR of just about 1.2. So actually fortunate for Lopez, I think, that this turn card is the eight of hearts more than it is sort of the, the jack... Or the nine. I think there are certain turn cards that Chamas might shove on, like a like a jack of of you know jack of diamonds, and then you kind of have to fold this king high flush draw. I mean, some players might just decide to check raise and get in um, this king seven of clubs on the flop for twenty big blinds, but I don't mind the I don't mind just the call either. You don't want to get it in against the top of, of, of the under the gun range, which is like, you know, those ace queen, you know, aces and kings. No shame in playing a bit careful when your opponent's range is much stronger than you. But now gonna come out betting. And lucky for Lopez, Chamas's only defense is a king high. I think it might, it would, it would be <clears throat> a bit early, a bit easier. Pardon me to call with ace high than it is with king high, even though they're effectively, you know, kind of the same hand, same bluff catcher. You're trying to catch those club draws, something like jack nine of clubs, something like you know, of that nature. You know, if Chavez had ace king here, does he sometimes call put put Lopez on those those kind of hands? And is thinking about this, has used a time bank chip because of the kind of hands that I'm talking about. I mean, this this card pairing the board on the river. And as you can see, this ten does play and really thought about it, but elects to, to give it up. Now would have would he have folded out? The ace high, we'll never know. Looks like we're going across to our secondary feature table. It's about time. And we do have an all in. This is Tony Tran at risk with sevens, but way ahead of Mehdi Vialo, who's got sixes. At risk player is ahead. And away we go, king and queen nine. Love getting it in pre-flop here, so you don't have to be afraid of this king-queen board. Yes. But also nothing to worry about, because it's always coming seven. Velo needs to hit a six. River card. Oh. Okay, so sevens hold. Tran gets the double up. Still at 48 players in the PSPC. So I told him, yeah, you're in this one, you're a, you're a big favorite because you can't look for yourself. 470,000. It's you. Cool, 100%. Your range is supposed to be a lot better. I agree with you. Man, must be great to double up in a poker tournament. Outer table action. Chance Cornu with all in versus Daniel DeVoris. I understand your range, but I'm 
Looks like Kings for Devoris, Queen Nine for Chance. Caught speeding, which he can he can do from time to time. Good old Chance. The old Likes chance to take chances. Chancical apparently drawing dead on that turn. And wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm very curious to know how big of a pot that was. Um, it looked like blind versus blind might have been under the gun against big blind, which would have been very interesting. Um, felt like too many chips for an open shove, so maybe maybe something crazy happened. But well, maybe we'll be able to find out. Back to the main feature table. Very easy, gonna be in the small blind. Big blind, Moreau. Talal under the gun. Seed aid Fel uh, Felipe had dinner with him the other night. One of uh, Sam Grafton's Brazilian friends. Had a nice little chat with him. He's a Counter-Strike fan. Went to the big Counter-Strike event in Brazil recently. He was telling me all about it. It was wow. a very cool conversation. People still play Counter-Strike, huh? Yeah, way more now, actually. They, 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 as soon really? as I quit. Oh, yeah, dude. The first play prize was like half a million for Counter-Strike events. Back in my day, it was the biggest prize was 50K for the, our team <laughs> of five people and a manager. So we did have two eliminations right around the same time as Chance Cornuth. Mm. 46th place, Robert Cowan out. 45th place, incoming. Ace Jack versus Ace Jack here. Oopsie Daisy on the suits. So Counter Strike, that's the uh, the terrorist and the counter terrorist. Yeah. And the capture the flag, uh, the defusing the bomb. Yeah. Okay. And the boom headshot. Is that that one or is that a different one? It's boom headshot from that. I'm not sure. Uh, no, that's, no, that's like what? Um, boom headshot. Uh, is that Duke Nukem? Uh, that isn't Duke Nukem. Yeah, you're right. I should know that. I actually played that one. So, Del Pino in the tank pre-flop here against a fairly early open from Bonn. What? And you can see how, you know, we saw that fold of the ace jack from Talal just a few hands ago, and you can see how much different a spot like this is when, you know, one of the tournament chip leaders is raising another position. Their range is going to be a lot wider than the 20 big blinds under the gun from you know. So you can see how the strategies shift and Del Pino elects to three bet. Blakebone does not have your reputation for being a guy who likes to fold. So 46th place, by the way. So 47th place, Robert Cowan. 46th place, Jisheng Gong. Oh man, I really wanted to see that on stream so I could go going, going, gong. Nice. But we didn't get there. So but I saved it. Bond. This is pretty crazy if you think about it. This call, I mean, it's it's correct in the sense that, you know, they have the same hand, but look at the SPR here. We're, we're looking at, at less than one. You know, a lot of players will definitely elect to shove or fold facing this three bet. It's a very strong three bet, but it's also feels like maybe it could be a little three bet fold but now the you know range advantage is going to be in favor of del pino sorry griff we got it all in in a call at the secondary feature table involving fedor holes i hear a chop pot being mentioned three to seven. oh 
And we just lost another player. That was Ignacio Moron. And just, there we go. Ace Jack versus Nines. Fedor, the player at risk. Any paint now. That's the smirk of a man who hasn't lost a flip in a very long time. Just 10 outs twice. I don't lose these spots. Rocha will survive no matter what happens in the hand. Oh man, that was a very knowing glance. Fitter is like, good game, sir. Lady luck. Wow. <laughs> Riffin called it on the turn. But Broadway, break a leg, Fedor Holtz, and breaking Rocha's stack. Speaking of Lady Luck, I, I did have the uh, idea on my, if, when I was going to bust yesterday, if I was going to bust, to do like a whole, what was it, Tommy Valentine bit? I don't know. I'm ruined! <laughs> Just like pointed the guy who busted me, ball. you did this! <laughs> I guess it's a little bit better than the Tiger Kings. I will never financially recover from this. The Tiger Kings? Tiger King, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one, yeah. I think they both work. I missed the Skittles on the bar there. The Skittles? The Skittles, yeah. When I, when I ask you, when you 25 Capito, you Yeah, yeah, Double yeah. up you Fedor. No, they are not there anymore. <laughs> not good news for the rest <laughs> of this good. tournament. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, really? Someone <laughs> got him. Someone got him and, to them. <laughs> and I just asked, he's like, you want a Skittle at the table? And then he ended up giving me the whole bag. I ate the whole bag. Appreciate it, Adam They're Samarov lucky. saying Skittles. no strict Griffin. It doesn't <laughs> really roll off the tongue, Those are the best but ones. I mean, I really appreciate the sentiment. There are our feature tablists. Now we did pull away from that ace jack, ace jack conversation, right? So we're gonna have to figure out base. Del Pino on the chips. shoved the flop. Nice. And uh, took it down. Blake Bone folded the chop. Shamas. Okay, so this is incredibly interesting. We were talking about their last clash, right, mm -hmm. Joe, with the cutoff and the button, these exact positions. And I was talking about how I think Chamas is trying to represent aces or kings because he would flat with those hands in this situation. And the very next rotation gets that opportunity. And uh, this, is, this is such a cool dynamic between these two players. And Lopez has flopped a gut shot. Now, do you think Lopez thinks that Barry Uzi is going to be flatting aces there? Uh, I think that he, he probably... The previous hand I think or that this yeah, hand. I think that he's going to be aware that Chamas is going to have a stronger range. A bit more short stock Chamas is now as well. Um, so I think it's going to be a stronger range, and it's going to be all over this board texture, right? It's Whether it is, the, you know, I think maybe 9, 10 suiteds and stuff probably get folded at this stack depth. But, you know, all the king jack suiteds, the queen jack suiteds, um, you know, I think ace jack would, would shove preflop and, and maybe some of those, you know, king queens and stuff would have been maybe shoved preflop. You still got to play it as a check call because you have this gutter and, it, of course, because of the sizing. But I think Lopez Turn is, is going to play Lady Luck. Another. Lady Luck. Lady Luck straightenizing card on the turn. Lopez with a lock on it. Aces drawing deed. And Lopez has more than twice the chips. Very astute check back, going to ensure <clears throat> that he doesn't bust in this hand. You know, only 380 out there, 570 back. And now Lopez is in a bit of a strange What good are spot. aces if you can't fast play them on every street? <laughs> yeah. You gotta play them cautious. It's just one pair, right, Griffin? Because Lopez is gonna anticipate that, you know, if if Chalmers, Chalmers is gonna have, yeah, it goes pretty chunky. With that check back, is gonna expect Chalmers to, you know, 
have some have some queens sometimes. Something like king queen. I mean, if you're checking back aces here, you're going to check back some king queens as well. Those single pair hands that don't want to go broke on this turn because Lopez can have hands like this, hands like queen jack, hands like queen nine suited. By the way, we did lose a player during this hand, Christian Dressler. Yeah, too high up in your range with the aces, ace of hearts as well. And Barry Uzi getting buried in the first level of the day today. Ran Shamas down to eight big blinds. How many people in the chat are saying this is why you don't slow, slow play aces? Uh, They're coming? See. Or are people Who is getting... chip lead? Damn, imagine if he check. <coughs> Clear bluff raise, all in with aces. You got a bet there with aces. Shamas will shove. Shamas has to call the ace of hearts. Stack is too short to bluff aces. Blocker aces. I like it. All these chat pros with an apostrophe S in chat. Really funny. Uh, hmm, cooler. Yeah, it definitely was cooler. <clears throat> okay, so one person got it right. Yeah. You're hired. <laughs> Get on a plane. We need you for the final table. Don't ask questions. <laughs> just get down here. We just need you to say cooler. <laughs> yeah. Get back on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so down to 43 players now. We have really been slicing through this field. I'll tell you what, if if the crank machine ever breaks, yeah, we might need to hire a professional cooler, you know, to just hang around like William H. Macy. <laughs> like just That's why you don't ever see me in any of the camera shots. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll just be Bad Beat City. <laughs> this is a player we have not seen much of, I don't think. Esteban Maquillon and Blake Bond. That'd be a cool, like, poker detective show, you know? Maquillon and Bond? No. You will like it. Bad Beat yeah. City. It takes place in Bad yeah. Beat City. <laughs> Bad <laughs> Beat City. <laughs> Your wife, do you have four? Yeah. At the corner of Aces versus Queen Jack. <laughs> oh, when I say we haven't seen much of him, we literally haven't seen much of him. Bone misses this flop pretty hard. So does Macalon, but Macalon does have the betting lead and the best hand. Oh, check, check. Jack on the turn. Seven, eight. Nine. Advantage. So a okay, so bone. it's Benjamin. straight draw now for Starts bone. Betting. Named after Spraggy. <laughs> but Balake. Lex, Lex chose the name. Wasn't it? Oh, is there a Balake here? Yeah, I asked Lex, what would you call uh, him? My name is Blake. <laughs> and he said Benjamin. Really quickly. I was a bit confused. So I asked him, do you have an annoying friend? Yeah. Benjamin. He's like, yeah, and he has long legs. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. He goes by Spraggy. That's what he said. Like, oh, okay. but he has, Shout out to all my homies who get my key, key and peel reference. Did you know that uh, Joe worked with key and peel? I said, Mad TV. <laughs> I did. They know they, that. I yes. drop their names whenever. Yes, I can. yes, yes. But not everyone knows that, and I think everyone should. It's two of us. Because it's your most impressive we'll quality. We'll <laughs> and we got a new player yeah, coming to the table. Do you have either of them in your phone anymore? <laughs> yes. Can we call them on the stream? <laughs> we cannot uh, call them. Oh, he's leaving the table. Sorry. This is Felipe Boyanovsky. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Heading Thank to you. balance another table. <laughs> And we got cards on their backs of the secondary feature table. Thumb versus Violo. Violo's got top pair. Tom with overs. Talal's still in. Guy's amazing. Tom, of course, a platinum pass winner. Let's go. We are all. Come on, chat, four. with me. Lady Luck. Are you calling for the Lady Luck again? I mean, you see, he's the Platinum Pass winner, right? We want the... I'm not sure Violo isn't either, though. So <laughs> River uh -huh. Card is a four, pair of tens hold. And that's a small double up. 
for Vilo. And Tom now in very bad shape with around eight big blinds. Vilo, I, I didn't mean to root against you, my friend. I was just, uh, just about the platinum pass, which you may also have qualified with. And we did research. tick down to 42 players during that hand. Sean Winter, the player we lost on an outer table. I mean, Nadia. I guess I might as well now introduce another of the game's brainiacs. I assume you're sitting here because you're joining commentary. Please welcome to the booth Parker Talbot. Hello. Hey, buddy. As I'm, brainiacs, as in I am an individual that has a brain. No, you're like one of the guys that people are like, okay. no, Parker, despite looking at the fella, really knows what he's talking this about. Is a, this is a power move, this I'm also thing, watching right? him try to cram poker chips like, into a like, wallet. Like $10,000 or something worth wanna, of chips. Like, it's, it's the biggest power, power I move. I he just shows up, just pocket. starts I've rippling had a lot of 50K people worth yeah, of yeah, chips. Yeah, yeah. By the way, stuffing it into the coin purse <laughs> in his wallet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's where he keeps yeah. loose change. It's $500 Sorry, poker guys, chips. Sorry, guys, I just have $17,500 here on your table. Oh, leave me alone. No, we love you, Tonka. And, so what's uh, going on? What's going on here, Nacho? Well, we're down to 42 players. Very cool. Oh, there's a Platinum Pass fellow there. That's right. Yeah. Where's my man? My who, main, main, Who main is man. your main man? You have to be more specific. You got a lot of friends. Yeah, you, uh, you always, whoever's doing well, you usually say they're your man, so. Well, Samuel <laughs> Grafton, come on. Yeah. No, he was not on the feature today. Very surprising, I know. Wow. He had a, because his table's gonna break. His table was gonna be the first to break. But you know what? I spoke to him actually a little bit on breakfast, and he was a bit of relief for the, the, the break. Of course, of course. Yeah. yeah, I mean, listen, when I went deep in EPT Prague, Just for a while, I was, uh, it's always nice to be on the feature, but. It is, yeah. It's, it does. It's, it's, well, not, no, yeah. Yes, most of the time, as we have an all-in here, it looks like. This looks like an ace-king versus an ace-ten situation. Tran shoving small to big. Yep, another cooler here. Huge. Very shallow, though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Roca just lost a very... Or is it Rocha? Roca? It's a Rocha, probably. Yeah. Rocha. Rocha's a real sweetheart. Played with him a lot. Uh, all, of my, all of my day three until I busted. Real nice guy. Um, even I asked him some advice, actually, about um, some strategy, and um, he didn't feel like he's, his English was good enough to explain to me. So he wrote it in a in a translator and everything for me. Real sweetheart stuff. Yeah. Yeah. King I flop. Not looking good for Rosha. They should do what? Needs a jack of diamonds. Yes. Jack of diamonds. We'll take a lady luck of diamonds. <laughs> Rosha. For the men. Drawing dead now. And Griffin, your assessment yeah, of him well, being a nice fellow you know checks out. You know Finished 14th in Barcelona and was pretty Everyone emotional at that finish. Yeah. Not, not in, sure. In, 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 a, in a sweet way, by the way. Not in like a Helmuth chair throwing kind of yeah. way. Also someone who has an, an all-in tattoo, and, and I, I feel like that's... But you know when they almost that, ridiculous like, because like he kind of pulls it off. <laughs> like there's not a lot of people that like I would see, and I'll, I'll be like, ooh, but it looks it like, like nice yeah. little under the under the I arm. Think that's a good idea. All in. It's a way to live life. Well, he's all yeah, out now. <laughs> yeah. But no, I 40 second place. So this is an outer feature table here. This yeah. is so we do a main feature table and a secondary feature table. Yeah. This is the yeah. secondary feature well, yeah. table. Yeah. If you ever watched so the stream, you would know this. Well, I was on the secondary feature. I was just going to say it feels so like one been sweat in the secondary. Yeah. You know? He's too busy, uh, you know, being at the tables to really know what's going on <laughs> at home. <laughs> I mean, I mean that being said, I lasted all of, I don't know, hours. four and a half fold, levels fold, in the fold, main fold. event. Mm -hmm. in the 25 Later, he said he folded kings. Oh, yeah. And kings? What? Yeah. And did you guys get to watch my bust out? He said that it was two years' wages. I don't remember. I don't know, I, but I will say so I actually do want to, I wanted like, to thank you because when you did bust, I was having a really bad day one, and then I found out that you busted, and it kind of... I was sad that you busted, but it made me feel a bit better knowing that, like, you would be so grateful to have 20 big... Like, it made me think of you. Yeah. 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 I, I said that to you when I saw you at the table. When I was just like, yeah. Honestly, yeah, that's a legit thing, right? Because I saw someone else, and he was, like, down in the dumps because he only had 30K on yeah. dinner break. And I was like, bro, I'm out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm you got to have that perspective. Because this, this, this tournament is so 
special. It's different than just like even like, you know, a, a normal EPT. It's like that feeling like it, it hurts so much to bust this tournament. For sure. You know? Looks like Thumb oh, is... So Philo is in for like eight bigs here. Doing a little bit of stalling here. Fewer than eight bigs. There might be a pay jump. Or he could just have a different hand, I guess. But yeah, pay jump is obviously very reasonable. I'm loving his... Uh, Quite the stash, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fire. Oh, man. Steampunk. Wish I could do that. That's brutal. And he folded jacks. And when he had like luckily, Fedor with only the hammer in the big blind. Oh, wow, Fedor's here. I didn't even notice. And that would amaze <coughs> Fedor. Yeah, he just won a big flip. Had a ton of chips yesterday. As you do when but your name is Fedor holds. Yeah, but lost <laughs> the uh, near 100 big blind um, oh, wow. pot. Ace king to ace three suited. The old four bed shove, 40 big blinds, but into small blind, and he actually lost. Oh, wow. So that created our chip leader. That created our monster. Um, Kalev. Yikes, we got an under the gun open from Lopez with queen eight suited. Shamas very short. The virtual all in with pocket jacks. Macalon. Kind of an interesting spot here for the ace jack. Probably see what he does. I think yeah. with these early positions here, you gotta probably well, gotta let it go. Well, the thing is, yeah, so like the, uh, the shove is for effectively like seven bigs. <clears throat> Lopez is raising as one of the chip leaders on the table, but it is, what is it, seven-handed? I think as a rule, most of the time, you're going to want to be folding ace-jack, but when you break down their two ranges, you know, I think you're probably, I think you might be breaking even with Shamus's range and then be slightly ahead of Lopez's. Not maybe, no, no, significantly maybe even from Lopez. When he throws out the first one and then he doesn't throw out the second one and then he throws out the third one, how's he going to know how many he has? Uh, Do you agree with that? You can't, you can't go back and with the ranges. The ranges. Yeah, if yeah. You, that's with the face jack I mean here, you like kind of you maybe break even yeah. against Chamas who's shoving. Obviously, shoving under the gun plus one is incredibly strong, but yeah, you know, listen, with the chip leader opening. Yeah, if these positions were cut off button, then you probably yeah. just don't really have to think about it too much. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I think it's. Uh, very reasonable to let go of the ace track. I think ace queen would be really rough spot, but yeah. you know, deep in this tournament here in this spot like this, I'd probably let go of ace queen as well, to be honest. Really? really? Yeah. I mean, not suited, ace queen off suit, I'm saying. You know, uh, suited, I, I think I'd, I'd be committed, but I, I think it's, you know, Griffin was kind of saying that you flip with the range. I think he might even be, be beat by it, you know, because he's facing an under the gun raise. He has zero <laughs> fold equity with just over six big blinds. It's not like you look down at like ace eight suited or ace nine right. suited even right. here and like fist pump or You're anything, right? right? I, I guess my questioning of the ace queen is simply comes from I think that I think Chamas happily oh, wow. like happily he does puts have in fold equity. happily puts in ace jack and ace ten suited against this particular. I, absolutely, I think that's reasonable. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think so he was two hands. You are beating, right? He got, he just got it through as well. So I mean, yeah. if if he has that information, then we can probably safely assume that he might get in like ace eight suited and ace nine suited a little bit looser as well. You know, so I will say there's a, been a, a dynamic established between those two where they played some really interesting cutoff button post flop hands, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, the chip, the, the one with a lot of chips, got got there against Chamas. <laughs> It was, it was so there was some some flow as well I think where maybe he'd be prepared to to go in. Playing on here, nearing the end of the first level of the day, just about twelve minutes left at the twenty forty forty level. Very easy folds. He's got his monkey. You think it brings him good luck? Uh, from what I understand, it's a big part of his streaming. He does a little bit with the monkey that, um, that okay. I'll avoid for now, but it, it does seem like fun for his stream. <laughs> Action folds around to Omar Del Pino was the chip leader for a while yesterday. Goes for the tight True. fold with the queen three suited. Yeah. Seems reasonable. 26 big blinds, and this is gonna be is me. Okay. I didn't put him in the water. a walk for Lopez. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wash him every morning, bath time. 
Feature table chip counts, seven handed. <laughs> if I make a mistake, it's just a monkey. It's Blake fine. Bone. Don't tell, Pete, don't tell Peter. But. Still out in front. A couple of short stacks here, I guess, as we move to 50K oh. big blind. <clears throat> yep, we got a tenner and another tenner ish. And 21 big blinds for Maculon, 25 for Moreau, 26 for Pino. I mean, it's pretty weird to be have 26 big blinds <laughs> yeah, to be third in chips at the table. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> My, I don't know if, if it's... Uh, I was thinking last night that the average stack for a little while, at least in the tournament, is definitely going to be a bit shallower than normal just because of the incredibly long bubble yesterday. It was... Obscene. I was playing uh, a tournament to the side there, and it was an incredibly long bubble, wasn't it? It was, it was ridiculous. Was and it like I had, two and a half hours or something Yeah, and like I, that? I blinded out from, since the start of the bubble, like nine big blinds to two. Mm -hmm. and got in the money. Talal making an aggressive jam under the gun here with the queen nine. Big blind Annie structure. Doesn't want to uh, rip through the blinds and go to get too shallow, I guess. Pretty and handy. the shove gets through. Talal deep ran the last 25k, didn't he? Final table. Final table, my goodness. Made the final table of the original PSPC. Nine on the river against being a big pot on that tournament. Griffin, yeah, won't can't hear Talal's name without bringing up the bad beat. Oh, you got bad beat in this tournament by him? 18 left, yeah. Oh, la ace, my ace queen to his ace nine. No. Over to nine. And then he went on the final table. And you know what I went with? Uh, bad beat story. <laughs> Griffin went on to become a commentator. Yes, yes, he, you can see, you can see our uh, our paths have taken us in two yeah. different places. Yeah. What is survivorship bias? <laughs> and Talal all in again. What is the holding oh, yeah. this time? Or as they say in Canada, again. Again, again. I say again. Uh, pocket nines, a strong hand. Yeah. No, I'm really, really being cursed by my, my bad beat story. Nine, nine. Right in your face. Nine, nine on the river. No, nine. 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 Oh, it was a queen, nine. It was, it was a river nine? Yeah. Mm. Nine's my favorite number, too, which is messed up. Oh, Chamas. Oh, oh, wow. Doesn't realize he's all in. Oh, that was close. Did you see that? <laughs> Chama's in the small blind. Almost put in the chips to complete. Oh, my God. And Look would at have giggling. called off his, you know, <laughs> oh, his wow. tournament. His, his tournament entire life. tournament. Oh, my God. With the queen deuce suited. That would have been tried. I actually did that yesterday in the 2K side event. I, I called the big blind and then check called the flop. And I I called after I called the flop, I realized it was actually a third it's player on the hand. Okay. <laughs> Two shots in a row. Not not paying attention. Two shots in a row though. Yeah. It threw for Talal up to 13 big blinds now. Increase the stack by 50 percent there. Hell yeah. Secondary feature table coming at you. An all in and a call. I see a triangle. Fedor oh, with wow. time bank wow. chips in front of him. Of course. Wow, but he this hasn't is... he hasn't called yet though. He's in oh, the tank. My I mean gosh. this is I don't know what the action was, but Jack's in these multi way all in I think situations. Yeah. It's really tough. You can uh, definitely I don't know if he's doing it for you. find folds here, I mean, but I mean trans million I chips is a lot of chips for this stage of the tournament right yeah, now. Yeah, wow, so Fedor's like... concerned about Fedor's concerned about the strength of this overcall from the small blind. And if you feel like you're behind this, anything Tran shoving what? Over like twenty seven big blinds is well, it looks so like often Tran ace opened king. under the gun plus one. And Fedor three bet in the cutoff. And Violo put it in in the small blind. And then Tran has re isoed all in for I his don't, 22 bigs. I don't think so. I think this is may maybe. No, that's definitely what happened. Maybe a flat from Holes? Or no? No, because he's put out 225K. He Why bets. would Tran put in the nines? Very surprising. And that, yeah, you're right. That, and that has what that is what has strengthened both of their ranges so much, is the fact that holds play. This is a three bet. Like I am getting this in no matter what. And then they I think both he's, went with it. I don't think he's very concerned about the small blind put in because that 
it's going to have pocket nines and ace king and ace queen in it still. So I don't really think he's concerned about that at all. But he's definitely concerned that perceivably Tran probably doesn't have nines in Fedor's eyes here. I would I would guess if I had to guess that oh, maybe nines is is you know I, I guess that's what he's trying to figure out. Does does Tran have nines and tens here? Because if he knows Tran has folding. nines and tens, then of course he puts it in. Fedor has burned through three time bank cards it looks like, already. Looks like he has none left there. I don't see any more. Yeah, three on this hand, I should say. Looks like he's got five seconds left to make this decision. Kind of looks like a bit of James Franco to me for some reason. He said fold. Fedor wow. folds is not going to love what he sees oh, immediately no. here. Tens and oh, nines. Oh, no, he's not pleased. Oh, wow. Tens ahead, no, but Violo is mm. the shorter better, stacked yeah. player, and he's shocked to be ahead in this situation. Wow, what a fool. Fedor is not the only one that was expecting stronger here. I don't know. Tran's been running pretty well in all ins thus far, but has got some work to do on this queen high flop. He's got the backdoor straights here. He can hit the seven or the eight. I love the way you think, Tom. It's a bigger fold than ace king off. Sorry, it wasn't queen high. It was six, six, five. Thank you. Club. Turn card is a jack. <laughs> <laughs> Fedor would have spiked the go, boat. Come on, camera. Go to Fedor. Um, yeah, Dude, come, come on. Us. Show us Fedor. Show us Fedor. Come on. River card is a king. Show us Fedor. Win us Fedor. So Violo oh, is going to double up. Yeah, really rough spot there for Thank Fedor, you. for sure. I, uh, I Personally, in, 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 in game there, I would think that We've immediately got another all-in hand at the main go. feature table. Sorry oh, yeah. to cut you off, Tonka. No this, is, this was bound to happen today. You know, I really thought that Fedor Holtz, of all people, would have sol solved pocket jacks. But there's just no right way to play him. See, the thing is about Fedor there is I feel like he solved how to play all-ins years ago. Yes. You know, so like yeah, I don't so really know how, why. Trust your run good. What, it just seems what, so Why are you deviating? Because yeah. you lost that ace, three, ace, king yesterday? You, everything's changed? It just seems so strange. Are you just going to blind out of this thing? So strange. He used to be our hero. The player at risk <laughs> takes the lead here with a pair of queens. I think people here. Delpino short stacked, it looks like. Oh no, sorry. It's going, to be, going to be short stacked, stacked after yeah. this run out unless a nine hits on the river. This board is actually reminding me of it. I gotta tell you guys about a hand. River is not a nine. These flips deep in these main events are so brutal, man. It's nine? And Delpino is gonna be left with 190K, which is four big blinds. Just hold off on the story, Griffin, until we no see problem. if we can not have an all-in for a second. Yes. We might have a second to breathe here. Three and a half minutes left on the level, but we're going to play straight through to the next one. All right, Griffin, go ahead. Uh, Matt Berkey raises under the gun, playing uh, 22 bigs, probably maybe 18 to 22 bigs to 12K, 3-6. Folded to the button, uh, Joe Epp, do you know him? Yup. Yup, Yup. Okay, Yup Van de Bygart. You, you'd, you'd recognize him from one of the most famous folds of all time against Never Scared Me, where he folded mid-set on Ace-9 and Deuce or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. Was he right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Never Scared Me at Aces. Wow. It's a really famous hand. What like a genius. Yeah. No, you old, gotta, you gotta old, watch old his hand. EBT old, like 15 years ago. Wow, incredible. Shit. Yeah. Anyways, Yup uh, makes it 30,000, so uh -huh. like a pretty small three bet. Comes back to Berkey, calls. Uh, Ace, Queen, Jack, all spades. Berkey front shoves for like two, like two X pot, whatever it was. Like, Very good. Yeah, almost okay. two X pot. And gets snapped by Ace, King, King, spade, King of Spades. And he front shoved Queen, Jack for bottom two pair. Okay. Turns a queen. Okay. And rivers and ace. Why am I telling no, this story? No, ten of spades. Ten of spades. <laughs> nice. A royal. It was, it was awesome to see. Doesn't just happen on Poker Stars. It also happens live. So you can confirm with Berkey. Got there you go. Busted by a royal. Looks like Prayer will go for the deuces raise. Assuming he is the chip leader of the table, right? Or someone has more chips, maybe? Prayer second in chips. Blake Bone okay. is the chip leader for now. Prayer with 50 bigs to start the hand. Makes it 80,000. 
Little Ace bit. Webb says, boring poker stories. I roll, lost me. Guess what? You've also lost your chat. You're banned. Thank you for your comment. Shamas folds. Moreau. Not a hand I think we'll be seeing any action here. There it goes. Talal. Oh, man, I hope we see. Yes, BB in the BB. Blake Bone, Jack 10. The two biggest stacks at the table. Let's go. What, are you hoping for, like, a Jack 10 do swap and see something happen, or uh, what? All I know is that Blake Bone cannot be predicted. Okay. He, he plays by his own... Uh... He's, he's a blaster. Okay. My favorite kind of player. Jack, right. nine, five, two clubs. Top pair for Bone. Could see a continuation bet or a check from Pereira, I guess. Lots of straight draws on a Jack, nine, five board. So not super appealing to funnel money into the pot with an under pair. Lots of straight draws on Jack, nine, five. King, queen, 10, eight, seven, six. So oh, wow, sure. That's a lot. That is a lot of straight draws. And then everything else that ha doesn't have a straight draw has managed to slip into a pair, so. One of those boards where when we do go for the continuation bet, we do like to size up and bet a little bit bigger to charge some of those weaker draws as we see Pereira doing right now. But we're not exactly targeting the top pair very often on the flop here. Seven on the turn. And that connects quite a bit with all those hands that Parker just mentioned moments ago. It does indeed, yeah, so probably going to see Pereira slow down here. Usually when you do go for the double barrel here with um, a hand like deuces, which is relatively common for sure um, and could be used here, you likely want to have the deuce of clubs though because if you do river your set with the deuce, which is obviously going to prove you to the best hand the vast majority of the time, it's a bit problematic if it's on the deuce of clubs. It's tough to, tough to really extract value and go for it. But, I mean, always happy to fire in that shell and see what happens. Doubt it's going to work against a hand like Jack-10, though. Yeah, turn Top the pair with the well. gutter. Yeah, it's going to be really tough to get it through. A few more bluffing opportunities with deuces with the club as well um, when the club rolls off. I like the heart, though, for sure. I mean, Bone is not flinching at all. Like I like, I like his table presence. And just like that, we've got a big pot after a big bet flop, big bet turn. This is what I was telling oh, you about. It's a deuce. deuce of clubs on and the there river. It is. And there and, and this will prove your theory about I mean so you he's know, still gonna be able to go for value, surely, for sure, but it's but probably not gonna be able to be all in. Whereas but Pereira's if, worried about, you know, ace eight of clubs, ace six of clubs, ace seven of clubs, you know, the king ten of clubs, all of these combos have now you know, you'd hate to value yourself by, you know, betting and, and, and losing but you kind of have to, of course, because you're up against all those Jack X type hands as well. It's a very awkward. Uh, it's not. It feels more awkward than I think it should be. Wow! And he checks it back. Yeah. See, this is kind of exactly what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's per, yeah. In terms of barreling the deuces, it's pretty funny that it actually came to fruition. Like you need That's to be barreling the bone. deuces on the club there because you you can value the river. <laughs> <laughs> Mad to the bone. <laughs> Someone just said on TV ma, 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 you do ma, ma, this. Ma. Pereira, by the way, was going by Lopez until a few moments ago and had a Brazilian flag asked that both be changed, okay? okay. Everyone. And we've ticked down to 40 players during that hand. I think we're going to get footage of it. Nacho losing a big pot there to Tran getting four flushed by the 10 of spades. We're going to play. What? I said, we're going to play. What do you want me to wait for? Aces and kings? And trying to wait for this hour level as we catch up? Nice hunt, man. Thanks, bro. A little chirping going on between Tran and Barbero. Hi. Nacho, nacho, nacho. Looking pretty short stacked after those aces were cracked. 
Queen 10 off, there you go. Ooh, some, some old school chirping. We're gonna cut away from this though for the real damage being done. Ori Hassan out in 41st place for $70,700. That's how he got down to 40. Griffin, do you still have a, do you still have an Ontario address? Um, like my parents' house, yeah. You got an Ontario address, mm -hmm. Parker? So in uh, Ontario, there's something right now called the Raptors Red Spade Pass. <gasps> now, did you guys hear about the Red Spade Pass for F1 we gave away last year? Yes. No. It's like an all-expenses-paid trip to an F1 race, like a yacht party, hanging out like oh, in wow. the owner's box. Well, they're doing right now for the okay. Toronto Raptors, but you got to be a resident of Ontario for it. So the Raptors Red Spade Pass experience is going to be a trip to L.A. to watch the Raptors play the Clippers on March 8th, then the Lakers on March 10th Wow! from a suite. But on the day in between, they're I'm taking sure. everyone to Vegas yeah. <laughs> to go play poker. I mean, I need to win this. I so, saw I saw some ads for it on my Instagram. Yeah. Now I'm very excited. So you can enter on the Raptors team app. Uh, there is, and in the stadium are the two ways that uh, people can enter. Okay, incredible. And I think, I know that this may not be an incentive for everyone, that if anyone who wins this thing, when they're in L.A., I'll come down and come meet up, come hang out. Wow. Let's go. Because I don't. You really I, buried the lead. That's I kind of the like biggest a half hour point. from Staples Center, if you guys <laughs> or whatever it's called now, crypto crypto arena. Crypto so arena. I may. Uh, I may. Uh, if there's anyone who wins I, the uh, thing who's interested in hanging out, I'll come by and have so a drink. If I can't get in, let's go. Oh, I mean, that sounds incredible. Yeah. Looks like uh, we have. Uh, must be on a pay ladder here, or Tomb, yeah. Do you call? So yeah, 39th place. I, is it? Is it, it goes up already. I think that maybe. Oh yeah. Okay. So it, we're we're it's one already off happened. here. Yeah. Okay. Do you call your office at home the Staples Center? Sorry, it hasn't happened yet. It's 39th place. So yes, we're one office. Tonka is saying correct. I, I don't. I do not call my office the Staples Center, <laughs> but I do refer to certain parts of my body that way. Oh wow! <laughs> nice. Yeah, so tomb in the tank. Okay. Okay. I mean, to prevent this, okay. at this point, instead of wasting the... more time bank chips, what he could do is just raise all but a little bit of his stack. I and think then they're upon... starting to try to police that move. Sure, more so for an all-in on the river. I don't think that they, they would be policeable in this scenario. This is not really a, the same Personal situation at all. Yeah, but see, this is the this is ah, when it comes to this stuff. The surprise didn't didn't uh, keep back a chip or two. Just in case it happens in within the within those time bank chips. Well, Tomb is a plas platinum pass winner. Yes, and um, it might be I something that not everyone's conscious of how to for pull sure. Those. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, please remember these are not normal pay jumps. People are, you know, at, the, at this stage, the pay jumps are, you know, looks like over ten thousand yeah. dollars. Speaking of pay jumps, by the way, that red spade pass. There's five passes up for grabs, and every winner can bring a plus one. Wow, huge! That's great. I will 100% be entering. How fun would that be if you won and I, we just got to hang out in LA? Oh, man, that'd be sweet. <laughs> I'm trying to get them to send me on the whole now? thing. Do, well, do the yeah. Vegas in between. And I should get sent on it too if you're getting sent right? on it. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm an actual Raptors Maybe you don't have to win. Fan. There you go. <laughs> I've had season tickets. I don't have season tickets the last two years, but I've had season tickets to the Raptors for three, four years. Uh, we've got an all in, but Del Pino somehow has the dominating oh, no. hand with five high, and Blake Bone spikes the deuce. And someone said they folded a three? Come on, man. <laughs> My goodness. I mean, geez, you get it in dominating with 5-4 against four deuce, and the deuce Hold. flops. <laughs> Give him a five. And it looks like the laddering Wait. has occurred. Four. Hi. Crab time. <laughs> Crab? Nope. No. no. The 40th place finisher was Norbert Secchi. So 39th you got the pay jump, though. is Del Pino, who so did get really the good. pay jump, was chip oh, yeah, leader yeah. yesterday. Good job on the pay jump, I know. At least at the feature kind of table. table. Yeah, smart. Yeah, and he got, yeah, he's got a story to tell, too. He got, you know, got it in with the best. 
And Del Pino cashes for $81,400. So that was like an 11K pay jump. Is it time for Samuel Grafton to get moved to the feature table yet? I want to see Sam at work cooking in the kitchen. Yeah. I think, um, I don't know if Griffin mentioned this or not, Sam, Sam was happy to not be on the feature table. For yeah, I know. Today. I know he was happy, but, you know. I'm you here get, now, and like, I want to watch. You're so. team pro. You gotta, you gotta give the people what they want. You know. I'm on. I want to watch. Sorry, we made you a star. Exactly. All right, Tum. All in again here, getting it through. All right, and just like that, two pushes. He's back up over ten blinds. A little bit more fold Tomb's got a lot of fans watching. I think he's a German streamer? German Twitch mod? German something where he's got a lot of German goodwill built up. A German man in the Twitch arena, at least. Something like that. Looks like he's wearing a uh, Felix patch there. Well, love for X Flicks. Which is not a streaming pornography service, turns Hello. out. Hello. Yeah, you got, you got your hopes up the first time you heard it, oh, eh? The first, so many times. All right, so we got a new player at the secondary feature table. Sorry, Tonka, not Sam Grafton. We Come got on. Re Renato Minacucci. Oh, he looks great, but that doesn't look like Samuel. Twitch streamer who won Dare to Stream. Thank you, Lime Ricky. Also a Twitch streamer, if you want to check out her page. Like medium. I mean, it's three bet under the gun or on MP, but... Oh, no, you, I saw either you had a big hand or you were... I guess it was the, the pay jump, I mean. Felix yeah. boot camp specifically. Okay, nice. Oh, that tomb. Got it done. Viola coming in. No. Viola? How nope. are we saying it his was, name? It was Dare to Stream, sorry. Oh. How are we saying this past. fellow's name? Uh, Violo is how I would... Violo. I'm going with it. Violo, maybe. Violo. Violo. Not to be confused with Tonka's second name, which is PLO. Well, let's not get carried away. <laughs> Coming in for the raise of the Jack 10 suit under the gun, getting it done. Jeremy Osmus here having a great series. Already shipped a 2K earlier on for 140,000 or so. Having a great year, I think, or not this year, but great last year. Previous 12 months, yeah. Good for him. And of course, uh, the uh, poker parody song that's sweeping the nation. I don't know if you're heard his song he took some death cab for cutie song and jamie osmus did oh yeah oh cool i'll have it to listen had, wrote like an ode to the poker gods oh wow yeah. and he's just running like a god since yeah kind of wow good for him maybe i gotta do something like that so i can get double starting stack in one of these one thousand dollar buy inside oh. events <laughs> All right, looks like things have finally calmed down a little bit. Not really. What's going on out there? A little? Jeez. I mean, that was bound to happen. I'm surprised it took until today. I think you know, there's got to be something mental, right, for a lot of people. Maybe not for you. You seem like, and I don't mean this to be a needle, you're not afraid to go <laughs> broke. Um, um, you're not a guy that's like, oh, I really got to hang on for day four. Yeah, no, not in a turn. Okay, I thought you meant in real life. And no, I was no, say, no, well, no. Listen, no. I'm not. No, no, say, no. I'm not slightly risk averse sometimes. Yeah, but I think that for the folks that are in here too, that maybe, you know, that, that benchmark of making another day is what caused this to all bottleneck up into the first hour. Parker, can I ask you like an inside baseball question? Sure. Do you have a swap of Sam Grafton? I do have a small swap of swap nice. Sam Grafton. Nice. So I think Sam's my last swap, actually. Sam's a, Sam's a pretty... Uh, I talked to Sam about swaps. He's pretty uh, strict about who he swaps with. And I know this because he never swaps with me. <laughs> I was going to say, well, he swapped with me, so I guess he can't be that strict. I like how Griffin assumes because he was denied a swap that it must be strict. <laughs> That's a it's very, like me, that's a it's like me saying point. like when a club won't let me in, they're like, oh, they must be real strict. It's like, no, it's probably just <laughs> yeah. You, like buddy. I spoke to someone last night who had another like like three percent swap with him. I'm like, wow, he's really he's usually really strict with all my, my sample size. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's just you know rich now, doesn't give a shit anymore. Maybe he did just win many millions of no, dollars. No, I mean I definitely don't. I definitely tournament. don't deserve a, a Sam Grafton swap. 
Here we go, though. Fedor coming in with the Siva and getting check called by the gut shot with the backdoor flush draw. Pretty interesting turn here. Not a good one for either player. And Fedor really just has, you know, absolutely nothing. But... And and not a good blocker in that ten of spades either because, you know, it's it's that, that comprises some of those straight draws that, you know, might fold to a bet on the turn. Sure, some backdoor spades that he yeah. might have come along with, some queen ten of spades or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, both players, though, assuming that they can't win the pot without betting. So it should be interesting to see. I, I, we're going to go ahead and assume that one of them is going to take a stab at this pot. Parker, have you ever been involved in a certain song that we do here in the booth? There is a small chance. I hate this song. It's the worst song in the game. <laughs> I say it every single one? time. I, I will not. I hate you know? this song. And oh, there's no wow. reason. It won't be happening anyways. Don't worry. You don't think so? <laughs> I mean, is it not everyone loves a chop pot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate don't that song. Turns out he knows every word to it. I mean, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, 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 somebody yeah. hates, he's nailed so nobody, it. Don't nobody, say the name nobody of the song. Nobody loves a chop pot. Like, it's who just... likes a chop pot? Everyone. It's only, in the song the lyrics. The only person who likes a chop pot is the, is the fool that got it in bad and <laughs> is happy to chop. This okay, is so everyone, weird, every, Okay, everyone who loves the chop pot song, if you love the chop pot song, write in the chat, is Spraggy still in? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> That's a bias. That's I a bias. Uh, Marley is secretly agreeing with you here. Uh, Which one? She Wait. hasn't said anything about the Chop Hot song, but she just wrote oh, Never yeah, Lucky. Right. She did your emotes. Oh, which I think is her little nod yeah, to yeah. you. I was big wow, a lot of people wondering if Spraggy's still in right now. <laughs> I'd say. Oh, no, is, he, is he in? A couple of hundred people are asking yeah, the question. pretty damn bad. Too, dude. <laughs> Thank you for uh, for asking the important questions, Twitch chat. I don't know if I. Come on, you can't let me pass one blind. Yeah, you were three. Tonka, months, yeah. yes. That's the bit. <laughs> What's the bit? The bit is that. No, nobody no, likes no, nobody no, likes no, 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 no. You see, like I didn't. I, it's said with such authority and aggression. You guys celebrate <laughs> it so much, and you like you fucking literally root for it every time anyone's got any hand. That it just seems like it's not a bit anymore. And you guys right. genuinely love. Maybe chop we've pots. lost the irony. I and didn't really I know. Hate chop pots. I think every single hand should end in a winner. I hate chop pots. So, all I'll say is this: is that when you are commentating poker. You gotta, there are situations that come up repeatedly. That's fair. That that's right. No, it's a good song. Boring. Yeah, that I hear are, you. Like the dumb thing I do with flips, and right? we get like an ace the, king against ace king all the time, ace queen against ace and queen. And then what all do you time. do? You ace just go, checking. all right. Well, we know this is gonna end. So, what'd you have yeah. for breakfast today? So it's uh -huh. just, it's oh, just one could, of those things. But probably gonna see an all in here in the small blind. Looks like Nacho mm -hmm. has about six hundred thousand in the big. Yeah, and there it is. VLO. Oh, we don't see a snap fold. Uh, I guess we'll see. That is a hand that you don't snap fold. No, but, but I think at this fold, point you do fold this. Unless unless you know that, uh, you know, Violo is on uh, any two here or something. But I, I think that would be quite a bold assumption to make. You got some people in uh, chat who are agreeing with you, by the way, Tonka. And those people are uh, getting banned. Yeah. So thank you. Wow. Yeah, you can wait in in, in, in Tonka's Someone. Twitch stream. Yeah, so right. Next time he comes exactly. back, there, you guys I don't know, eight, out. ten months from now, he might stream yeah. for a day or two. Yeah. So, is the bathtub comfortable at Spraggy's house, or um, what? Uh, are yeah, any it's neck nice. problems? I saw you twisting your neck earlier. Is that um, um, Spraggy got me a bed. We actually had a big. Oh, we actually bad. had a big ordeal about. The bed and the mattress and that, because what he had me sleeping on originally was like some rat-infested mattress from 14 years oh. ago. Oh, oh gosh! Rat Come on, you guys are Jeez. like rich poker players. Clean, clean it up. I mean, there was no rat. It was just an old mattress, and then he got me a new one. No, no, no the rats were dead. It's fine. Rats like, were they were dead. They were alive the, There's a difference between a rat-infested <laughs> mattress and a ratty mattress. Damn, right. so tough yeah, spot yeah, here. yeah, exactly. It's just like, I think you're just supposed to say ratty, but then he said rat and oh, rat like really rats. Like, okay. He's an animal lover. It's to feed all his cats. <laughs> yeah. He's a... So I'm making the tight my, my cats the gun killed them. Here. Are you guys interested in the poker at all, or do you guys just sit here? And no, you know what? Talk that's what. Uh, sometimes we. You guys don't really follow the action much. Sometimes do you? we deviate. Well, but there's Tomb been no just action. Made, I mean, Tomb literally just had a really tough spot under the gun with Jack Ten Suit. It was an interesting spot where he could have gone. Yeah, but with that's it. The, see, that's the thing is that 
you're in James's seat right now, and he would pick up on that and say it while he we're would, goofing off. He would not pick up on that. No, he'd say, that, well, maybe, yeah, okay, well. All right, well, this is going to be an all-in. Yes. This one's going to happen. All-in from Nacho. Yeah, Barbero. And we've had the PT Fisherman added to the table. Ooh. Oh. I guess so. I want to see what he's got, because he's got to have something here. This is the virtual all-in okay, being okay. policed right now. Yeah. We have the new, it's, a, it's the new rule, I believe, if you put in under one big blind. So I think what you have to do is you have to save more than a big blind back. That makes sense. So Nacho tried to keep the 10K behind. It's just, uh, it's just he. It basically, the ruling is that he's not allowed to use a time bank. So I think Elise has explained that we were <laughs> talking over it. Uh, no, but that, I think I'm, she I, said I, that he has 30 like, seconds when it gets back to him. Like I said, of time banks. like I said, Did you you're say not allowed. Seconds? No, I said you're not allowed to use a time bank, <laughs> which is the exact same thing as having 30 seconds, because you have a shot clock of 30 seconds, and then you are not allowed to use a time bank. I, I hear you. Okay. Can you guys please not fight on the stream? Well, How he said I was yet? talking over it. I was telling you the Very answer because you can't hear it. See, this is what we've talked about. Now <laughs> then you elevate it and you raise your voice. And I just... <laughs> I guess it got through. Oh, no. Oh, he called. Oh, it's all in. Markish has oh called. Gosh. He has 10,000 Did we talk over behind. the call or not? Did we hear the call we, we, or did we talk over it? <laughs> well, I guess the 10,000 chips are going to be going in. Jack, here. high, flop. Pretty there's great the, flip. There's the 10K chips. Barbero has hit a seven. Not the flop that Marquis Marquez was looking for. Looking for a six of spades on the turn for a sweat. James, can you do one of your uh, like like this versus like that, please? It's, it's not that situation, and my name is Joe. What did I call you? James. Turn card. <laughs> that happens sometimes. I, have to say. I mean, there was nothing correct about that request <laughs> at all. The three. Oh, oh, oh. That's, a, that's some action. A deuce or a six now. All right. Yes, I know his outs. Okay. <laughs> oh, he knows it. He knows that it's feeling it. Oh, River gosh. card is a queen. So, Barbero doubles up. And it's not a huge double up, unfortunately. It's pretty good. Get some 20 big blinds. I mean, look, surviving and surviving. Club. Huge, yeah. huge, huge. He looked like Nacho was whining uh -oh. there. Did he, oh, no. Oh. Barry Uzi packing up. Oh, we missed his all in. He's he been sent to the red. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can the monkey breathe in there? <laughs> We've got. So, in third, when we dropped to 37 players, we lost Max Lemansky. Then we lost Jonathan Jaffe. Now we have lost Ryan Shamas, Barry Uzi. You know, I didn't even know his name until right then. Also, I'm pretty sure it's Baruzi, isn't it? Baruzi, not Barry Uzi? I think so. He's sitting in the wrong place, isn't he? What's he doing? Moreau. Moreau, the person who eliminated Shamas. And we are down to 35 now. The big man coming in for a raise under the gun. Blake Bone, ace nine suited. All right, we're gonna see some see some action here. Will we see a three bet or will we see a call? It's a great question, Tonka. I think with this fella, it could go either way as well after seeing that deuce's hand. And yeah, I think actually might more lean call. 
And you would but be wrong. I would be wrong. That's 300. I mean, I guess if you think Bone's the kind of player that will that doesn't like to fold pre-flop and will call you with worse hands, I can understand. Three betting a seven, it would actually work the complete opposite way. Yeah. Why is that? If because you think if that, somebody, if, if you your think that bone, park, that bone will call you with like, it just doesn't. Jack. It just doesn't matter what he's going to call you with at this. You point, just want him to fold. Correct. At this okay. point in the tournament, you just really don't want to play inflated pots post flop. I see. Um, and if you did, you would be doing this. So, like, ace-queen offsuit here would be, like, a very natural flat on the button. And if you thought that he was going to be calling too many hands, like queen-jack or ace-five suited or ace-four suited or ace-nine offsuits or something like that, then you would want a three-better hand like ace-queen, you know, something that dominates the region that he's going to continue with. Whereas ace-seven suited, it's a nice hand, but it's nothing special in terms of pummeling money in against, you know, like, you're not happy to have a bunch of queen jacks or nine, eight suiteds in there against okay. a hand like a seven. So if that was your read, but I mean, the opposite is the read is, is the way it works out here because ace nine suited a generally a continue from uh, most people and, you know, definitely someone so you think is Pereira a bit more with aggressive. the correct rationale that did work out. Yeah, it turns out in the end he nailed it for sure. I mean, I didn't expect to see a fold from the ace nine suit there. I think it's actually a very reasonable fold, to yeah. be honest. Like, it's, it's a tough hand. To, it's hard to call in these positions deep in a tournament. It's really, really hard. It's weird so, like, when it's weird too when you know the, when you know what they'll have. You know, because it feels it, like uh, like that obviously goes without saying in a way, but it's just like I you know when you're watching it and it's just like okay, this yeah, this feels like you can continue there, but you're in the moment there and sure. you're raising with 45 big lines under the gun, and you're getting three bet. Are you always yeah. pulling your ace nine suited? Well, well, I mean, the card, I, that's you know? kind of what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not yeah, really yeah. saying that. I'm saying like I don't think you want to continue very much there with too many calls. You know, be right, like right, right. Specific set of hands. So I feel like you know stuff like ace and line suited. He's probably gonna want to. You know, do basically exactly what he did. Throw it into like a four bet bluffing range you right, know, sometimes, right, right, right. And, and and make it maybe six six fifty seven hundred thousand and see what happens, or just you know give it up, because it's really 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 tough to play um, out of position deep like this in, in in bloated pots. So yeah, yeah, it makes makes a lot of sense. I think he I think he sort of nailed it there. Uh, honestly, a very disciplined fold that. A lot of people with his chip stack and whatnot will probably wouldn't do, especially after seeing that deuce's hand. You know, you could convince yourself that this guy's playing back at me. He's being aggro, yeah, sure. you know, and which he literally and was. It's and it's important not to be, you know, as a viewer, to, to not be results-oriented in that he technically pulled oh, wow. the best hand. Absolute boss mode here. This so, yeah, is, a bit unpredictable, Blake Bone, as, yeah. I, as I said earlier. And, I mean, absolutely punishing the 7-6 suited under the gun raise off of 20 big blinds here. I mean, a pretty out-of-line raise. Tony Wynn, by the way, was just added. Excuse me, Tommy Wynn that was just added to the table. Generally, when you're, you're deep in tournaments like this, we want to go for, you know, more like ace, ace high raises, king high raises, stuff like that. You know, you got one and done when you're raised under the gun. You maybe you want to expand with an ace five suited or, you know, some some kind of low down ace or king six or something like that, as opposed to seven six. And I mean, Bond just absolutely getting after it here. Three betting to five hundred. That's, ha that's half the stack. Yeah. That's pretty wild. I mean, what at that point you fold? I guess. Like, I mean, yeah, I don't really know design, what yeah. what his plan was if he went all in. I guess to fold, yeah, great, great move. Honestly, attacking the if he thought he was a loose opener, yeah. I like it a lot. Just uh, not really necessary to quite put so many chips in. Could have yeah. could have accomplished basically the same thing with you know 300k, maybe 325k mm. something. You just got bone blasted. <laughs> you just got Amazing. bone blasted. Bone all right. dry. All right. Yeah, similar to what we just talked about, sort of with the ace nine, a seven, right? There's not going to be a big um, incentive for the under the gun raiser there to call and play post flop, right? Mm -hmm. So mostly going to play all in or fold, I would guess. You know, once facing the three bit off of the twenty two big blinds. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you got him. <laughs> Oh, so now we have Tony Tran at the table and Tommy Wynn at the table. I was confusing my Tonys and the Tommies. You're the animal. Looks like Moreau is going to open this pot with these two suited from the cutoff. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, the Yeah, yeah. Was it Dominique? 
We could definitely see an all-in here or something from Bone. I mean, I, he, like you guys are saying, he's unpredictable. So I guess uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But, you know, judging from the Queen 8, this seems like a significantly better spot to 3-bet jam all-in with the 20 big blind stack opening and 20 big blind stack in the cutoff. But it looks like it's going to be a call. A little bit of a tastier hand, you know. He wants to wants to play with the ace three suited mm. nicer than the Queen 8. See if Wen is looking to play. He is indeed. And that, of course, is Tommy Wynn. And Tommy does flop two hearts with the seven deuce. Queen, Jack, eight. Yeah, and, and, and really no connection whatsoever for, for Bone and the Dr. Moreau. Yeah, but I guess uh, expecting us to go check through most of the time. Turns an eight. And when might, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's easier It's easier to say, but like we're, not, and this is cool from, from Bone because, wow. of course, his his range from the small here is going to oh, really geez. be all over this flop. This is a dirty stack he puts out there. He's like, yeah, it's some greens and a blue. It's kind of a, you know, this is kind of a perfect example of why we mostly want to steer clear of getting in the mix with hands like seven do suited um, multi ways and just at this point in the tournament, right? right? I mean, it's basically. I mean, he might he might continue here, but it's really tough to continue with a seven high flush draw undercards to the board, where you could perceivably be dead. I mean, I, I think he wants to, to like. I mean, maybe he could make it. Maybe he could jam or something. That's what really I'm thinking. Pressure, like, yeah. But, but I mean, I think you just like, got to fold. Yeah. You know, you're just kind of you're just kind of caged into the corner, and you got to fold. Yeah, and Moreau's. Moreau's gonna fold Done. a little bit of Hollywood and get it out of the way. Yeah. Again, unless we see some truly epic moves, you never know. You really never know. I really like uh, Blake's game right now. So we're play He's definitely in or? attack mode. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and someone chirp. that I think could 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 probably be underestimated. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, in a field like this, party, but someone who's clearly out. has a lot of experience <laughs> and 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 has some some moves, likes to play and yeah, flow a little bit. I mean, that queen eight <laughs> was, you know, that was some creative sort of big blind. You know, some you were impressed by the ace nine suited fold. So, yeah, I mean, so far so good. The, from like only only uh, only qualms would just be he's risking a few too many chips. Sometimes, you know, he's yes, he's firing a bit Maybe hard. Maybe the sizing but, isn't uh, you know super polished. Yeah, but I mean, or the, live the, read guy stuff. The, yeah. the spots were nice. Yeah. I think I think the betting it out with the ace three, they're taking a shot at that pot is fine too. Speaking like, of ace three, Tom our Tomb. Tomb are Tomb all in, called yeah. by Minakuchi, who has plenty of chips to make this call and the much better hand pocket queens for M Minakuchi. I feel like an ace is coming. So do I. It, it feels I feel it in the air. I wouldn't argue with your strategy or your feelings. It's either an ace or two threes, I think. I don't know. I don't know about the two threes. Tom won his platinum pass for being an outstanding member of the community. Sorry, did you just correct people twice for their pronunciation of tomb get it wrong? get it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> tomb. Thank you. Oh, yeah. The sneaky way. The sneaky way. Thank you. Tomb's got outs. And Let's there it go. is. That Let's turn go. is all Let's Tomb. Go. Come on, show us Tomb's face. Yeah, look wow. at that. Stone Doesn't man. even flinch. Stone man. Bang. Boy, boy, whiskey. Runs down the queens. I knew it. I knew it. These guys did know it. <laughs> tomb up over a million now. Minakuchi drops to around 800,000. You know what Tomb kind of looks like? Is, uh, you know, when you go to the Halloween store and the guy that's the pirate? In, in, but like in the image, he's got a good uh, Halloween the, pirate, pirate look. Spirit Halloween costume. <laughs> yeah, Talal yeah, yeah, yeah. In big I trouble. <laughs> Talal's running to Kings here. I mean, that's as good, as good as it gets, though, with the, you know, if you don't have an ace, 21% is better than having tens. You guys just told me everything. Slightly, right? Yeah. Somehow. No blocker. 10 9 suited. Hmm. I guess, I guess you'd rather have six, seven suited, but ah, oof. that's a bad start for you, my friend. <laughs> a great flop. Needing a seven, eight, nine, or ten to stay alive here. 
Can't not even, that is not a spade not variation. Can't even, <laughs> hit, spade. Can't even oh. chop with the spades. Oh, okay. well, that's Shut life. Up. That's life. That's three outs. Is Shakirchi going to do to Pereira what he did to you? And oh, suck gosh. out on the river. No, a nine will be oh, okay. suck out. Man, that would be a nasty. I know one. I get a lot wrong, guys. But you got to give me a, just a tiny bit of slack here. Is the red hot? Nope. Just a king on the river. <laughs> Triples for Pereira. They're really dropping like flies here. When I sat down, I think there was 43, and we've lost 10 over 11 players in an hour. I think. It's been pretty wild. Maybe he was the cooler we thought we needed. Yeah, maybe. Tall all out in 33rd place, narrowly missing out on making the final table in this event. Two times in a row. Pretty sick run. Talal also does pretty well online. Talali two times. Yep. Talal's been beasting the tourney scene for a while now, honestly. Loves the game. He really does. Can I get a table change? <laughs> no table change, but we'll probably end up adding some folks. Since we're down to 32. I had Fedor, Jeremy, and. Imagine what kind of mood or mindset Fedor, Fedor is in right now. I'd assume that he has generally a pretty good mindset, but. Imagine how, like... Doesn't it help if you're already rich? True, but, I mean, even when you're in the tournament, if you have, like, a million chips right now after making a bad fold... Yeah. ...and not having three million chips... Yeah. That's pretty... Is it tough? Pretty tough, man. <laughs> You've got 20 bigs instead of being, like, a top five stack with 60 big blinds... Right. ...in a tournament where you're one of the better players So you do left. think about that. You are a human being when that happens. Yeah. You don't just go, all right, well, reset, a, every hand's a new... God, no, not me. I mean, I, I'm a, I mean I, I'm much better these days than I used to be. But I'm just saying, like, I bet you Fedor is, like, decent at, like, you know, not letting that kind of stuff hinder yeah. him. But <clears> that's the kind of thing right there that, like, you know, can send a recreational or somebody with a hot temper... To just oh, for the, sure. The rail, no, that you know? I can relate to. But no, I mean that's like that's what I'm saying. Like that's the most tilting thing. Like even if you can just like separate separate it all and differentiate it, I'm still sat there for the next half an hour just seething. You know, like how could you not be? I wonder what the average length of time is before you're truly over it and it's not affecting your decisions. Yeah, well, I guess it depends on what happens next, right? If you go into sure, win the tournament, right, yeah. then you don't care. Right. But if you bust out you 20 minutes two later... Sets, two hands later, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. But if you sit on a million chips, blind down to 700K, blinds go up to 60K, and you just jam and lose a flip, you know, or just jam ace-five and run into queens or something, then you, uh, you feel like a proper fool. Who doesn't? So it looks like Tran oh, limped in here with the queen seven offsuit, <laughs> and Mekian has gone for the ISO with the queen jack. A little bit unconventional here, I'd say, just because when you do isolate to 3x and get jammed on for the 20 big blinds, it kind of sucks to raise fold a hand like queen jack, and it's not quite good enough to um, raise call. That's why you often see going for the more polarized isolations from the big blind win at shallower stacks. You know, a bunch of garbage off suit, low stuff that you don't mind. Yeah, and the benefit, of, the benefit of checking back something like Queen Jack there too is that, you know, oftentimes you're, I mean, gonna absolutely, well, pretty much every time you're gonna have the best Jack or best queen on boards, and we just saw the example there. Yeah, I mean, queen you seven. You just fold out queen seven, which yeah, on a queen high board, you're going to bust your opponent there <laughs> instead of, you know, either getting sho shoved on when you limp, when you ISO yeah, sometimes, or just getting a fold from those worst hands. <laughs> yep, that's exactly it. You, you literally scare away the stuff that you dominate when you isolate a hand there and only pu push in stuff that. It's going to jam on you. I mean, you're obviously, he's going to call with, like, queen seven suited there, right? Which you're dominating still. Yes. So, like, it's not so, all no, that. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. But you are going to get uh, a queen, probably queen nine limp call there for three bigs. Like, what, if he, limp, what if he limp jams a pocket pair there, you know? No, that's, not, that's, not why, that, yeah, like, that's why you don't want to do it. Not yeah. that everybody would do it, but, like, what if, what if no, they do, you know? That would be Tran tragic. Tony puts in the deuces there, deuces through everything, so. Well, yeah. if he limps them. Here yes. comes Tony Tran with ace jack on the button. Going for the raise. Not, no immediate fold here. Oh. Esteban Maculon with the snowmen's. This nom, is an nom. interesting yeah. spot here. Very interesting, in my opinion. I mean, he's got about 2 million chips, right? So he's 40 big blinds effective with the big blind. Feels kind of just dangerous, reckless, kind of wild just to go all in. It does. Kind of feels like a little bit dicey to like 3-bet call 20 big blinds with 8s, although I definitely would not fault the man and 
might yeah. do it myself, but maybe you just throw a call in there, you know? Really? Yeah, I think I'd probably I just be continuing with the call. I mean, it's pretty rough to just, at this point in the tournament, 30 players left to three bet, get it in with pocket eights here. You know, it's not like your opponent's going to be pumping it in with pocket fives every single time. Right. So, all like, right. maybe they get it in with, like, sevens and then, you know, all better pairs and you're flipping. Maybe sixes. So is the rationale that the three bet will get the same folds from the button that the all in will? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, so we can just three bet and then fold to the big blind when we, when we get unfortunately put in against it, you know. Two tens, two eights. Yeah. It seems like yeah, it's just kind of this is like all these went all in. So uh, the three bet got shoved on, and eights call. So we're flipping here. Didn't happen exactly the way it would happen all the time, but. Like EPT Paris versus EPT <laughs> Cyprus. Here we go. One of these two hands has a slight mathematical advantage. And apparently the way those chips got shoved in was a little <laughs> sloppy, we'll call it. We're going to reconstruct those stacks before we deal it out, I guess. I just watched the door get real nice. That would be so funny. You just think you're being cool and you push it on. They're like, oh, all right, well, it's like now 10 we gotta, minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stack them all up before we can deal this hand, which I've never seen before, but sure, why not? It's like uh, s smashing a champagne glass, and everyone's like, well, what are you doing? And then we gotta clean that up. All right, I think we're almost about ready to deal these cards. There we go. Wow. Jack, eight, nine. So Couple of hearts, couple of hearts. Yeah, a set of eights for Maculon, two hearts for Tran. He's looking for an ace, jack, nine, heart, or ten, I guess. Mm -hmm. Turn is a that king, the king of diamonds. Is dead. No out for okay. Tran. So it probably wouldn't have mattered what happened there. If he would have flatted in the right. small blind with the eights, probably would have gone for the check raise and they get it all on the flop there, you know, but. And that's going to be the end of Tony Tran. Another one bites the dust. Always sad to bust out and then have to wait around in your seat for a minute. <laughs> No, uh, 30 oh, seconds. Two new place. players for 81,400. That's right. Two new players taking seats at the feature table. That's Alexander Shilko and Joris Royce. Joris. Joris, a very good player. Yes. Very good online poker legend. Bill Lewinsky. Wow. A very strong player indeed. I've seen this other fellow around too. I, I would. My assumption would be that. He knows what's what. That's Alexander Shilko. <laughs> Just a pleasure to be here for these fellows, though, isn't it? Just wonderful to be in the main event with 30 players left, 4 million. I mean, USD every elimination is more and more money in your pocket. Dios mío, yeah. Lots, too, huh? Yeah, one, one, two, up. So, Shilko, thank you, producer Chris, for reminding me. Join the feature table, I think, yesterday, maybe the day before, for a hand. Okay. And then they broke. moved him again. Yeah. And now he's at the feature table, and we're going on break in 18 minutes. It may not be keeping <laughs> the same feature table. So he's staying out. He's staying out of the spotlight. Yeah. Thinking about it on the first hand, looks like a very reasonable hand to flick in a raise with. 17 big blinds, too many for a shove. Most definitely, yeah. 
probably going to see most decent players start shoving around 15 big blinds from earlier position. Maybe you'll find a little bit of some deeper shoves on the button, of course, in the small blind, but generally in early position, middle position. Live poker is slightly different. I mean, online is different than this, or is it still no, 15? No, 15 <laughs> is roughly the threshold you'll see. I mean, some players will play more raises, and maybe some will play a few more shoves, but I think the better players, you're not going to see them shove more than 15 big blinds from middle position very often, if at all. <clears throat> and if they were, they would choose maybe like an ace eight suit or an ace nine suit as opposed to an ace nine off suit. So it looks like that last elimination was a pay jump also, because everyone like, up to 93.5. Man, that was quick. I mean, it's all been quick, man. If we yeah. only, we're only in the second level of the day. And you're down to 30, what, 54 started today? 54, yeah. 54? 52 maybe, but it's in that same range. Playing down to a final table today, right? We're playing, we Hopefully. really want to get down to six. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. <clears throat> Big day ahead for these guys. See, a call on the button with the king-queen seems very reasonable. Not loving life if you're the ace nine here, though. Yeah, it's flopped a, a gut shot draw to the wheel. Always sad when you raise one of these loose ace-x offsuits from earlier position off of 20 big blinds and get flatted by someone in position. Well, we got to cut away from this hand because we have got another all-in triangle. Markash, all-in. Oh, wow. Ausmus all in has made the call, ace something. He doesn't look over the moon, so I guess it's a... Oh, that's good. It's a flip. Yeah. I don't know. It's pretty. I think it's close. What do you have? One. one. Markish, by our count, has Ausmus covered just. And a flip, indeed, it is. What do you like for a flip? Uh, monkeys versus turtles? I mean, well, versus I, mid. listen, I see the percentages, but I know what a skilled, skilled, truly skilled player Jeremy Ausmus is. Jeremy Ausmus is. In all ends. How about based versus red pilled? Whoa. Based. <laughs> all right, there we go. Like being based versus being red pilled, one of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage, a little bit more than usual in this case. Like something being fire or lit. There you go. King and an ace on the flop. Look of no surprise. I've just Topic. met Jeremy Jeremy for this for the first time this trip. Seems like a lovely fellow, but I have heard about his exploits and how truly epic he is at winning all in all in situations. Hmm. Well, the epicness the leg shakes. is incredibly likely to continue. And what a beautiful flip it is for him to win. Yeah. Al Smith survives, doubles up, and decimates the PT fisherman. It's ten. <laughs> Is it 10? He says he's, he's winning. That's what I assume. Arnold Palmer Lemonade says, I feel sad I don't know what based or red pilled means. Actually, you're, you're probably better off for it. Yeah, don't, definitely. Don't do it. That's a pretty based comment, bro. <laughs> <laughs> And Al Smith jumps to the top of the leaderboard at Jesus, the feature table. Jesus, what a short stack feature table this is. Out of feature table this is. I mean, average stack is uh, 2 million. 1.97 million. 1.96. And there's only one player on the table that has slightly above average. How about that? Yeah, I don't think we're in any danger of the all-in slowing down. Certainly not at that table. Definitely not at that table, no. There's our denominations in the bottom there, in case you're wondering. The black 250 case coming out soon, I would assume. Is there oh, is there a boss uh, boss 250 chip? Yeah, it's pretty cool. They'll come out eventually because they come out uh, in the side events when you get heads up or three handed. Not that I know, but I've seen other people. <laughs> I've heard. I've yeah. watched Connor get heads up in yes, many a side yes, events. Yes, yes. So I've seen the 200. I like how you games. all pretend like it's your friends that are really the good ones when all of you are absolute crushers. It's uh, well, I have no success in 
live poker, so. You were final table the like last tournament I commentated. Yeah, that was that was like the <laughs> one that I, and I got fifth place. Like the main event, the main yeah. Event. And I got fifth. For hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I got fifth. Fedor opening this pot with the old artisanal sourdough, ace five suited. <laughs> artisanal. See if oh, and he does. He does indeed have a good enough hand to play. A very hand you're very happy to get in with. Happy and to get it in with. You just wish you had more chips. You'd get it in for much more than this. And we saw Fader Holtz. This is barely a re-raise. Fold the pocket jacks. So this Ace Five suited. <laughs> oh, get out of here! <laughs> oh, you get right out of town, Griff. <laughs> Holtz does, in fact, make the call. So you guys were saying that Fedor Holtz actually lost an all-in yesterday? Yeah. Is that right? Four-bit all-in, uh, button, small blind. Like, uh, I don't know the exact stack, stacks, but I'm pretty sure at least 40 bigs each. Oh, but wow. He got it in really yeah. bad, though, didn't he? No, he had Fedor had ace-king against ace-three hearts. Oh, I thought the hands were reversed. No, 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 no. Raise button, Fedor, three bets, I think the small. Oh, that's crazy, then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty safe flop for That's Marquee. That's a great here. flop. Marquez, um, no backdoor straight draws, no backdoor flush draws. You're just trying to fade the turn and then hope that Barry is taking a nap. <laughs> There's no Barry coming on this one. I mean, you guys were right well, several times already today, yeah. so who am yeah. I? No, I mean, you, you oh, yeah. see, the thing is, the way that poker flow and the poker gods work, right? Oh, is now listen up, everybody. Well, the the one guy the who says I don't win any live well, tournaments I, because I know how it works, and this is the kind of thing that happens to me. Okay, okay. you make the bad fold with the jacks and fade or shoes, uh -huh. and, and now boxes. you have fucked your whole. I actually totally so, understand what you're you've saying. Ju he's just like, and now he's just losing these like casual small ones that are super easy to win. You know, like that's a four hundred k He's not in sync pot. anymore. He's not in sync. He's done for now. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, I mean, he is. I hate to say I it, but that, he yeah. is. He's gonna get it in. He's gonna blind down a little bit. I'm not going to be here for the exit, but the blinds are going to be either 60k or 80k big blind. He's going to have 12 or 13 blinds. He's going to get it all in with pocket nines, and he's going to bust. Yeah. And he would have never had that situation if he just had three there, million there chips. A, there's a divergent timeline where he calls the jacks. Exactly, and he, and he goes on to scoot yeah. the tournament. And, yeah, and yeah knows, but there's a divergent maybe. timeline where I win this event. No, I, mean, I don't know that. that. No, 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 no. Actually, I've just scouted all <laughs> infinite timelines, <laughs> no, 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 no. and literally none of them. Yeah. I, don't know if you, I don't know if you read. I don't know if you read the fine print of everything everywhere all at once, but it was everything everywhere all at once except Set. Joe winning. <laughs> 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 well, I love folds pocket threes. Good discipline fold there off of the 27 big blind stack. Mark well, freshly doubled up. Two shorties, though, in the button in the small blind here, so and there we have it. And all in with the seven of spades. Um... Somewhat of a close spot here with the A6. I don't think it will be a close spot for Tomb, and I don't think overall it's that close. I think it's probably just a fold, and a pretty happy one at that. Um, but I think, yeah, we'll definitely be seeing him fold. I would assume he'll be playing on the tighter side here while we get deep, which is incredibly yeah. reasonable. And even with a hand like A6, like, I think you've got to go I've with A6 here. How many years have you been playing poker? 13. Can you remember more than like twice that you won with ace six off? Ace six off? Good hand. <laughs> Man, I, I really don't want to disagree with Tom. You that's can make not, all sorts of. It's not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> not. I once saw a man five bet all in with ace six and beat aces. Or six bet all in. That is. Oh, that's true. Was that. Um, Maximilian against Deeb. Was it against Deeb, right? Was it Heinzelman? Yeah, it was uh, indeed. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Max. Yeah, that was a famous hand. That was an uh, awesome hand. Under 10 minutes left on the level. That's First like session of the day, headed to break after the this. Main. Day was like three day of the main, three of the main so event. so many chips. For like, it was like 2K big blind. It and must they have got been, in, yeah, They got, got in like 320K each. It's like... He like 6 bet or 7 bet huge. jammed A6 offsuit. Yeah. And just spiked two sixes on pocket aces. 
Yeah. Yeah. Legend. It was on Deeb, right? It was against Deeb, It was Deeb, in Deeb, yeah, it? yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a great hit. Ace-5 suited. He let go of the threes, but we'd assume that he won't be letting go of the uh, Ace-5 suited. You got to make a hand for Ace-5 suited or something, Joe. <laughs> Are you sure? You must be doing a bet. Huh? Is that a bet? You no, it's not a bet. He doesn't watch the stream enough. Oh. I, by the way, I don't think you should watch the stream, but no, no, no. we well, do have a hand for Ace-5 okay, suited. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's called Artisanal Sourdough. Ace-5 oh, is sourdough. Yeah. Ace-5 suit is artisanal sourdough. I see, I didn't, I didn't know. Because it became very much in fashion right around the same time everyone started baking their sourdough yeah, bread, like in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 wow, yeah. I got him with something. He, wow, he's, he's finally going to talk. That's a good one. That's a good one. It's, it's, a good one. Honestly, I like it a lot. It's your I like it a lot. Bit. That is really that's good. a really nice bit. Yeah, yeah and they like created that. a graphic whenever, whenever it, uh, it for gets online. For online. Nice. Where like, like he it. comes by James bakes a loaf of bread, and I and I eat it. That's very good. That's why, yeah. Artisanal sourdough. You should I stop like. by more often. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got bits for days. Doom doom doom. I, I will comment on all the folds. Tonka will comment. Uh, we'll we'll um, let the tournament director speak. We will have peace in the booth. Peace in the booth. All right. Just taking a flop. Hoping for no spades. You know why we lost the graphics? Because there's another all-in at the main uh, featured table. The first time I'm all in this <laughs> Shilko versus Royce, the two new players at the table. Apparently, we're trying to get w rid of one of them. Royce is behind, but has Shilko out-chipped. And... Royce hits a jack. More outs. Ten on the turn. Oh, I got a root for a king or a jack here. My boy Billy. King. River card. Oh. Does not help Royce. That's a double up for Shilko. And Royce drops down to the shortest stack at the table now, 14 big blinds. Wow, so actually must have been quite a dicey spot there for Yoris. Looks like he raised called a 10 and a half big blind jam from the cutoff versus small blind with King Jack offsuit. Yeah, that's a tough spot. That's very, a very, very tough spot. spot with about one point something million chips he's got there. 1.3 million to start the He's left with 720, so he would yeah, have had 1 .2. 25 <laughs> big blinds to call off 10.5, yeah. Yeah, tough spot there for sure. Tough, really tough. Shilko, all smiles. Good to see people happy, enjoying themselves. Yeah, it's always surprising when people are enjoying themselves with 31 left in a $4 million first place. <laughs> it's weird when they're not, though, That's which is true. still That's plenty true. of people. That's true. Yeah, those Eastern Euros. <laughs> Those guys can get mad at anything. Although to be fair, I can get, I can I can get mad at a lot. I think lot. it's more just you know how seriously people take it, not in a bad yeah, way. Yeah, just... definitely for sure. I'm I'm giving a bit of grief here, but yeah, that's definitely a language barrier as well. A lot of a lot of those guys. Don't speak a ton of English. I mean, you're really good at being a deep thinker and also having, like, outwardly showing having fun, but I can't imagine that it's that easy for most people yeah, to absolutely. think about the you're game right. on such a high level and also goof off. That is very fair. So we see the tight fold with the 7-6 suited. Like to see it. I wouldn't have hated to see an open either with his chip stack, but very reasonable. Just about three minutes left on this level. And the players will be going to a break. Yes. Yeah, first break of the day. First break of the day, and you're in for a real treat in the next couple levels. Maria's going to be joining the stream. Shilko putting some of that new glimmer into play. Why not on the they button? Button raised here, gets the shades on. He's ready to go. Well, we know that Wen likes to play pots, so don't expect him to fold the Jack-10. Will we see a rejam? Not a hand that most people opt for the rejam with, but... But some people, but some people uh, percentage might. of the time, 
surely will. Yeah, I don't think it'd be like the craziest thing ever here if you think Shilko is loose or something, but probably just want to call most yeah. of the time and reserve our three bet jams all ins with uh, you know, Ace X, King X, maybe some maybe some suited holdings, not not Jack Ten off suit. Probably just gonna see a check bet take it. That is the funny thing about poker sometimes though, is that in this situation we both agree that the right thing to do with this hand, Jack Ten, is to call. But the right thing in this exact hand would have been to shove because King Ten would have folded. Mm. <laughs> right? Like, it's yeah. just, you know, it's, there's just all these elements that you can't control. It's just the chaos. For sure. Um, and it's, it's, it's a, such an amazing game in that way. Man, win is sticky. You can tell. Even just the fact that he's taken the extra, you know, ten, may, may, maybe he just takes 10 seconds to fold on every, every single street or something. But, yeah. you know, it felt like he was no, really that felt considering, like, uh, you know, you know just... Getting up to no good there with Jack Ten, you know, just yeah. maybe maybe a little raise or. It's one of the things I've I've learned about watching y'all play uh, the best players in the world, which is that you think about every single option before you do anything. Yeah, you need to have some. This you don't need coffee. It's way, yeah, yeah. See if this will be the last hand of the level. Probably with the speed with which most of these guys are folding and whatnot, which is of course fair. Everybody taking their five seconds when they want to enter a pot or whatever. Mm -hmm. What I've been seeing lately too is one player will just tank and make sure that the clock ticks down so that everyone can go everyone to break. Everyone goes on break, yeah. Hey, I mean, it's whatever, you know, like if some, if you got to run up to the room or something and the room's like a seven minute walk away. Sure. Just knowing that, yeah, that you, once you folded that, you know, that, that you, you can go. Yeah. Exactly. You don't have to wait around for the last second. Yeah. But that being said, all the breaks in these main events have been about 20 minutes, 22 minutes in some of the in, in the PSPC. So lots of time to. Yeah. Which we also on, you know, on the yeah. production thing, the extra appreciate minutes? too. It's that specifically for the broadcast or for the, the TV crew team, I believe. I don't know exactly what it is but the ah, 22 yeah. minutes is for the tv team i believe does that have anything to do with this hour has 22 minutes no my, my <laughs> it's a canadian tv right? show <laughs> i'm glad that i have a canadian I'm, on here that like took you a second but like yeah i did, did today a second i was like <laughs> great show though great show rick mercer right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. we Where grew we up on that owner. stuff rick mercer yeah what a beauty win in an excellent position here too what? Probably just get a shove through, and depending on what okay. the big blind ends up waking up with, uh, going to be too many oh, chips are? for Pereira, okay. despite that massive break, stack with just the suited King Five, surely. Okay, yeah, so can I get my phone is what I'm looking for. Yeah, sure. <laughs> You'll get your phone, Blake. Give you wait your turn. Phone. Give the man his phone already. The man his phone. That's going to do it for I, this <laughs> hand. That's going to do it for the first session. Well, guys, thanks for having me in. Thank you, Dude, Tom. you were a pleasure. I appreciate I'm it. I don't very, even have anything, any, anything ironic to say. I was really, very disappointed really that I don't get to see Samuel. Yeah, we'll um, see him. Well, I'm sure. funny oh, you should we mention go. that, Tonka. Because when we come back from the break, we're going to have a new feature table uh. featuring. At the feature table, we'll be featuring Thomas I. Shen, Tom Parsons, Platinum Pass winner, Felipe Boyanovsky, Andre Bogian, Sam Grafton, Max Menzo, Chris Mormon, wow, and Matthew Hunt. So a pretty obvious choice there. And this a is the table we're leaving. Star studded table. That's right. Um, this table yeah. will be headed back into the field. And during the break, check out a little video from the Dublin meetup game featuring Tom Parsons, who's coming up to the main stage. More from the PSPC when we return. It was great to have the Irish Battle Pass winners here in the restaurant. Uh, it's my family restaurant for the last 20 years. We uh, got to know each other a little bit, had a bit of fun. We had a, a lovely meal and uh, it was great crack. They're a great bunch. Team Ireland shaping up to be a brilliant team. Great players, uh, as we've just had our sit and go and they showed their chops. So they're, they're really solid players, really good. There's such big money up for grabs. The PSBC is gonna change someone's life forever. It's really nice that there's a 
strong community of Platinum Pass winners, even if there's less this time around from Ireland, there's still a lot of people who we've chatted over the last few years, got to know each other over COVID. We have at least three professionals coming from Team Ireland, so I would say we have a very strong chance at having at least one or two caches, and I have a lot of confidence in any of the players going forward if they got through to the sort of final table. Eugene Kachlov has aces in the cutoff. And he will three bet to 3,600. Uh-oh, Kokoschka's got queens. Bad luck for Kokoschka. Just because Eugene three bet doesn't mean he has to have aces or kings by any means. He just happens to. So another bet here usually is pretty much mandatory. He makes it 7,000. Action folded around to the limper. Should be an easy decision for Boyacian, and that decision is to fold like the wind. He gets out of the way. Mason does the same. I think Eugene's move is pretty obvious, and it rhymes with ballin, which he is, by the way. He is all in, and Kokoschka immediately calls, and we'll see the bad news. I genuinely think there's a shot that some folks could have gotten away from that hand. It sounds crazy, but I don't think Eugene's messing around all that often with a four bat. What do I know, man? I can see all the whole cards. Jack 6-4 flop. Eugene, a 90% favorite to double up here. Oh, a queen on the turn! What am I talking about? You have to call the queens every time. Eugene drawing to just one ace. One out for the 2011 Super High Roller Champion. Eugene's so good, he could do it. No, it's a three. And we lose Eugene Kachalov from the tournament. I don't get saying nice hand after you win. Seems inappropriate. Point, buddy. King Queen suited for Nico Senninger. Love Queen suited. He raises to 1200. Both Elki and Chainsaw have folded. Mick Graydon's got aces in the small blind. We know Senninger is super active and doesn't really fold the three bets, so raising here is a no brainer. 22. 42. It makes it 3,200. There are nine people at this table and 11 accents. I love the EPT. Ace four for JMP. Like He's that. finally decided to join us. And he folds. Senninger's got a strong hand, but he probably doesn't want to put in a fourth bet. He will call and he will see a flop in position. That flop is king, jack, five. Senninger with top pair and the second nut flush draw. Huge flop for Senninger. It's the kind of flop you're happy to get it in with. Graydon's made it 3,400. Senninger calls. Senninger certainly could have raised, but he likely thinks he's so far ahead of Graydon's range that he'd lose value, and usually he'd be right. Six of hearts on the turn. Graydon now checks. I assume Senninger will want to bet now to try to get two streets of value. Senninger makes it 7,100. Graydon's all in. Senninger calls. Pretty standard. Don't think you can really fold. Both guys played it just fine. There are 13 cards that Senninger can hit to improve. As it stands, there's a 68% chance Mick Graydon doubles up. But it's a spade on the river. There's the flush for Senninger. Thank you. Watching aces get cracked is never pretty, but always entertaining. on Xuan Lu. 6-8 off. She folds. Carl Julius Mux. King Queen in the small blind. Alan. Bras moves all in. Call. And runs into aces. DeBella makes the call. And Faraz Jacker, who's been such a dominant force in this tournament, is now on the verge of elimination. He has gotten his money in oh so bad. He's actually a bigger dog now than DeBella was on the last hand. The reigning champion has come to watch the horror show. Faraz looks like he's about to have his verdict read by a jury. The flop does give Faraz a little bit of hope. He is drawing to a gut shot now. 
Oh, no, you didn't. Jack of supporters calling for a 10. And there's a 10 on the turn! And aces are drawing dead. The crowd goes wild. The poker gods have served up a sweet Justice Eve vindication. It'll be a while before Faraz can complain about getting sucked out on again. Karma, anyone? There it is in action. Balance has been restored to the force. There are either a lot of people here to cheer on Faraz or some of these guys don't understand what just happened. I'd say DeBell is taking it well, but there's no gum in there. Patrick Sluzerak has just taken a seat. Welcome to the table, sir. Pocket aces. Yeah, not bad. This is one of the best starting hands you can have. He understandably raises, makes it 8,500. Tom Hall has pocket tens in the cutoff. Sluzerak just got to the table, and he raised from fairly early. I don't know if I can get behind a three bet here, and for Tom's sake, I'm hoping he keeps his pot small. He does re-raise. The three bet is 21,500. Everyone else has folded. It's back on Sluzerak. There's only two ways this can go. Although fold is an option that is available, I don't think he'll take it. Now I'm just gonna say one thing here, Tom. You better sluze a check yourself before you sluze a wreck yourself. It's a four bet, so 49,000. I think there's just too many chips to get it all in here. All in. Hall moves all in! Well, GG online qualifier, who's next? Hall. Sluzerek calls, and the qualifier's flame is about to be extinguished. Yeah, not good, Tom. Not good. I put my faith in you, Tom. He is a four to one underdog. Hearts. He's gonna need four or five of them. No hearts on the flop. Not a lot of hope there. All getting ready to head for the exit. The turn card is another deuce. Just two outs for Tom Hall. He needs a 10 on the river. Sluzerek, a 95% favorite. It's a 10! <laughs> oh, suck out city. Jesus. Tom Hall binks a two-outer to survive. And it's like winning a frivolous lawsuit. You're happy about it, but you're certainly not proud of it. Well, Luca is making his way to the next table with Naoya Yokohara and Jonathan Roy. Our all-in player is Jonathan and he holds two red queens and Naoya has pocket aces. I like Naoya, but I hate to see anyone bubble, especially on a cold deck. Queen ball. The flop is queen of spades, five of hearts, eight of clubs. Once again, our all-in player holds pocket queens and he's top set. Well played. Will it hold? And a turn card. Turn is a six of diamonds. Jonathan has to fade two cards. And the river card. The river is a seven of hearts. And Jonathan will double up with a set of queens. And the bubble rolls on. <laughs> Sorry. Over at the secondary feature table, Brazilian qualifier Charles Modesto has picked up aces. All right, look at his photo and then look at him. Would you ever suspect that would be what's hiding under his hat? That is not a man bun. That's a man croissant. Here comes the race. Raise. 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 Oh, yay! Yeah. <laughs> don't understand. Okay. Don't, okay, don't mind. <laughs> Whatever he says, just say yes. <laughs> ah, okay, yes. Say good, I'll say goodbye, no, say yes, say yes, say yes. Okay. Oh, man. Streltsov's got jacks. <laughs> no, it's more. This is help you. Okay. Yeah, he yeah, almost got it. <laughs> I'm all in. Well, he's going to get called in at least one spot. Let's see if the blinds wake up with anything. Farhad Hakim is in the small. 14. He passes. Anoshka in the big. Gets out of the way. Okay, Charles. Call. In Portuguese, call. Show me. Pago. Great spot for our qualifier. Yes. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Good luck, guys. My God. <laughs> the hashtag this is incredible. Oh. Here comes the flop. Oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> Unfortunate. Aces on Hever, please. Or just one ace. Charles needs a two outer. At least he's not the at risk player here. No. <laughs> not this time. <laughs> Good. Yes. You. I. Hugs. And you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you have more. You, no, you don't need to be upset. You have a lot of chips. He doesn't actually, but he's taking it remarkably well. Oh my god. Good. <laughs> Gotta love the attitude. What? <laughs> so now that hand is concluded, we can go back to table Greenstein. Barry all in and at risk, called by Brian Potashnik. So we have an all in and a call in the main event on table six. Our all in player is Barry Greenstein with pocket eight. And he has been called by Brian with pocket aces. The bear is way behind. This could be the hand that bursts the bubble. Everyone wants to capture the moment. Everyone's rooting against him. The flop is king six four. Barry down to 10% equity. And the turn count. <laughs> Is three of it. <laughs> Barry needs an eight on the river or the bubble bursts. And the river counts. The river is oh. an eight. <laughs> oh. so we have a double up. <laughs> Time to write a new book. Oh, the bad beat alarm is working. <laughs> Barry! You got what you wanted. I thought it was the only hand I would have played against, Joe. Barry Greenstein doubles up, and we are still on the bubble at the PCA main event. Let's head over to our secondary feature table, where Oleg Titov has opened with aces and been called by two players. Andrei Lubavetsky with ace-queen, and Daniel Kupel with pocket fives. There's a five. In the window. A set for Koopal. What do you got there, Daniel? Koopal of fives. He leads the flop, 17,000. And the flop lead is polarizing. Usually the person leading is looking for a fold or a raise. Titov with his overpair raises to 45,000, gets a fold from Lubavetsky. Huh. Action back on Koopal. I'm all in. He shoves for 150K. I know no one's going to believe this, but I can honestly say I would fold aces here. Titov calls. <laughs> so the five, of course. <laughs> I'll probably you get the aces. Ace on the turn, ace on the river. Hey, come on. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Always. Probably. There's a big chance you're in. 91% chance. People just get overly attached to aces. A 10 on the turn. Daniel Koopal just has to fade the case ace on the river to survive. Oh, it's the case five. What? <laughs> Two pair. That's annoying. Koopal doubles up through Titov. New player at the feature table. Brian Ponce has just taken a seat. Action on Adrian Mateos. Queen Deuce. Nice snap. Well, he's folded. Corey Aldemir with 9 6 of diamonds. Sides to raise. 21,000. Speaking of unnecessary. Oh, hello. Aces for Andre Lubavetsky. Go on. Sneaky, just a call. I love it. Ponce and Barry have both folded. 
Juan Ponce de la Fold. Florian Maurer has pocket eights in the big blind. Eighty. Bad time for a squeeze, Florian. No boy. Fold from the original razor, but there's no way that Lubavetsky's folding. He's the effective stack here with 410k behind. And he is all in. Last time I saw a trap this good, a ghost was being sucked into it at the Millennium Biltmore Hotel. Wow, quick call from Maurer, who will see that he is crushed. And Lubavetsky is a 4 to 1 favorite to double up here. Love it. Maurer will be left with a bowl of rice. The flop is Jack 7 4. Maurer drawing to two outs. Lubavetsky now a 9 to 1 favorite. Four on the turn. Maurer down to 5% equity. If the light is green, the trap is clean. The river card is an eight. That is not clean at all. Ooh, Maurer gets there. Look, I got I to gotta step away. I got to go. Look, I, I, I'd be no good to you the rest of the day after this. A bad beat for Andre Lubavetsky, which sees him eliminated in 25th place from the PCA main event. Me and Andre, I'll see you at the bar. Hello, my babies, and welcome back to the Poker Stars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. Live coverage of day four from the Baja Mar Resort in Nassau, the country of the Bahamas. Overall tournament chip leaders with 31 players remaining. Thomas Eshen, Tom Parsons, Dylan DiStefano, the top three. And a couple of those names will be here at our main feature table. Thomas Eshen, Overall chip leader, table chip leader, Tom Parsons, platinum pass holder, goes by the nickname Pred. You asked for him, you got him. You've also been asking for Sam Grafton, fifth in chips at this table with 30 big blinds. Max Menzel, the other platinum pass holder with 29, and an all time great Chris Moorman. Sits in seventh at the table, also UK favorite. Matthew Hunt, the shortest stack at this table. Joe Stapleton and Maria F. Ho. Oh, wow, F. Isn't F your, is your middle name F? No. It's not? It's I don't mean a, a word starting with F. It's not the letter F? <laughs> no, it's oh. T. T. Close, but not even close. Maria T. Oh, it's like Maria, though. <laughs> <laughs> Secondary feature table remains unchanged. Jeremy Ausmus still the chip leader here. This is pretty whack, right, Maria? The chip leader at the table having 38 big blinds? Yeah, I, again, we've talked about how shallow this seems to be playing and certainly seems to be the case with this table. Quite shallow. Nacho Barbero, 25 big blinds. Del Grosso, 25 bigs. Three platinum pass holders including community leader Nicholas Toom. Got his platinum pass for being an all around awesome dude in the Dare to Stream competition. Andre Markesh, the PT Fisherman, tied for shortest stack at the table with Renato Minicucci. Blinds now 30,000, 60,000 with a 60,000 big blind ante. Pretty insane action. We were bebopping and scotting all over the main table, the <laughs> secondary feature table. The field was going crazy. We went from 50 plus players to 31 in the first two levels. I guess it's worth mentioning, I saw Nadia Magnus in the foreground right there. That's pretty cool. Nadia does a lot in the poker yeah. community. The big blind is the starting stack. 
and was a contestant on the Poker Stars Big Game oh so long ago and has stayed on the poker scene ever since. Pretty cool. Yeah, that yesterday I was like, it would be nice to make the, like, the 60K blind level. Like, you got changed. It's always good to tournament like Nice try. Nice luck. And so trying to, to get you. Andre <laughs> Bogiev like uh, in his seat. That's what's causing the delay here. You can see Greg, yeah, our sound up. guy, <laughs> waiting <laughs> patiently with <laughs> microphone in hand. Which, uh, Chris Mormon, online legend. Nice. What? Has a fair I, I, few I, I live results as well. Yeah. Sporting the flamingo shirt, how also appropriate. Sam Grafton. Tom Parsons. To his left, you are right. Tom sporting that, the power, Patty I'm Power patch. Irish Open, part of the really Poker like Stars that. family now, yeah. coming up. Yeah. She got three to drink that day, huh? Yeah. Great, right, by the way. So much fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, so cool. And we are dealing. Did they, did they talk? Did they stop talking? And Sam wants to make sure that, <laughs> that everyone is dealing. Certainly want to keep things fair here. And oh, technically. <laughs> we are underway. Mormon's out. This is Thomas Aishen. Average stack is 1.9 million, and with the big blind at 60,000, that's still very shallow. That's just over 30 bigs. Yeah, I think that definitely this structure, I think players might have expected it to play a little bit deeper at this stage. Obviously, though, we know that uh, we are trying to play down to six today. So for us, the brisk pace is needed in terms of production. Yeah, I mean, there was a big time bust out Bonanza in the last level. And I think that that's probably gonna continue for the next little while. Yeah, important to keep an eye on the fact that the next pay jump gets into six figure territory though. So some people might be hanging on for that a few places away. folds around a Grafton with four high. He will not play. Pred folds. I agree. <laughs> Menzel, queen suited in the small blind. Crazy table. Beautiful looking hand. It used to be a crazy table, now I have another. <laughs> yeah, that's not as true. Is it weird that I love king, queen suited, but I'm less excited about it in the small blind? Yeah, I think that's pretty weird. Is it weird? I just feel like the, you know what? Nope, never mind. Do it like 200,000 the raise. Maybe I'll open limp, limp re raise. Limp main play. Mark, isn't it? Boyanovsky with Jack Six. Tom, Tom. Boynowski does have 39 bigs to start the hand. One of the bigger stacks at the table, number three. You can just fold this, right? Yeah, especially if you feel like your opponent isn't going to be raising too often from the small into your big, considering you have him covered with um, a lot of these hands that, you know, Jack Six would be doing well against. So. Yeah. Seems like a There's fine fold, given the circumstances. Converting mm -hmm. Twitter to real life. That's true. There we go. 
Andre's made it finally. It's a good thing. You don't want to miss out on this, Andre. It's the year of Romania. <laughs> Don't worry about the camera too much. Well, maybe if you showed up on time, you would have gotten the like, whole spiel. Yeah, they will use this cheese. So we should do it. But, but like, if we should, but, 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 like, yeah, because. Here? Yeah, they like that. Uh, so no, 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 no. It's. it's, it's, it's <laughs> this is it's not, it's not okay. Well, no, no, I haven't seen little, someone yeah. <laughs> sort of fish out of water. No, no, no offense on the word fish here. Uh, at the TV table in a long time. Another nice looking hand for Menzel now on the button. I didn't pose on the full toilet. They just kept moaning how bad. Is that a good looking joke? <laughs> Two tens. Six people got mm. it. No, but now I wish it was. When she's a ten, but she's also a ten. I don't know anyone. Yeah, you can't get, you can six years off, you can, like, come back and won't be around. Menzel's made it $180,000, a 3Xer. I was just going to mention that, Joe. Just a little surprising to see somebody go full 3X. You know, it's definitely dependent. Your race, your open size should be dependent on your own stack size and taking into consideration the effective stacks behind you. But I think in this case, 3X from the button off of Menzel stack is definitely on the larger side. Boyanowski with a contender here in the small blind suited ace. Wojnowski shoves on Menzel. Yeah, effectively. Hunt folds in the big blind. Yeah, putting it back on Menzel to have to call off, but I would 100% be in here with tens. You have to remember that Boyanovsky would not shove all of his stronger hands than tens in this spot. He would just clearly right. go for the three bet. In fact, you know, He's, he would do this a lot with smaller pairs, pairs that Menzel would have crushed here and these types of suited ace-x hands. You know, even the premium, you know, ace-kings, ace-queens are just going to three-bet get it in. They're not just going to be shoving. I would have been in there yesterday with two tens. Well, you would have saved a tie bank card at least. One of those has been used by Menzel. He says, yeah, word shove. He should be able to see through this. I don't know too much about Menzel or his playing history, but I think any good rag clearly would have made this call already. I understand that this is a lot of money. I know that they're a few spots away from a pay jump, but you have to be happy to get the money in when your range is so much stronger in this spot against your opponents. Menzel does make the call, will be the player at risk, but is faring quite well against this particular hole. Like, Maria, you know I'm a gigantic nit, and I would have beat him into the pot also. <laughs> two ten, so. Good to hear, States. I would have been there yesterday with two tens, apparently. 
getting people pretty excited out in chat. King high flop. No diamond either. Manzel, I can understand sweating this pretty hard, but things are looking pretty, pretty, pretty good for for two tens. They look good, you know, a couple of tens. Come on. Rivers a six. Double up Menzel and Boyanovsky. Boy, oh boy, did that hurt. Down to seven big blinds. Hey, there we go. What do you think for a bad lookalike for Menzel? Michael Shannon. I don't know who Michael Shannon is. Michael Shannon, he has a small part in Lucky You, if I remember correctly. He's the player that gets called back after they forgot to burn the card. I did not watch Lucky You. Lucky You? No. Well, yeah, Lucky Me, I didn't yes. watch it, yeah. Yes, lucky. I, I, I have heard um, that it's not necessarily at the top of people's lists of poker movies. It's kind of neat because there's a ton of cameos in it and they like really try, like they built that Bobby's room like on a sound stage and like it looks, oh, I thought it was in Bobby's room when they first. Uh, oh really, it looked. Yeah, when I first saw it. That and there's like a lot of nods to the poker industry, like some prop bets that existed in real life. And the dude's, the dude, the main character's name is Huckleberry. Um, so there's like a lot of little nods to the poker world, but. That's cool. The cu you, cuteness ends there. Do, do you feel like as a poker pro though, I should watch it regardless? You could learn something maybe. Just to even be a part of the conversation maybe, right? Like when it comes up in these situations, I should be able to say, oh yeah, that, or add to the combo. Yes. No, I don't know. If you're the, see, you're the sort of person that doesn't like to say if something isn't good, so maybe it's better you don't see it. Because I don't like doing that anymore either, but I've been on record many times as saying I'm not really a lucky you person, but. But anyway, Michael Shannon was in that movie, which you haven't seen. He was in, did you ever watch Boardwalk Empire? No, I didn't watch that. Wait, I don't think he was in that. But um, I heard Boardwalk Empire was good, though. Uh, who was in Boardwalk Empire? Okay, Superman, the Superman movie, played General Zod in one of the Superman. Wow, okay. Have you seen a movie? <laughs> I have. The last movie I saw was Avatar, The Way of Water. Did you see Bullet Train? Nope. <sighs> Did you see Knives Out? Yes. The original Knives yes. Out? Yes. Okay, in Knives Out, <laughs> he is... I'm probably not going to remember. You know what? I'm just going to show you the... Yeah, why don't we go Parsons, for a photo? Parsons, did you see The Shape of Water? No. Have you seen Water? Yes. You saw The Way of Water, but not The Shape of Water. Yes, those are indeed two different movies. Okay. Michael Shannon. He looks familiar. Tremendous and I, actor. And I do kind of see the resemblance. Three bet from wow. Menzel gets this done. And uh, from Michael Shannon. There you go. That's what I'm talking about, Menzel. Now you're going to be the big stack. The Iceman, that was pretty good, where he played the, the real-life hitman, the Iceman. That was really great. Maybe his best role, honestly. Arnold Palmer wanting to give me to give Avatar 2 a rating on a scale of 1 to 10. I'm going to go storyline 4.5, but visually 9. So I think it's still worth watching. Kind of felt the same way about Avatar. I thought the parts of it that worked worked really, really well and were really awesome. And the parts of it that didn't work were laughable. I like literally laughed a bunch of times in the theater. <laughs> I, I feel like there was one part where I laughed. It was just one part and I'm sure you laughed at that too. I don't want to spoil it for okay. anybody, so. But then I like cried at at least one part, maybe two if I remember. I cry a lot in movies, I was it's hard just, to keep track. It sounds like you cry watching TV shows, watching movies. 
Rich Estrada says, bro, who cares about a lookalike? Guess what, Rich? Who cares what you have to say? You're banned. Thank you for your comment. Oh, ba uh, Baron Ducks, you too. Have we missed any action? Menzel with Ace King. Pocket jacks for Hunt, jamming. And we're gonna be flipping here. What do you want for the flip, Maria? Do you want uh, memes versus GIFs? Yeah. Okay. Like memes versus GIFs, one of these two hands has a slight mathematical advantage. Hunt has that advantage, but is at risk of going broke if the jacks don't hold. Queen, nine, tray, two diamonds. Diamond's not a problem for Hunt. Only aces and kings, the real problem. Turn card is a 10. Ooh, and now a jack's gonna be a problem too. But no longer a king. River card, home and dry. Double up Hunt. That is how you play jacks, isn't it? Chicago Paul says, Hunt is not from Texas. What? Uh, I hope this isn't insulting to him, but I, I'm very confused every time I see that he's not American. Cutting over now to the secondary feature table, Jeremy Ausmus was all in. Looks like he got a fold pre-flop from an open. Anybody out in Twitter listen to Jer Jeremy Osmus' poker song that he posted? It's pretty good. I'll check it out one day. <sighs> Great song, says Terp. I sat next to Jeremy Osmus in the one 5K I played in. Just sort of gushed about how handsome he is. Brent Married Hanks. with kids, unfortunately. Brent Hanks calls him the designer human. Oh, wow. Good one. Del Grosso, 9-5 suited. Everyone in Twitch very excited to be over here. It's uh, Table Flushy, the fellow with the mustache on the left-hand side. <clears throat> 420 says, they hate us because they ain't ousmus. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh, sometimes there's some real gems in chat. Thank you. Like the tennis ball from yesterday. It's not hard to not get banned. All you have to do is... Not be a jerk. Minakuchi jams queen 10 from the cutoff. Unfortunately for him, Violo wakes up with ace king suited in the big blind. Still a big sweat. Queen 10, not a huge dog here. Very much live. All right, here we go. Clean flop for Violo. Minakuchi down to a turn in river. And that turn is a 10. Not good for Violo, and is not going to have all of the aces and kings working for him either. River is a jack. Minakuchi gets lucky, doubles up, and it makes it look like easy work. <sighs> Put 
1.54 million now for Minacucci. Current payout is $93,500. That doesn't go up until 27th place. It's okay for you? Deal? No? If I win, if I win the PCPC, bet. You are my manager. Main feature table seems to have a hand everyone's paying attention to. All in. Haha, <laughs> I can see why. Boyanovsky shoving for that short stack. Hunt reshoving with ace queen suited. A situation where you do not want to get snap called by someone who acts behind you. Definitely not. For Boyanovsky after that ace eight all in. Down to sub 10 big blind stack and is live against the ace queen, but behind. Like Similar situation to the one we just saw. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the board first, then I'll tell you which hand I want. All right, here we go. Eight, six, four, another clean flop for the ace high. This time it's a clean turn. But is it always coming seven? No seven, no chop, no ten, no king. Blanovsky dispatched in 31st place at the hands of Matthew Hunt. Mental health Matt, as he's known. Wojnowski cha-chinging for $93,500. Mental health, Matt. Uh, I do appreciate, I, I, I don't know him super well, but what I see of him online seems to be a good guy. Exactly. It's like me and Sean Dave just yeah. never did anything. Never. Yeah. Yeah. Or like yeah. never stepped in. You just never cast anything. You want something huge and then never did anything again. Yeah, plus they have they have anti's from the start these days, you know. Yeah. 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 Back then, you had to have so yeah. much patience. You don't have to worry. No late about registration that. at some point. Yeah. How do you guys feel about the Navi children saying "bro" the all the time? <laughs> I didn't notice it until people started bringing it up on the internet. That's true, you do. Yeah, I didn't really notice it either, but I, now that somebody brings it up, I'm like, oh, yeah. But it didn't bother me, because if it did, I would have noticed. What I liked the most was how it said that the whales were smarter than we are and had complicated language and mathematics, and then whenever you'd talk to the whale, it would be like, hi, can't talk, too sad. Auspus and Holtz <laughs> all in. Very likely to be a chop here, but we will sweat the flop. And that uh, does have potential. I mean, when you have an unstoppable force versus an immovable object, who wins this one? There you go. No one. That's what happens. Maria, this hand ends in a chop, and you know what they say. What a bad beat. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop, chop pot. We want you to sweat. There we go. There's sweat. That was a chop, right? Hold on. Let's, uh, let's, 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 yeah, it was a chop. And good for everyone. Bad for weak good hearts. for everyone but Bad him. For weak hearts. Two of the best all insers in the game up against each other. Of course, it's going to be a chop. And back to the main stage. Cards being pitched. A 
Shen, 81 big blinds, 65 for Parsons. And the shortest stack at the table now is Chris Mormon with 24 bigs. Mormon finding a hand that he wants to get involved with. Trying to get a light open past Grafton. Let's see if Grafton wakes up with something. It looks like he has pocket sixes. It's just gonna call. Ooh. And Parsons with pocket jacks has both these players covered. I mean, the real deal, Holyfield, as far as these stack sizes are concerned, you're up against 22 bigs versus 25 bigs of Grafton. Three bet is in order. And that three bets is 600,000. There goes Mormon and Sam's gonna ditch it as well. He does. Pretty cool. Nice to pick up a pot there with Jax Parsons up to 72 big blinds now. players left. Looks like things have slowed down. I thought maybe given how shallow things were, but things were shallow yesterday too. And they slowed down. Wait a minute. Andre Markesh, the PT fisherman, all in for his last three, four, five. Fader Holes looks like has made the call which means we're gonna be flipping yet again. Did we already do uh, swimming with the pigs versus flamingo yoga? Yes, yesterday. I was Did we already there. do Bahama Mamas versus Pina Coladas? Mm -hmm. Did we already do monkeys versus turtles? Mm, I don't know if I was here for that one. Like monkeys versus turtles, one of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. Thanks for waiting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Two, four, five, six, four is a pretty good hand for now. Well, at least a six. Fedor famously good at all ends. Yeah, that is one part of the game I have yet to master, and I think the same applies for you. Yeah, and manages to Fedor at all. Again. Andre Markesh, the PT fisherman, back out onto the boat. No longer a part-timer, now a full-timer. Out in 30th for 93.5. Two more eliminations before the next pay jump. One of the things I really appreciate about Fedor is uh, he doesn't get, at least publicly, doesn't get tilted when people call him lucky. He's just like, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty lucky. I run pretty good at all ends. I think it's because it would be hard for him to deny, right? It's but how many people do deny their sun running ways? Not, by the way, sun runner is often used as an insult, and I don't mean it in this case. You can yeah. be both a very, very good player and Absolutely. seemingly run good at all ends. He's like, no, I'm really lucky. <laughs> and I but, like that. Yeah, he's very well aware of it, and I think 
he knows it's been pretty publicly documented. It'd be one thing if you ran really well in a time where you weren't on a ton of live streams, you weren't playing on a ton of feature tables. Um, but at that point, I feel like you got to own up to it. Like we see the man's results, right? But it, again, as you mentioned, it does not take away from how skilled or talented of a poker player Fedor is by any means. But he really had lightning in a bottle between being real, able to realize all of the equity and all of the plus EV situations he found himself in. And Nacho gives to him a walk. 3DN, the card says, yo, Joe Stapes, do you know about the comedy show Kill Tony? Would love to see you on that show. I do know Kill Tony. I don't like it. I think it is exploitative. It's a show, Maria, where these comedians sit on stage and they, if you're blessed with the opportunity to go on the show, you get one minute on stage and then the comedians make fun of you. That sounds mean. Yeah, and um, it's just basically them patting themselves on the back while really desperate comedians who are just hungry for any stage time at all go on stage. I don't really care for it. I don't like the... I don't like the whole vibe. And I don't think the guys are that funny. I guess Tony's in the chat. Sorry, you're banned. <laughs> Velo all in for his short stack. Under 10 bigs. When it's time to go, it's time to go. And you're not going to find many better spots off of a sub 10 big blind stack than a suited king in late position. I'd imagine that this is stalling of some sort. Sure, I mean, we're pretty close to another pay jump. And that's gonna get through. Liam says, Kill Tony is great for up and coming comedians. What are you talking about? Name me a comedian who's gotten a TV gig out of going on Kill Tony. It's not great for standing up for comedians. Wait, how can one exploit willing participants? There's a guy in Las Vegas Boulevard that'll let you kick him in the junk for $10. He's willingly do it. Is that um, a homeless guy? Is that exploitative or not? I would say yes. It's kind of exploitative, right? Yeah. Look, I'm not, I'm not saying people who like it shouldn't like it. You can like the show. I just don't want to go on it for that reason. Mm -hmm. You said you're from Dublin? I'm actually from Belfast, but ah, okay. because we have no live poker in the north. I right. Live yeah. poker in I lived in Dublin for about a year. Oh, yeah. I played poker a little bit there. Yeah. Yeah. It's I expensive. I can't remember the name of the poker room I played in. Just finding Anyone that became a professional comic from going on Till Kill Tony would have become a professional comic anyway. Yeah, it's, 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 sorry that I ripped on the thing that you like, but you guys are all not bright. Thank you for your question. Sorry I answered it, honestly. I actually don't know what's up there. I'm sure someone's actually, someone somewhere. Maybe Hardigan can find out pretty soon. <laughs> I can hear the bell fast in your accent now. Like, yeah. I listen to it more carefully. I try and keep it like quite, I've got quite like a neutral. Yeah, a little bit. Northern Irish accent. But I, I had, uh, I used to work with some friends from Belfast, so like yeah. the Belfast accent should be familiar to me. Yeah, yeah. I've lost the ear for it. It's the most popular. Like most like yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is surprising because we normally. All right, let's go, Bogan. But mine's quite a fine of mine, though. But a lot of people really don't like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like if I hear myself bark or something, it's always. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mormon with <laughs> a suited king himself, but not nearly as good as the one that Bogan has. Yeah.
playing about 17 bigs, and it's going to pass. Uh, can you just do 20 stack? Yeah, sorry. I think it's the room. That easier to calculate. Yeah. yeah. Aishan with ace three offsuit in the big blind. Certainly going to get involved in some way. Right, against the button raise, you can't find an excuse not to, can you? Yeah, and if Bogan were shorter, then it would be a pretty clear all in out of this offsuit ace. But yeah, Bogan has just about enough where Aishan still feels comfortable. Wow. Him to the test. Wow, we. I don't see what you can really do here, Maria. Yeah, I mean, it's a really tough spot to call it off with the suited king <clears throat> as pretty as it may look. You were probably kind of hoping to see three and 25 bigs, what you would have left if you fold is still extremely playable that you don't have to take a potentially marginal spot, a high variance marginal spot, especially with the pay jump looming. Bogian using a time bank chip before eventually deciding to call it off will be the slight dog here. King in the window. A five and a deuce behind it. <laughs> I Chen can run down top pair with a different top pair or a straight. We do know that Chris Mormon folded a four, though. He folded both a king and a four. Running sixes do not affect the top pair for Bogian, who doubles up in this the year of Romania. Also, just one last thing about the Kill Tony thing. <laughs> I, I don't need Kill Tony to make my career. I have one. Yeah. I do quite well. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll end up on America's Got Talent someday. Ooh, where dreams are made. I think what you read right, Ian, was uh, you are not funny, as in you, you are not funny, not your. What I'm saying is you are not literate. See how I did that? See how it's Y O U apostrophe R E. You are not literate. I'm a Portsmouth man. Just this year. My family, my granddad, my uncle, my family have been Arsenal fans. Bogian doubles up to 55 big blinds. You from Pompey? Uh, no, I, I'm from. I do not know Matt Rife, Andrew McMillan. Thank you for your question. My dad lived in Portsmouth and took me to games a lot. The league of them, man. League one, like middle of League one. Yeah, you must have had some glory. Were you there for like? I was. I was at the FA Cup semi-final, 2010. In Cuba. Yes, legend, absolute legend. The yak. The yak. Pocket fives for Parsons. Hunt with ace jack in the hijack. 335. Attack this under the gun open with a three bet. Just 
start with? 1.6? 1.9. 1.9. Yeah. So, talk to me about this open with pocket fives. Perfectly fine. I mean... And you're just, you're just raised folding this? Um, No, I mean, Parsons, first of all, is the table chip leader, so really easy spot to open here off of that stack. And I think that against some deeper stacks, cool. you know, you might want to set mine against something like what Hunt has about Three a 30 five. big blind stack. I think it's still okay to continue. Um, again, if you feel comfortable navigating these spots post-flop, it's perfectly fine to find continues. Parsons, got to be feeling pretty good about this board. 175. And Hunt is not relenting. Continuation bet of 175. Pretty small. Yeah, and a 30 big blind stack is kind of the perfect stack size to be able to go three barrels here if Hunt is willing to find it in him to go for it all the way and fully represent something like a big overpair in this spot. And it's okay to go small on the sizing on the flop in order to size up on the turn and shove river. But are you willing to triple barrel? That is the question. All right, Parsons and Hunt go to the river. No betting action on the turn. Fives will be good at showdown. Gourmet Schnitzel says, Hunt is hunting. Brit on um, Brit Violence says, 3D and the Kurd. Yeah, very clear that if Hunt checks back the turn, then you're not going to really be able to represent a big overpair on the river and instead just going to call the 100K value bet out of Parsons with the ace high. So well done to Parsons. And this is kind of what I'm saying. If you can count on your opponent to perhaps shut down or if you as Parsons feel com comfortable navigating post with a hand as weak as fives, against a stack size I get that, that. you're not I get necessarily that. priced into set mine against, then sure, but more power to you. That's a pretty lucky run out for fives. Oh, of course it is. It's a great run out. But also, Hunt elected to shut down on the turn in a spot where yeah. I think if he found the triple, fives are not hanging on for dear life. I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know for how long it is there, but <laughs> yeah. they, 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 Hunt very clearly knowing to target, you know, the big ace X is there on the river with that sizing. Ace queen suited for Menzel. Hey, there you go. If anyone's been asking where Rory Jennings is, he's on the rail. I'm not sure if the rail is stressing him out. He seems okay. Okay, so can we go back to the hand for a second? Sure. Can you just fold the fives under the gun or not when you have that many chips? That's like a huge factor too, right? No, of course you could fold the fives under okay. the gun to a three bet, sure. 360. Against Hunt's stack size pre, it's not an auto call, but. Oh, here comes Grafton again. Oh. We saw this yesterday. We saw Grafton get a little out of line with the suited ace up against the monster. It was Kings yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Are we all? Thanks for the rail. Okay. Looks yeah. like they're there for your boy Parsons. Nick Walsh on the rail, too. Yeah. I have a pretty little 
that's all I do. And when Grafton did this yesterday, he was attacking a bigger stack also. Now Grafton had a little bit more, a lot more, I should say. It was like a 60 big blind stack versus an 80 big blind stack. Yeah, and this certainly looks very strong coming out of Grafton's effective stack. It actually makes his hand look a lot stronger when you're willing to three bet off of that stack size versus just shove. But it looks like Menzel puts Grafton all in. And Grafton's gonna have to let it go. As big a fan of Grafton as I am. I like to see the underdog sticking up for himself. Yeah, once you make what you presume was a big call, you know, when we saw him tank with the tens and then call it off for about 30 bigs, I think that just puts the wind in your sails and you get more confident about playing big pots and feeling comfortable that you're understanding the ranges that you're supposed to be proceeding with. And that can go a long way. All right, Chen, no longer the chip leader here. That title belongs to Parsons. Grafton on the button now, King 10, 17 bigs. Min raises to 120. Yeah, of course. Sorry. And Menzel in the big. We're gonna have another Grafton Menzel matchup. Or as I like to call him, Adele Dezim. <laughs> One of the greatest moments in TV <laughs> award show history, of course. The wickedly talented Adele Dezim shoves on Sam again. Picks up another pot. Menzel second on the leaderboard for this table. 4.1 million in chips. players remain 28 and 29 both make 93,500 but there's a not a huge pay jump coming up after that but a significant one mentally because if you make it to 27th that's when we hit six figures my babies I Chen Queen 10 off Min Reyes, Parsons, King, Queen on the button. An ace queen for Menzel. Oh, wow. What a string of hands for Menzel. Jeepers. It's not the wickedly talented Adela Dezim. It is the wickedly talented Adela Dezim who's had a huge level. Doesn't go for the squeeze, though. Ooh. A little surprising. Seems like such a good spot with a late position open and a flatter. Queen, Jack, nine, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Just hits everyone. Action, Jackson, flop. My goodness. 
Sometimes these action flops don't have as much action as you would expect, even though they smash everyone. Two players have checked so far. Checked around and really nice brick on the turn. I'm expecting to see, you know, a hand like top, top. Try to find some protection. And now the betting starts. 235 into 480. Okay, Maria, come on, talk to me here. I mean, Aishan <laughs> just wants to be able to realize the straight equity, right? So right. calling is the best way to do that. Certainly, you're not trying to raise and either get blown off the draw or have to somehow call more to see the river. You're hoping that maybe your top pair could be good at showdown, but of course, it would feel a lot more comfortable if you made your straight, especially now that Parsons is coming in with the overcall. Well, this is getting spicy. Three players still going to the river, which is the ace of hearts. Nearly 1.2 million in the middle, and it's top two on the river for Menzel. Yeah, Menzel just can do no wrong so far, and the deck really cooperating there, fading a lot of outs, even though Aishen and Parsons were sharing some outs. I love that expression. I don't think I've ever heard it before. The deck cooperating. Cooperating, yeah. We sat down, we had a conference, and the deck has agreed to cooperate. <laughs> Barry Greenstein will make an appearance in your hand as Menzel goes for value on the river, 160,000. Enticing enough to potentially get a call from one or both of A. Shen and Parsons. Super milky not to <laughs> mention the fact that Menzel betting into two players here. So when he led the turn, he got called in two spots. So this just never feels like a hand that Queen 10 can beat or King Queen can beat, even though the price is so nice. Time bank card being played by Aishen. A reminder that the shot clock was brought into play at the start of day four. 30 seconds per decision unless you use a time bank card to extend your thinking time. By the way, this hand has everything. Cooperative decks mm -hmm. and milky bets. I've got nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? Lovely. The only thing milky, that... Milky, milky. <laughs> The only thing that Aishan could be thinking about is perhaps turning his hand into a bluff. Granted, he does have the 10. That's a key card, but oop, <laughs> gets away. Good fold, but does Tom Parsons pay this off? Aishan seemed really frustrated by having to fold there. And uh, Parsons not going to be the sucker. Feels like Jack Nine. I'm honest, I, uh... So eight minutes left on the level, and Max oh, yeah, Menzel so has just moved ahead of Tom Parsons in oh, the rankings. Menzel table chip oh, leader with five million. Tom Parsons still a big stack, oh, yeah. still among the chip leaders with 4.6 million. Thrilled to see this platinum pass winner who played his first live tournament in 2019, going deep in this 25K, won his platinum pass at Lex Live 2 in London in the autumn of 2019. And he is one of those players, Maria, who has been waiting a long time for this event. Yeah, it's nice to see that so far it's been working out for him and to be able to be this deep and get the full experience. How much are we loving Chris Mormon's shirt, by the way? 
very appropriate. And Mormon, no, it's like, I mean, an it's, absolute I'm beast opening here to 120,000. Now, Mormon is I mean, one of I'm the like, two short stacks of the table, the other being Sam Grafton. Probably bad flop sometimes, but multi wave and Nico, it's like really weird with my hand. Especially when we're playing so deep, like my hand facing a check please, like can't fall, but does not want to fall. <laughs> and that is going to be like raise and change. take it for Chris Mormon. As we see, we have ticked down to 28 players. We have lost yeah, Mehdi yeah, sure. Violeux. Like, sure, like, he is gone in 29th place. $93,500. And three, no, count James. Four eliminations until the redraw, Maria. The first of what will be three redraws today. Everyone loves a redraw. Redraw at 24, redraw at 16, redraw at nine. Fantastic. That's going to add a good 45 to 50 minutes to our work day. The interesting thing is when you get this deep in a tournament, the kind of table draw you get can very much affect. Oh, 100 percent. And just to be clear, I'm, oh, no, I'm I know. kidding. No, I know I'm you were kidding. kidding. I was just saying I was just saying that it's. I'm always praying for the redraw run good, which is not something that people often think about, especially in this type of tournament where there are a lot of tough players left in the field. It's really important to uh, have a good table draw. I can probably even fold turn to be honest when he calls, but I think I'd be really happy if I fold a turn. Well, <laughs> Andre Bogian has king three in the small blind. It has yeah, been folded generally, to him. Be like, I think it would just be like, a, like, do you know what I mean? You're just like, I just can't fold this. I have, if I don't have the best hand, I have like on five outs. But. 165,000, Mormon in the big. <laughs> I need to know what he had in that hand <laughs> in half an hour's time. 100. Yeah. Mormon, not a great hand in the big blind and will choose not to put any more yeah, of his very valuable yeah, chips into the pot. I think we, <laughs> and you'll see it anyway. It doesn't really so matter. as we highlighted, Sam Grafton is one of the short stacks at our feature table right now, 15 big blinds. But Sam has bounced yeah. back from greater adversity earlier in this tournament. Yeah, you're the big one. Oh, the answer is zero. Okay, I was like... <laughs> and <laughs> <you> should <laughs> highlight that the average stack is not that deep right now. Two million at the 30-60 blind level. And Maria, those blinds going up in three minutes' time to 40,000, 80,000. And that means <laughs> the average stack is about to become 25 big blinds? Yeah. Have we consulted your widget today, by the way? Well, the widget has been broken by the PSPC right. because of generally <laughs> how deep this played at the start and how shallow it's playing now. So the widget is tracking a 30 big blind average. So at the moment, they're kind of playing shallower than in the kind of worst case scenario that the widget's accounting for. So this okay. is level 25. We come to the end of level 25. So we should be starting the next level. With 25 players, we're at 28. So we're not too far behind. No. I still feel like the widget is going to rebound and recover at some point. good timing. Hashtag trust the widget. But yes, it remains our aspiration to get to the final six today. We normally come back on the final day of a major event with six players. And in this particular instance, Maria, it feels appropriate to come back with our six millionaires tomorrow, all guaranteed a seven-figure score, but competing for that first prize 
of four million. Seventeen point three million of the prize pool still in play right now. Andre Bogian folding the cutoff, which means Chris Mormon on the button will decide what to do with King Queen. And he's obviously looking at how many chips Sam Grafton has in the bag. That's not going to get much better for Mormon than King Queen on the button off of 17 big blinds. And Sam Grafton in the big as well, shorter than Chris's stack. So Mormon moves all in. And Sam is going to call all in with Kings. Wow. What a hand to pick up in the big blind as Mormon shoves on him. And this is an awesome spot for Sam Grafton to double up. And it is going to leave Chris Mormon with two big blinds. Not matches against me. It's dangerous. Sam a nine to one favourite as we go to the flop, which is ten, eight, seven. Take a nine. Mm -hmm. Take a six. No, nine's good. Uh, uh, take a chop. A uh, nine. <laughs> <laughs> against Chris Mormon, Grafton will settle for That'd a chop. Eight of space. Ace on the turn, giving Mormon a gut shot straight draw. Sam Grafton is going to have to fade a jack on the river to survive. He does. Kings hold. Grafton back in the game. Now playing more than 30 bigs. Chris Mormon down to two big blinds. We don't, we don't clap against him. It's, uh, you know, fellow. No, no celebration. It's like when you uh, play your old football team, you know, no celebration. You just keep your hands down and acknowledge the crowd. Okay. Got some Platinum Pass winners who've exited the tournament, now watching on the rail. Yeah, congrats. It's sick that it's like four binds. Yeah, I know. Like it's, it's on the one hand, it's like fucking sick. On the other hand, it's like four binds. Like. That's right, Sam, it's and very they, sick. And they, like, you're like, boom, 100K, that's sick. And then you're like, what, I've gone through 980 people, you're giving me four, you're giving me three X more. TW watching on YouTube asks, are hashtags still a thing? Yes, they are. Hashtag fun fact. We would be very grateful for your consideration for the Global Poker Award for Fave Livestream. Last year, we covered every single EPT stop. EPT Live has been nominated. If you enjoy our live coverage from PokerStars events, you can cast your vote at globalpokerindex.com slash awards. And I can confirm, Maria, I'm going to be in Vegas first week of March. Yay! I'm coming to the ceremony. I'm so excited. Congratulations on your nomination for Thank you. Best Broadcaster. And uh, I should be out there and maybe we'll be arranging a, a fun little night out with a few people. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, not all the awards are public votes, but there are a few. I think you can vote for your favorite trophy if you like. Globalpokerindex.com slash awards I have heard this is it a rumor or is it a fact i think it's a fact that there are two rounds to this public ballot that there's then going to be a shortlist and a second vote so forgive us guys but it might be we're calling on you again in the coming days to vote for us a second time <laughs> I feel like for all of the hard work that the production puts into everything, it's the least that the viewers can do is maybe have to vote twice. Mormons all in from the cutoff. So far, no customers except the big blind was not much more really for Parsons to call with a nice suited so connector. Blocker. How much is it? I'll do the like pointer like thing just in case. And the, five, the straight blocker as well, five. Yeah, uh, I mean, I got it in good. That's, what I'm That's right, Sid Hoffman. Keep in mind the production staff are the goats of live poker. And I've said all along, it's about them, not us, as Chris Mormon finds himself all in with Queen Five against Tom Parsons, eight, seven suited. <laughs> Yeah. 
Well, a queen high flop. This is looking good for Mormon. Yeah, it's very strong. <laughs> Not a ton of equity for the eight, seven. Yeah, no, no backdoor flush draw possible. And that will that have Tom Parsons that. drawing dead on the turn. Chris Mormon a getting a small bit. double up. Oh, oh. Uh, too little too late for Tom on the river as the blinds go up, by the way. We're now playing level 26, 40,000, 80,000 with an 80K big blind ante. So Chris Mormon is still short, five big blinds. Matthew Hunt is the second shortest stack at the table with 14 big blinds. Oh, no reason. I know, yeah, true. Definitely, definitely not close this time. Time to... How are we doing, boys? Yeah, good. <coughs> I need your thoughts on Jorginho on one of these breaks. Uh, honestly, I know, I know you're... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Laced fish observing no soul for Y crew on the rail. Doesn't Phil Mitchell deserve some support? Poor Matthew Hunt. After I declared he looked like Phil Mitchell, he... Uh, <laughs> kind of made a point on social media that that's now going to stick. <laughs> and I'm now regretting that comparison, but it was kind of inevitable and kind of obvious. Battle of the blinds here. Both players with very healthy stacks, number one and two at the table. Pretty suited Broadway combination for Parsons in the small. <laughs> Menzel sharing suits. Ace, king, six on the flop. And we've got the seven of hearts on the turn. Yeah, it's really big draw for Parsons now with the flush draw and the straight draw. 92% equity against Menzel's hand. I almost missed, Maria, that we have just ticked down to 27. Tommy Wynn out in 28th place. The Canadian cashing for 93.5K. So Tommy Wynn is out. We are at 27 right now. And it looks like Menzel is going to bet this turn. Now Menzel went for a min bet and immediately gets check raised by Parsons, combo draw. Menzel obviously doesn't know that they have an inferior flush draw, but I think feeling like they have decent equity will continue. Brick on the river, thankfully for Menzel. A brick in the sense that he would have had the worst flush had the heart come in. But now <coughs> as played, it'll be interesting to see if Parsons wants to bluff considering they showed up at the river with queen high, not knowing again that it is still the best hand actually. Love him with the best hand, Tom. Um, Together we make a team. Come, yeah. <laughs> a question from Kevin McDonald. James, any Irish left in it? And Tony Murphy responding that there are four players from the UK left. Yes, the UK represented, but not Ireland. In fact, all four of the UK players are at the feature table right now. Matthew Hunt, Chris Mormon, Sam Grafton, and Tom Parsons.
Listen, to those of you who've been asking me today, especially since the Global Poker Award nominations came out, I have dual nationality. I am an Irish citizenship. My dad was Irish. The Hartigans are from Cork. I'll be honest with you, I do prefer to represent Ireland to the UK. Why is that? I don't want to get political on the stream. Okay. Let's just say I prefer to represent Ireland. Understood, James. No further questions. Devil's Card says, Tom is from Northern Ireland. That is correct, but Northern Ireland is considered part of the United oh, Kingdom. <laughs> was specifically referring to the Republic of Ireland when the question was addressed about Irish players. Menzel continuing to have a lot of playable hands was not too long ago that they were all in for their tournament life for about 1.8 million chips. And now up to four and a half million. Four deuce deuce on the flop. That's right, fresh legs. We're all citizens of the world. Je sans frontier. That's what we've got here in the Bahamas. Aishan coming with a continuation bet. I can see the allure of having two overs to this board and less than two bigs to call, so why not come along? Checked again on the turn to Aishen. When Menzel calls out of the small blind, though, certainly you have to put some other pairs in their range that are better than four. So you see the check back. And Menzel ends up rivering the king with the free card. But you really can't blame Aishen for checking back that turn again. Menzel could easily have a lot of fives, sixes, sevens, eights, etc. And those would not have likely folded to a second barrel, so better to try to get to showdown as Aishen with the fours and deuces. But now I would imagine Menzel's going to find some value. I think Aishan's a little bit curious because, again, some of those hands that I did mention, fives through nines, would not likely bet this river card. So you're kind of giving Menzel a lot of credit if you just fold that they've rivered a king somehow, and that's why you see Aishan make the call on the river. Hey, David Grusa. Last word on the matter. A few people made a very good point. Tom Parsons is ultimately from the island of Ireland and does consider himself to be part of Team Ireland. So, okay. 
Tom Parsons was saying is our last remaining Irish player. He can spin it. So we are 15 minutes into level 26. This is the 4080 blind level. Chris Mormon still hovering around the five big blind mark. Three more eliminations. We will hit the redraw for the final three tables. opened an entire can of worms by the way <laughs> with this whole talk of geography and politics I've tom noticed. stand by to go full emo only mode i feel like the youtube chat could use some modding too <laughs> to misquote game of thrones ban them all It's a very interesting question, actually, from Ikmanov asking about why the flags differ on the live stream and in the PS Live app. So there's a... Hold on a second. We've got action at the outer tables. And this looks like an elimination. Yep, that is Renato Minacucci. KO'd in 27th place. We have hit the six-figure scores, by the way. Minacucci. Winning $107,500, but we are now down to 26. Um, if you register, if you buy into a tournament using your PokerStars account, the app automatically registers the country where your account is registered, rather than your nationality. So you get weird situations where Andrew Mateos is suddenly British. But obviously, that then gets changed on the player list, on Poker News, on our updates as well, because it's just a bit weird. I mean, not being funny, I'm sure the UK would happily claim Adrian Mateos, but come on, we know he's Spanish. <laughs> So Menzel has opened in the cutoff to 160,000 with King Eight of Diamonds. Bogan hasn't had too much to play with and not a great hand for Mormon in the big blind. Kind of a shame. Mech asking, is this the last day? Oh, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would be nine impossible to get to a winner today. It's going to be blooming hard enough to get down to six. Back in the day when 50 big was six or seven bets. All right, I think we've more or less got Twitch in line. YouTube, we're moving away from ge geopolitics, all right? <laughs> As we go over to the secondary feature table where it is Jeremy Osmus versus Nacho Barbero. Osmus has checked the flop. Barbero with second pair. Bet from Barbero is 100,000. 
small seabed, but you know when you are up against a big blind defending range, you don't really need to bet too much on a board texture that should favor you as the pre-flop aggressor. Osmus with the gut shot calls this hand going to the turn. Four of clubs, Barbero near enough a nine to one favorite. Action has been checked to him a second time. Now it's just a matter of whether Barbero thinks he could get value from worse and what type of other hands or draws he wants to be protecting from. Uh, we need to get back to the main stage, Maria, because there has been an all-in and a call. Boggy and open from the button. Mormon shoved from the small blind. He is at risk with sixes, flipping against ace nine. I played a tournament they were running out of... Uh, <laughs> The flop is 10-5-4. So far, so good for Chris Mormon. Has to fade aces and nines. Turn card is a seven. Same outs for Boggian. Same cards for Mormon to swerve on the river. No ace, no nine, and he doubles up. It's a jack. And Chris Mormon okay, survives. <laughs> he should have been out as well. He's, He's going to win now. Yesterday. Like, yeah, yeah, you, you Jack, took, Jack took calling, but like 10. Yeah. You cannot call, right? 10 scores. Should have booked. I don't know. So I checked behind. I Mormon know. almost up to 10 big Ooh, lines yeah, now Chelsea. after that double. I, I pulled seven. Check behind. For me, it's kind of. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, I played against so it was weird because uh, obviously. For the money yesterday. Um, I asked for a count. I wasn't bowling. And, then, <laughs> and he probably should have shot. I know. But he said that he felt that I wanted him to shove, which I did, because I, mean, I had a good hand. But he had a better hand. Check behind. Hoping for a flip against him. Yeah, I know, it's close. I mean, well, yeah, obviously very close. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, I, had, I had a sick one with... Oh, uh, well, yeah, thank you for letting, letting me <laughs> There was here. like a party 10K in Vegas. And I had, it was like 26 left. I was against this, this really good cash guy. And I had aces. I bet the flop, I bet the turn. And then, you know, I was on a strong end. I had a top set of aces, and because I had top set, I, I didn't go all in. I bet like whatever. Yeah. I like changed my sizing, and he but he thought I went all in. And he just called with the set, and then he double. Then like next time he doubled through me, and then blah blah blah. Like he won ace eight against my tens, and then like he like, well, but, yeah, like, like, like wow. yeah, and I he, like messed up. Mess, he like messed me up, and then, yeah, it was like a bad. You know, yeah. he was like he's a really good player, but he was good. You know, he had his head. Yeah. Down, and he just, just yeah, him, and it left him like eight big. That <laughs> <laughs> was similar with me. It's like I opened King Black suited. I don't think I'm plus one chance. So let's go time. back to the secondary feature table. And we have an Ooh. all in. The tum to tum tum tum. <laughs> with the absolute stones here. This, of course, is Nicholas Tom, a.k.a. Flushy. Go to fold from Marcello Del Grosso. And Fedor Holtz has asked for a count. I think it was Osmus who asked for the count. I'm sorry, I thought it was Fedor, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, in the small blind with ace jack. But it would be quite a bit of Osmus's stack to call here. Granted, you know, the shove is only really about 10 and a half bigs. Well, hmm. we're going back to the main stage. Switch. Because we have an all-in and a call. Chris Mormon at risk again. He has shoved and been called by Sam Grafton. Grafton has got ace five. Mormon has got queen ten. So Mormon is behind right now. And is still behind post-flop. He needs to hit to survive. Mm -hmm. Has queens. <laughs> 
jacks, tens, and <laughs> eights working from 14 outs. Is it a case of too many outs? It is. And Chris Mormon is eliminated in 26th place. One of the most accomplished, most decorated, winningest online players of all time is the 26th place finisher in the PSPC. Mormon cashes out for a six-figure score, and Grafton's got chirping chips. Yeah, still running pu pretty pure, that Grafton. Sam now playing 32 big blinds with 25 players remaining. One more elimination, and we will hit the redraw. Oh. Okay, I thought that was Ozma stacking chips. I'm like, did he crack the aces? No. Somebody asked, did Tom get called? And he did because he has 1.85 million, it says yes. right now. He did get a double there with the aces they held. Back to the main feature table. Wow. <laughs> Where we see Menzel opened <laughs> under the gun with Jax. Got a call from Hunt with tens. Okay, I'm sorry. It was Hunt's turn, and he moves all in. Well, I think Menzel's going to call this. I think so, too, James. And that means Matthew Hunt will be at risk, and that means we could be down to the final 24 if Jax hold. Huge cooler for Hunt here. Absolutely can't blame him for getting the chips in. Ooh. And that is not the card he wants to see. Okay, running straight, running flush possibilities. He's not drawing dead at this stage. He is, however, drawing thin. Just a 7% chance of survival. At least the nine, At least the nine. Oh. Now he's drawing dead on the turn, and that will see Matthew Hunt bow out in 25th place. So Matthew Hunt gets just over a hundred thousand dollars, one hundred seven thousand five hundred. He cashes for a six-figure score. We lose one of the Brits, another of the Brits after Chris Mormon, and we are at 24, so we need to stop the clock because we need to have the redraw for the final three tables. And one more elimination till the next pay jump. Fly home now. Upside to everything. I don't see you guys again. Good luck. If I do, I take it back. <laughs> Menzel up to six and a half million now. What an incredible last level and a half he's had. Tom Parsons still really healthy with just about 60 big blinds himself. Everybody at this table pretty much with an above average stack. But right. again, as James mentioned, there will be a complete redraw. So a lot of these players may find themselves at a different table. So I think there might still be a hand in progress at one of the other tables, Maria, which is why we're waiting. Obviously, play is concluded in the main stage, and there won't be another hand here. Nice. 
24 remain. They will be given new seating assignments. That means we are going to have a new feature table and a new secondary feature table once that redraw has been conducted. $16.8 million remaining to be paid out. That's what's left of the prize pool. We are on another money jump right now. So the next player out, whoever goes out in 24th place, is going to get $107,000. That's what we're paying right now. Then there's a jump to 123600 A not insignificant amount of money. No, especially to some of the Platinum Pass winners still remaining in the field on a free roll. Of course, later today, we hit the really big sums of money. When we get down to one table, we're looking at nearly half a million dollars for ninth place. And once we get to the final six, you're looking at a million upwards. 1.25 million for fifth, one and a half million for fourth, the better part of two million for third, 2.5 million for the runner up. And the winner of this PSPC will get $4,053,200 plus the prestigious title and trophy, the final table to be played tomorrow. That's when we compete from six players down to one, and we'll be streaming tomorrow from 1 p.m. Eastern time. That's 7 p.m. Central European time. Hopefully you can join us for Cards Up coverage of the final day of the PSPC. If you've been following it from day one, it would be silly to miss the ending. Yeah, I mean, come on, guys. Stick with us here. It's gonna get more exciting, if that's even possible, I mean. The bubble, the post bubble, bust out bonanza, today's flurry of eliminations. Non stop action here at the PSPC. So, this is the hand still in progress at the secondary feature table. Daniel Dvoris raising the button with Queen 8. And Flushy defending his big blind with King-7 suited. Here's a hashtag fun fact for you, Maria. Back in 2018, when we were planning the first PSPC, there was a Players' Council session in Barcelona where we invited different sections of the poker community, Platinum Pass winners, High Roller regulars, to have their say and kind of decide the format, the structure for the event. Daniel Devoris was on that panel. Daniel Devoris, a good person to have on that panel. I mean, his opinion very much respected in the poker world. Tom, <laughs> if I see anyone whining, questioning, being annoying about face masks, you know what to do. Utilize your hammer. Wow, heck of a stare down at Devoris before folding the suited yeah, king. For, uh, 800K. So play has now concluded at the secondary feature table. Have a nice stack afterwards. And that means we can now conduct the all important redraw and assign seats at the final three tables, which means a new lineup on the main stage at both of our feature tables. And in fact, the third table will also be up on the stage. Sadly, we don't have RFID, we don't have whole card information at that table, but it should be easier to drop in from time to time on the action that's happening there. This is the penultimate day of the PSPC. We are not done yet. Long way from it. We're going to play down to two tables. We're going to play down to a single table. Play down to the final six tonight. It's a long day of poker yesterday, playing through the bubble and beyond. 
We can expect a similar length broadcast today. There will be a dinner break a bit later on this evening. But plenty of poker to be played. Plenty of action for you to watch here on Twitch and YouTube. Cards up coverage on PokerStars TV. So obviously there's a bit of work to be done. The redraw itself and then of course we've got to check the chip stacks of all the players, get the players into their new seating assignments, get them mic'd up, get the graphic system updated, and then we'll continue level 26. We've still got 30 minutes to play at the 40-80 blind level. Now we are gonna take a very short break. I was gonna say, don't go anywhere. You do what you wanna do, but make sure you are back in 15 minutes. This is a short break for the redraw, and then we'll continue the action at the PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. Day four, penultimate day, playing down to the final six. See you on the other side of this short break when the redraw will be conducted. Scott Wallenbach, three betting from the small blind. Tommy Wynn, the original raiser, was king eight of hearts. Decent three bet sizing from Wellenbach. I might even go a little bit bigger than that. Potentially just over four X. Not surprised to see one come along. He really doesn't mind playing these type of pots, especially in position with suited type hands. Top pair for well and back. Not much for win. Definitely a down bet, I think, is in order here. Excuse me, what? A down bet. A down bet. Aren't you putting all the bets down on the table? <laughs> I genuinely don't know what down bet is. Well, he three bet pre to 260,000, and now I'm saying that his bet size should be less than that. Well, it's not. It's bigger. 270K. But barely <laughs> bigger. It's just, it's up down. It's such a dry board that I think something in the neighborhood of between a third pot or even a quarter pot makes more sense. Keep in all of the potential 10-9 suited, 9-8 suited, that peeled pre-jack 9 suited even, and then the 10s type hands, even 8s sometimes, especially a guy like when he doesn't like to fold. It's going to make you fire multiple bullets if he has a piece. So if you know that you can get value from your opponent's weaker holdings, then sizing down on the flop keeps them in, keeps some potential floats in, like the king-queen with backdoor flush draws. So Wallenbach checks this inconsequential-looking turn card. And well, Wynn is now set to take over the betting. Wallenbach has less than pot back, so... If he puts in a call right here, he's going to have 540,000 left going into the river. I certainly hope that he's not considering folding this hand. 300,000. 1.7 million in the middle, and Wallenbach now has 540k behind. And ten of hearts. Wynn was already drawing dead on the turn. And Scott Wellenbach checks again. Is Wynn going to attempt to bluff the river? And is he going to bluff big? Could he potentially shove on Wellenbach? 
Yes, he does. It looks so strong because, you know, it's five, effectively 540K to call. It's your tournament life to call. Yes. But I think as played, especially given the history that Wellenbach and Wen has had and seeing the way that Wen has played at the feature table, you can't really fold Ace Jack in this spot. Is this a credible line for a bluff? No, because, I mean, it is a credible <clears throat> line for a bluff because of the fact that Wellenbach has 540K left and the pot is just so big that it never really looks like a bluff. But I, I, I mean, I think that Wellenbach would think if one had something like ace king pre flop that might have just gone all in pre. I think it's okay to maybe exclude that from his range. Yes, he could potentially have a set of nines, maybe even a set of deuces. He could have ace deuce suited. Wellenbach said that if the poker god shined on him, he would not completely blow it. So I would love. Could be a major mistake, but I call. Yeah, he does yes. call. Good call. I love it. And Scott Wellenbach is going to double up through Tommy Wynn. Nothing against Tommy Wynn, but man, oh man, do I love seeing amateurs make huge calls and be right. That is fantastic. He has just taken the chip lead. Wellenbach raising with ace queen suited. Daniel Strelitz in the big blind. 10-9. He calls. One and back with the gut shot and the flush draw. Strelitz with second pair. There's a C-bet from the Dean. Strelitz probably going to look up one street, see what happens on the turn. There's the nut flush for one and back. Fifty thousand into three hundred and twenty-five thousand. I think it's a fairly easy give up for Strelitz because when he check calls the flop, he could easily have a lot of the flush draws as well. And for Wellenbach to still barrel this particular turn card, I think it should signify a lot of strength coming from him. Ooh, Strelitz. <laughs> Jeez. And now you got yourself in a whole lot of trouble. He's just improved to trips. And he's certainly going to pay off this bet. 250k. 250? Yeah. And that will see Scott Wallen back move up above 3 million. He's got 3.4 million. Close to 140 big blinds. No, 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 no. Oh. Vexler opened under the gun, got three bet by Berkey. I, I think these are incredible hands to use against uh, uh, under the gun opens because King 10 doesn't necessarily play well if you flat call, but it blocks so many strong hands. And if they do call Except your someone. re raise, you actually have a pretty nice hand to play flop with. Carries, Plus, yeah. you have Check initiative. Can read your DMs. So he's taking a picture of Pavel Vexler for posterity. <laughs> Three seventy-five. Oh man, this guy! Look at this guy. 
This guy is a great player. Eat my four bat. <laughs> I mean, we see we see Vexler do. We we seen him flat call with aces from the small blinds to when Maria Ho was short stacked. He played that hand very smart. Got a massive payout out of that. We've seen him make check raises. We've seen him play good hands smart. Some bad hands very fast. Oh, and then we see a call. I like this. I like where this is heading, James. Wow, we've got a four bet pot. Queen 10 against King 10. Under the gun versus under the gun plus one. And Matt Berkey had the best hand pre and is now a 96% favorite having flop top pair. And this is something Vex is going to be extremely pleased with. Uh, if you miss a flop with Queen 10, if you're the four better before the flop, then at least if it's king high, uh, you can represent all the, the ace kings and the pocket kings. It's very unlikely that Berkey has a hand uh, like ace king here. So that's a massive advantage for uh, Vexler, and he knows it. So there might be fireworks uh, coming from him. We've already got 825,000 in the middle, and Vexler announces his bet. 250,000. And just to be clear, just how, just to showcase how strong this board is for what Vexler is doing, when Berkey sees that, sees this, he thinks, "All right, I hit a king, but please do not bet all, all three streets." Nine of spades on the turn. So Vexler, the effective stack here, and does not have pot behind. He does turn a straight draw. He elects to check. Berkey checks behind. River card oh is a check, and that's the straight for Vexler. What? Oh, man. You couldn't write this any more crazy if you tried. <laughs> Inside, he's going, ha, ha, ha. Oh, we saw some sick hands on the feature table yesterday. The sickness is back for day four. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. 900k. 900,000. Most of his stack. Most of Berkey's remaining chips. I would not want to be Matt Berkey right now. Wow. What a hand. Well, we've seen uh, Berkey fold a monster earlier in the tournament. Yeah, if he can fold a full house, he can fold a pair. <laughs> Two time bank cards played so far.
That's a he call. He makes the call. <laughs> and block is straight. Yeah. Wow. Such a sick spot for Matt Berkey, who's left with fewer than 10 big blinds. Pavel Vexler up to 3.4 million. <clears throat>
does the effective all-in. And Asian folds the deck. You played the Johan's game. The Johan's game. Klaus Burt 94 watching on Twitch asks, is James Hartigan also a good player? Probably. No. Yeah, Thank yeah, you for your question. I'm trying to remember, have we really ever played before? The only time you and I have Once? ever played was in that um, online commentators mm -hmm. game for charity. Yes, that was the one time. Yeah, I where, I, again, not making excuses, but when you are trying to be the host of the live stream and you're also playing, <laughs> it kind of... Of course. Yeah. No, I, I completely understand. Not that my A game is much better than my B game, but you were definitely getting my B game. Well, especially if you don't play all the time, you, you definitely can't really split your focus then between playing and hosting as well. You know, a lot of the things that people do is a result of having played all the time and being able to have a little bit more of an autopilot mode. Nacho opening from under the gun with ace-10 off. Nachos. I've been so snacky with the crafts table here. It's just can't help myself. Cookies, Twix, <laughs> sour gummy bears, you name it. Cannot go wrong with a Twix. Here's a good quiz question for you then, Maria. Twix is not called Twix in France. What is it called? Okay, answer this question first. This is like maybe you giving me a hint, but okay. does Twix actually mean anything? No, I think it's because the French would say Twi rather than Twix. It doesn't have the same sound in French ah. as it would have in English. Uh, I can see a red triangle of death here over at the secondary feature table, but Pizari does have the best of it and is a four to one favorite with aces against Mendoza's top pair. Jack on the turn, so with it being a spade, it reduces Mendoza's outs. Pizari just has to fade a king or a ten on the river that is not a spade. It's the nine of spades, not flush for Pizari. That is a double up. Now, it may be that they've changed it, but certainly in the 80s and 90s, a Twix in France was called a Raider. Huh. Hashtag fun facts. And interestingly, this was when Snickers were called Marathon in the UK. So it was always, oh, in France, a Marathon is a Snickers and a Twix is a Raider. And then Marathon became Snickers in the UK. And we were like, are they going to come for a Twix? Are they going to change Twix to Raider? They didn't. I feel like it seems to me that candy bars just don't sound like candy bars in other countries. Like, Snickers totally sounds like candy related or chocolate related to me, but like Marathon, I'd be like, maybe that's like a healthy yeah. snack. Fair comment from Fourville. Very underwhelming facts. Hmm. Someone's always got a nag us. Worst facts ever. <laughs> that tum to tum tum tum. Queen at nine in the hijack. Round to James Mendoza, who has Jack seven in the small blind. Has elected to call, which means Blake Bone can get a free flop, but elects to raise, gets a fold, hands over.
David watching on YouTube says, production can do something like increase the blind 500,000. I mean, I don't know where to start. Production does not have any influence over the structure of the tournament. We cannot control the blinds. No, and 500,000 seems a little egregious. You know, we, even yeah. if we could, we wouldn't go up from 4080 to... <laughs> an 80K big blind, not enough. It's now 500,000. I mean, not being funny, I think the big blind's big enough as it is considering the stacks and we're still not losing Please. players. Sorry, getting a little liberal with the open here, holding King Deuce offsuit. Mendoza looked like he wanted to do something about it, but decides to give up the ace nine offsuit. Zari raising from the cutoff, and Hugo Rodila defending his big blind. King high flop. Four back, 150,000. Continuation bet gets the job done. Kreiter asks, Sam Grifton still in? <laughs> Mr. Grafton is still in and is at this table we're watching right now. There he is in the aqua hoodie as we return to the main feature table. With 22 minutes left on this level, still 24 players remaining in the PSPC. Um, keep referring to how shallow it is. Of course, the points go up in 20 minutes and it gets even shallower. I get it though. The money jumps are real and the money jumps are big. Ace Jack versus Ace Jack here. Daniel Devoris opened in early position to 180K. Fedor Holtz has three bet the button. It's now 900K and Devoris deciding what to do. This three bet obviously is pretty committing. This is a virtual all in from Fedor. Yeah, DeBoris open from relatively early position. So Ace Jack very close to the bottom of the range that he would be willing to call with. So very much on the line. And especially when you consider the fact that it is going to be half of Devoris's stack to call as well would put him in a bad position if he calls and loses. And it's also important to remember that this isn't, you know, an open shove that he is facing from Holtz. This is Devoris opening and then Holtz shoving over the open, which I think all of these factors playing into Devoris's final decision to fold. Fedor Holtz keeping his head above water, playing a 17 big blind stack. And back to the secondary feature table, Red Triangle of Death has been presented to Jeremy Osmus. All in with threes, Pizarri thinking with king queen off bazari says it's close and i would tend to agree about 17 big blinds and a chunky portion of bazari stack so he folds and i think this is also what we're seeing, James, is players willing to go all in, but yeah. their opponent's not willing to call them. Um, 
And of course, if you don't get a caller, it's not going to lead to many eliminations. And whether that's a function of just their opponents not having the right hands to call with, or people wanting to call a little more snug because they don't want to end up in a position where they're the short stack. It may be 2023, Maria, but the gap concept is back. The gap between the hand you need to shove with and the hand you need to call with. In this event, people only willing to call with absolute premiums. Taylor on YouTube says, what does field 24-1014 mean? Field means the number of players, the entries. So there were 1,014 unique players in the PSPC and 24 remain. So it's 24 of 1,014 left in the field. I think it's a good thing that Stapes wasn't here for that question. <laughs> I like to be of service. Hugo Rodila shoving the button. Shove gets through. Good job. Good job. Good job. Mm -hmm. Cross-eyed lion has been doing some research. Just checked. Same as in Germany and many other European countries, the chocolate bar Raider was rebranded Twix in 1991. That is a hashtag fun fact. Ooh, will the real hand please stand up? Royce under the gun, pocket queens. And he also wears a whoop, like me. Round to the blinds, Sam Grafton in the small, folds 9-5 suited. Nicholas Toom in the big. I've only seen one of his cards, which is the Jack of Clubs. See, this was free, now it's like uh, $42. gets through. <coughs> the dream's still alive for these 24 players spread out over three tables. By the end of today, there should be just one table and the surviving players will return tomorrow for the final day of the PSPC when we pay out the seven-figure scores, when we make millionaires here in the Bahamas. And our live coverage of the final day will start tomorrow slightly later, 1 p.m. Eastern time, which is 7 p.m. Central oh, European time. Lazari opening with ace 10. Round to the blinds. Flushy is back. And that's a Grund badge. Recognize that alligator slash crocodile. Mm -hmm. Does that QR code on the hoodie take us directly to uh, his Twitch channel? Well, George Roos has defended. 
We've got a 9-4-3 flop. Pizzari could still be ahead with Ace High. Well, what we do know is Rage does not have a flush draw at the moment. <laughs> Doesn't have much of anything. Question from July 84, random question. Does the $25,000 entry fee include accommodation at the hotel? It does not. But if you want a platinum pass, that includes $25,000 entry to the tournament plus travel, accommodation, and expenses. So a platinum pass was actually worth the better part of $30,000. Good point, Smiley Chops. These guys must be gutted. They haven't had the opportunity to swim with the pigs yet. They've been playing poker every day. Apparently, Sam was annoyed that he missed out on the 250k <laughs> buy-in event. Oh, first world problems. Love Masunu. How much is the big blind? We're currently at 40,000, 80,000 blinds, so it's an 80k big blind with an 80k big blind ante. Those of you asking about why players aren't posting an ante. For the last few years, all PokerStars live events, most major live events around the world, in fact, have played with the big blind ante, which means the player in the big blind posts an ante on behalf of the entire table, once per orbit, which is the same as the size of the big blind. Yes, and f for people who I, I don't know why uh, protest this big blind ante, it is so much more efficient. It makes so much sense, maybe too much sense, where somebody has to be the contrarian in this situation. Uh, but it just saves the dealer for having to watch out for the mistake of, wait, who didn't ante? Where did the, you know, the non-ante person come from? Sometimes there's going to be an ante missing when you have to remember to collect it from every player, every single hand. Not only does that waste time, but a lot of the times, you know, people aren't just owning up to not putting the ante in. Oh, I mean, I can't imagine how miserable it was for the dealers to have to, like, bring in the antes every single hand. Osmus opened the hijack with ace nine and Pizzari defends the big blind with king queen. Advantage Osmus with this flop. Check, check, and the board pairs, the eight on the turn. Osmus certainly does have some decent showdown value with the ace high plus that straight draw, so I don't think this bet from Pizzari is going to get through. Osmus does make the call. Still ahead. <clears throat> Straighty, flushy, paired board. I love it. <laughs> Very much so, Osmus. Rivering nines and eights. But of course, a lot of the draws come in. But once you see your opponent check, Got to be feeling pretty happy to see that check. Osmus also holding the ace of clubs. Chipping up, 
as we enter the last 10 minutes of the level. No elimination since we got down to the final three tables. Blinds going up very soon. You just said you wanted to bluff and then you're like, oh, it's not fair now. You're all ready for a club to come up and bluff. And bet. then you're like, I still want to do it. He's with the blind, right? Just go all in. Where's the button? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I'm the player. Player. Please small blind. You were just in the big blind. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Sorry. Bunt's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, I see it. Like spin the bottom. Osmus has opened with ace five of hearts. And Osmus has been in poker for quite a long while and was primarily for a while a cash game player, you know, has kids, has a family, liked, I think, the stability and the routine of a cash game lifestyle. But lately, just been on a tournament tear in the last two years, really putting up some incredible results to add to an already, already impressive resume. Two calls, and that means three players going to the flop. And that flop is ace four three. So Osmus with top pair and a wheel draw. Mendoza with a pair of fours. And Joris could have. Well, we don't know what Joris has. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a little unlikely that he has ace-queen. Um, I would imagine that off of that stack, he would have elected to perhaps shove 20 bigs pre with ace-queen. And same with queens, of course. I'm more leaning towards, you know, some other suited Broadway-type combinations. I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility that he will flat with ace-queen, of course. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, I, I just, I don't think off of that stack. But it looks like he's going to get out of the way and back to Mendoza, who does have backdoor hearts that we can see would not be good. Well, Mendoza is going to call one straight and reassess on the turn. The turn card is... The eight of spades, and that is going to give Mendoza two pair. It gives him the advantage. Dirty, dirty. I'm trying to go for the check raise. Osmus with a weak kicker. Could be interested in exercising some pot control here. Looks like he's going to go for a smallish bet around a third <laughs> pot with that additional wheel equity. Yes, you did, in fact, turn two pair Mendoza. Got very lucky. Now with 1.13 million back facing this 300K oh, bet. Yeah, it feels like a really good oh, check shove <clears throat> sizing. And Mendoza certainly can have quite a few two pair combos defending from the big blind. You know, you would assume that they're gonna defend ace three, ace four suited and a lot of offsuit as well. Perhaps 4-3 suited is going to defend the big blind. You know, we see 8-4 suited defend the big blind. So 
it's pretty tough spot for Osmus. Mendoza could also have sets. You know, you could see threes and fours and even eights just defending. That's a call. Mendoza gets it in good, but will have a lot of cards to fade. Aces, fives, trays, deuces, working for Jeremy Osmus. If any of those cards hit the river, we are going to be down to 23. Yeah, still pretty vulnerable up against Osmus's exact hand. Osmus having 31% equity. King on the river, and Mendoza holds. Eights and fours are good. He doubles up. So that's going to leave Jeremy Osmus with 665k. That's what, around seven big blinds? Oh, for the next three minutes. Yes. Got to mention, <laughs> blinds are going up in three minutes. The one who was, says James, the Pokestars VR MPT stop three starter today. Wish us good luck on winning a bracelet. Good, good luck. luck us on winning a bracelet. Mm -hmm. Assuming it's a virtual bracelet. <clears throat> Hugo Rodila with ace 10 under the gun, folds. Jeremy Osmus folds 10-3. Sam Grafton is out. Looks like it's round to Juris Roos. Nope. Toom. Nicholas Toom. Flushy. Now it's on Juris. And now it's on Philippe Pizzari. I've only seen one of the Brazilian's cards. He's got the six of diamonds. He's raised the button. Blake Bones in the big blind. He's all in with ace jack. Pizarri wants a count. Yeah, Bone finds a nice hand to shove with. And we can't see Pizarri's other card, but I assume he's not posturing. Yeah. Looks like he had a decision and he went with it. I'm it's, guessing it's we're racing here. Assume that Pizarri has sixes. <clears throat> Gotta live and die by these flips late in tournaments. Suffice to say, this is a hand that Blake Bone needs to win. He's the at-risk player here. King, queen, eight. Additional outs now for Blake Bone. Still a fair fight. Looking for a 10, an I mean, ace, ten outs, right? a jack. Just 10 outs, right? Uh, we've seen folded cards. It's actually seven outs. Ooh, no more. <clears throat> Count of it outs now. Aces, queens, jacks, tens, eights. Fair of the board. Nick, knack, paddywhack. Give the dog a bone. Oh, it's a nine. So six is hold, and we lose Blake Bone in 24th place. He's the first player eliminated post redraw, and Blake is the last player to receive $107,500. A money jump for the remaining players. Everyone's now locked up more than 123 grand. It's a hard one to hold. Yeah. I thought you played a zero. And we are ticking into the break by the looks of things. This will be a 20 minute break. And then we will have another two hour session. Unless we get down to 16, in which case we're going to have another redraw. In fact, I would really, really hope 
that we do get down to 16 in the next two hours, Maria. Yeah, that would mean for a relatively reasonable night. The word relatively <laughs> underlined and in bold and in large font. <laughs> So we'll see more action from the main feature table. Right now, Tom Parsons has the biggest stack at this table. The table chip leader has 46 big blinds. Ooh. I mean, something has to give. There are three short stacks. Peter Kalev, 13 bigs. Fedor holds 11 bigs. Daniel Devore, six bigs. Blind's going to 5,100. 26 big blind average in the PSPC as we try to get down to the final six tonight. And more action on the other side of the break here on the penultimate day of the PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. Heading back now to the main feature table, where the action's on Jake Schwartz. Go, Merman. Ace, king of diamonds. Do I have to say he should raise? He should raise. He raises to 105,000. Ace, Jack for Felipe Oliveira. All in. And he shoves. Probably had to do it with 14 big blinds, but it was close. How much is it? Griffin Benja has queens. Seven something. And this is a reshove. All in. Sure enough. So action folded back around to the original razor. What does Schwartz do now? It's actually closer than it looks, but suited, I think it's a call. I fold, 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 fold. I guess he's folding. I think it's fine. They're just tens, man. Stop wasting less time. <laughs> You can call for the sweat board, huh? or you, you don't mind? Whatever you want, man. <laughs> <laughs> 10, 9, 8. I'm just going to shoot you through the wall in the river anyway. <laughs> Counter-strike. <laughs> I will have to say, though, I think you folded one of your outs. It's true. <laughs> Oliveira at risk and behind. But there's an ace on the flop. Math is idiotic. Super annoying. Ten on the turn, and Oliveira just has to fade a queen on the river to survive. I think the counter-terrorist might have this one. Off target. <sighs> <laughs> Missed it. <laughs> Don't have it anymore. Poker can be a real frag sometimes. Oliveira playing close to an average stack. Benja down to 1.2 million. We are one away from the redraw for the final three tables and one away from another money jump. Love those money jumps. Action on Griffin Benja with Ace King. 600. He raises. It's a virtual all-in from Griffin. He leaves himself 20K behind. He does that because of the pay jump. Someone may go broke before him. This time was for you. Robbie Onex out. Six deuce for Noppers. Also taking a bit of time. Not pro faults. So Lyle Shikurchi has ace jack and calls. Jake Schwartz in the big blind has threes again. <laughs> Don't think he can get involved this time. He folds. I made it. Oh, sweet. <laughs> so I can fold no, this. So I can fold this nonsense. It's true. Griffin can still get away from it. The flop. 
Queen 9-6. Ace King still ahead. Shikurchi puts Griffin all in. Well, he's certainly not folding now. So now he's all in. King on the turn, but Talal has outs. Griffin does not want to see a 10 on the river. Yeah, I want to say that King's good for Griffin, but then the 10 comes and I feel terrible. Safe river card. It's an eight. Saw a lot of spots. Huh? I saw a lot of spots Did on you? there. <laughs> Pretty out of line for him to call Talal a cheetah. Oh, you're a funny guy. This game is really putting Griffin through the ringer today. Now playing a stack of 1.4 million. He's raised to 170,000. Action is on Griffin Benja. All in. He shoves with pocket fours. Action back on Marsh. I think we're likely to see a call. Sure enough, and we are off to the races. Griffin, the at-risk player. Marsh spikes a queen on the flop, and Griffin Benja is now on the verge of elimination. Looking like the end of the road for Griff. The turn card. It's a four! Let's go. Wow. Come on. Benja hits the two outer. Perfect celebration. And he will double up through Luke Marsh. These flips are unavoidable. You just gotta hope you end up on the good end. With that pot, Griffin is now back above average, 2.96 million. It is Luke Marsh's turn to be all in. He is shoved with ace three of diamonds. Action. He's back on Griffin Benja, the original razor. And he calls with ace queen. Marsh's stack in bad shape. Marsh's hand in bad shape. You can have this one. I have it's only fair. <laughs> it's easy to say when you have no control whatsoever over the cards that come out. The flop. Is queen high? It's not looking good for Luke Marsh. The turn card has him drawing dead. Good game, guys. Good luck. Good game, Dirt. You know what? No. Marsh. His name is Luke Marsh. Good game, Luke Marsh. He is our 22nd place finisher. I see you. He cashes out for more than 150 grand. Griffin Bencher is now back up to 3.6 million. We're heading to the secondary feature table where two of the chip leaders are in action right now. Scott Baumstein opened with ace 10 and Florian Duta has re-raised with pocket jacks. With these stacks being so big, I don't see much more going in pre-flop. Decision on Baumstein. Baumstein's in position. He can call. I'm all in. Alternatively, he can shove. That is a huge ramp. And I think Pocket Jacks might have to call. I think Queens he's called already. Jacks, close. Man. To say he doesn't like the situation would be an understatement. That's good. He calls. Holy chips, this pot is big. Nine million in the middle. Scott Baumstein at risk and behind. Scott probably thought he could get him to lay down some better hands. Biggest pot of the PSPC so far. And an ace on the flop. Oh, man. So disappointing when you get it in good there. The turn card is a seven. 
Baumstein survives unless Duta can spike a jack on the river. And the river is a deuce. Baumstein doubles up big time. That's twice he's done something like this. Lucky there. And that hand does a lot of damage to Duta. He's down to 455,000. And Scott Baumstein is now the big chip leader with just over 9 million. It's really unlucky, I'm sorry. That's the game, mate. At our feature table, we have the two Chrises, chip leader Chris Oliver and Chris Moneymaker, who's under the gun here. Looking down at pocket sevens. He's gonna get the action started. Sunglasses first. Everything in order. Now the action started. He raises to 66,000. Ace king for Chris Oliver. Blimey, he's got a legitimate hand. Something we normally don't see. How will he play it? His standard strategy, which is to raise, he three bets to 159,000. He doesn't let us down. Palacios has king 10 and folds. Could be a spot for a cold four bet out of one of these guys. He folded to Anton Yanel in the big blind. I don't think we're gonna see a cold four bet. Instead, it comes back to Chris Moneymaker. Both of these players have deep chip stacks. Moneymaker has a qualified pair. He's going to want to see a flop. So he makes the call. What you got, Chris? What's up? What you playing? 1.5. It's always 1.5 every time you ask the question. Slow and steady, Moneymaker. Moneymaker's still good on that flop. As a backup, he has an up and down straight draw and a backdoor flush draw. Oliver has no backup plan, but wow, he has checked. He slowed down. He found the button. He does have a backup plan. Mark the date and time. The board pairs. Moneymaker seven, still good. That gives him an open-ended straight flush draw with two pair. Nice. One seventy. And he is going to lead out on the turn. One hundred and seventy thousand. This is an excellent turn lead. It's highly unlikely Oliver hit that flop if he checked it back after he's been aggressive all day long. Moneymaker is betting to protect his hand and squeeze a little bit of value. Oliver with the decision. Call. He is going to call with his overs and see a river card. Ace King looks pretty pre-flop, but on this turn, it's ugly enough to give Freddy Krueger nightmares. The river card is the jack of clubs. It's a straight flush for Moneymaker. Seven to jack, straight flush. And he checks to the aggressive Chris Oliver, who bets 200,000. Oliver bites on this Moneymaker trap. Sneaky, sneaky, Chris. Five bucks as he just clicks it back. I decline. Am I going to show me if I fold? Anytime you ask, I'll show you. Chris Moneymaker. You're Chris Oliver. I'm glad we cleared that up. I'm gonna get 450. It's almost a min raise, 450,000 total. Chris Moneymaker with the excellent table talk, baffling his opponent on this river. And Chris Oliver forced to fold ace high. He thought better of rebluffing. For good reasons, Chris had a straight flush. He's going to be on the button in this next hand as the blinds go up to 20,000, 40,000. And as we sweat with Chris Moneymaker, we're only going to see his hole cards. There is Sam Stein, one of two new players at our feature table, the other being Shane Carner, who's in the small blind. Action is on Anton Yanel. He's folded. So here's Chris. Pocket nines. Earlier, Moneymaker said he had a read on Oliver. Well, Chris, I have a read on you. Every time you put your sunglasses on, you're gonna play. 
solid read. He has raised it to 90,000. Tim Finney lets it go. Chris Oliver looks interested. He's raising. He is three bet to 200,000. Good luck putting him on a hand, William. This is a difficult task I have in front of me, but I'm gonna go ahead and say he has something suited, and I don't even know if it's connected. It's suited. High or low? All over the place, from high to low. Chris Moneymaker will make the call, and we go heads up to the flop. And that flop is King Jack 8 to overcards to Moneymaker's 9s. Money is going to need that read he talked about earlier if he's going to navigate this flop. He has checked to Oliver, who had the pre-flop betting lead. He continues for 235k. And it looks like Moneymaker has got that read. He will make the call. A 10 on the turn gives Moneymaker an up and down straight draw just in case his nines are no good. If Chris Oliver actually had a qualified premium, it surely would have hit this board. When has he ever had a premium? He's betting for a second time. He makes it 509,000. I'm all in. A moneymaker shoves. Moneymaker clearly knows something we do not. He talked about having a read on this player. He's going with that read. Six deuce is the hand for Oliver. Complete air ball and he lets it go. Moneymaker has been getting the better of Chris Oliver at this feature table. Money was not afraid to play for stacks. The composed veteran gets the best of the wild young gun. Fearless. Get the blood racing a little bit there. That was fun. Fun for you. Blinds are still 20 and 40,000. Chris Oliver is in his favorite place, early position. Tim Finney folds under the gun. 88. And Chris Oliver raising with 7 5 of hearts. Well, this is in fact Chris Oliver's favorite hand in all of the poker hands out there. Sam Stein with Jack Queen lets it go. Shane Karner folds. Grayson Ramage not interested. Anton Yanel has ace three of diamonds. And he will call from the small blind. Chris Moneymaker is in the big blind with Jack Queen. We saw Sam Stein fold the same hand, but Chris has got chips invested already. So it's 48 to me. Bring back the squeeze, Chris. Dude, I'm so bad at math. That's 48, right? Didn't he used to be an accountant? You would think I'd be better at math than a poker player. No, it's a good thing you're not an accountant anymore, though. I know, seriously. <laughs> There's your answer. People I did their taxes for, like, dude, he did my, my... Lawsuits being prepared across Tennessee. Well, that is a danger flop for Moneymaker. He's hit top pair. Check. But Chris Oliver has two pairs. The blinds have checked to him. 135. And he makes a continuation bet of 135,000. Yanel gets out of the way. Moneymaker is treading in dangerous water right now. He makes the call. And the turn doesn't help him. Oliver still leads with sevens and fives. And he's firing again. This is a real test of Moneymaker's live read. Do I get to see this one too? No. But I really want to see it. Moneymaker does not seem happy with the situation. He doesn't seem comfortable. The longer someone ponders on a hand, the more likely they are to call. You got the goods this time, Chris? He's onto something. Something tells me you do. I don't know why. He clearly does have a read. I feel like you have it, actually, this time. Think positive thoughts. Woo. Sorry, guys. I'm playing for his tournament life here, maybe. So. Chris suggesting a raise, maybe. Small tournament. Come on, Chris, go with your gut. Oh, 
Oh, my gut tells me you have it. Your gut speaks the truth. Definitely go with your gut. He lays it down. Chris Moneymaker is playing so well against Chris Oliver. He hasn't put a foot wrong against this guy all day. He didn't have top set. Huh? He didn't have top set. I did not have no, top set. Did. No, he didn't. Eight, eight, no. eight, nine, I, I had a jack, man. Welcome back to the Bahamas and the Pokestars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. We have played four levels on day four. Four more on the slate, but it might take more than that to get down to the final six as we resume the action. 23 players remain. They are playing ridiculously shallow. Not going to lie to you guys, we need a mini bust-out bonanza right now. Max Menzel is the chip leader. Pedro Marquez sits in second place. Platinum Pass winner Tom Parsons sits in third. But there are so many short stacks, and the average stack right now is just 26 big blinds. On the main stage, we've got DJ Khaled, Fedor Holtz, and Daniel Tavoris in the danger zone. Danger zone! I am James Hartigan. Here's Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And this is the voice of Nicholas Walsh. Hello, I've returned. Thank you for having me. 50,000, 100,000, the blinds. And after 60 minutes, the blinds will go up again 100k big blind anti as well and of course in addition to the main feature table we have the secondary feature table we also got the third table up on the stage as well secondary feature table has a couple of platinum pass holders three actually sam grafton from team pro hugo rodilla from spain and Niklas Thum, a.k.a. Flushy, from Germany. That table also pretty shallow, and Jeremy Ausmus in the hyper danger zone. Danger zone! About to get cards in the air once again. With 23 players remaining, everyone has locked up 123,000. 600 US dollars. We have got big jumps along the way, and that is something that all the players are going to be conscious of, and that is also going to dictate the action. When we get later on today, we're going to be looking at big six-figure scores, 300K and upwards. And then tomorrow, the final six will return, all guaranteed at least a million, but a massive difference, $3 million difference between sixth place and the winner, 4 million plus that extravagant trophy for the champion of the second edition of the PSPC. Do you notice the trophy looks like poker chips? Yes. All right, fine. Jeez. It made its debut in 2019, Joe. All right, well, some of us don't see the magic eye right away every time. <laughs> Sir, I don't know how to interpret art. Here we go. <coughs> Level 27 is underway. <coughs> so action folded to Jerome Moreau after the under the gun raise from Tom Parsons. Ace eight suited. And that looks like raise and take it. No, we've still got Barbero. Nacho's in the big blind, and he's going to defend. But Tom with the advantage as they go heads up to the flop. I am ridiculously excited for my boy, Tom, down to the final 23. Barbero does check. Now has the best hand, 71% on the flop. Because it is always coming seven. I think Tom has a really natural C-bet here, guys. Um, although he um, doesn't have a made hand right now, obviously plenty of nice turns for him. Maybe like the nine of clubs. For example, plus of course you can get 
you know, hands that have equity to fold, hands like four or five might be tempted just to give up on the flop. For the most part, if you're going to size down, they're going to continue with gut shots. In fact, that's not the worst check raise combo, but every once in a while, you can deny some equity, and that's important. So, Tom Parsons' continuation bet of 350,000, called by Nacho Barbero. The turn card is the Jack of Spades. Does give Tom a gut shot straight draw. Yeah, I mean, Nacho checks to him. Sorry, James, I was going to say, also, he is, of course, blocking 8-9, which is important. That's a combination your opponent might have here. So you can apply a lot of pressure to 7x, 3x, some of those gut shots I mentioned on the flop as well, 4, 5, 5, 6, that kind of a thing. I think you continue here pretty liberally. But uh, the check is also fine, of course. You're going to be beating some of those hands as well, going to the river. You don't necessarily need to turn your hand into a bluff. And Nacho Rivers' two pair here, Nick, is the strategy now for him to lead, or does he hope that Parsons fires a bet on the river? No, I think he absolutely has to lead here because there's just too many... There's too many 10x combos that might slow on the turn. There's some 7x combos that still might hero call. There's, you know, even some ace highs if they're getting, if they're feeling really, really, uh, you know, sticky in this situation. I think checking is giving your opponent way too many ways to get off light. You got to go ahead and bet some amount here and a snap fold. I think Tom plays his hand just fine here, though. Question from TB on Twitch. Where is the Daniel and Helmuth? Assuming he's referring to Daniel Negrano. Number one, neither player made the trip to the Bahamas. But number two, with 23 remaining of 1,014, there'd be no guarantee that they would still be in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely beautiful luxury levels we have here, James. But um, you have to run good to get to this stage. Absolutely. You need some hands. And we've got an interesting mix of players in the final 23. We've got some accomplished pros. We've got some less experienced, shall we say, platinum pass winners. People like Tom Parsons. It's kind of strange that it seems like some of the most experienced players are the shortest stacks right now. I wonder what's going to happen. Let's say we happen to lose all of them, which seems unlikely we'd lose all of them. Does the game of the rest of the players open up? Does it tighten up? Does everyone just slap fight for the rest of the night until they get blinded down to the final table? It's, I'm not really sure. You'd expect that if the Dvorises and the Fedors had all of the chips, that maybe they would be punishing a little bit more. Oh, dear. Yikes. Daniel Dvoris all in with sevens and has run into the aces of Peter Kalev. DJ Kalev. Eh, 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 eh. Boing, 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 boing. And Kalev obviously deciding whether to just call here or reshove. He does reshove. Man, what if someone wakes up with a bigger hand? Gets rid of everyone else. So Daniel Dvoris at risk. Dominated by Kalev. DJ Kalev. Kalev is a four to one favorite here. Dvoris is going to need to hope that it is always coming seven. His hair was perfect. Five cards to come, which will decide Daniel Dvoris's fate. He's the at-risk player here. Jack for deuce. No help for the sevens. Dvoris down to 8%. Turn card is a tray. Two outs for Daniel Dvoris. Needs to spike a seven on the river. It's another Jack. So Daniel Dvoris is eliminated in 23rd place. Cash is for $123,600. Not nearly as upsetting as my parents, Dvoris. Taking us down to 22 in the PSPC. <clears throat> so 
So Fedor Holtz now becomes the shortest stack at the feature table with just 11 big blinds. Kalev has chipped up to 22 big blinds. Not exactly healthy. <laughs> we are at the 5,100 blind level. Kalev keeping it tight there. King seven of hearts, definitely one for consideration. I think probably fine to leave it out given the nature of the 22 remaining though. Thomas Aishen also folding. 6-3 for Fedor, he's out. Nacho's on the button with queen three. <coughs> Loving the look from Fedor right now. It's a sweet hoodie. I'm loving Tom Parsons right now. Great guy. Meanwhile, we are over to the secondary feature table where Flushy is all in with Kings against Joris Roos, who's got jacks. Tomb. So the Platinum Pass winner is a four to one favorite to double up here. Hashtag Team Flushy all the way. Got his Platinum Pass just for being a stellar guy, basically. I Listen, he is a stellar guy. I am all about that Team Flushy. Love it. 10, 10, 5. Looking good for Kings. German speakers, how do you say hold in German? Wie heißt hold im Deutsch? Double paired board now, and Flossie just has to fade a jack on the river. Yeah, sehr schön, sehr schön. Did they lose? Halten! Das ist wunderbar. Sehr gut, sehr Barry gut. Barry Greenstein ist kein Problem. Kein Problem for Doom. And he gets the double up. Boah, sehr gut. And that will leave Joris with crumbs. Five big blinds by my calculation, and I'm not the human calculator, but even I can work that one out. I think so, he had five or six big. Six big, five or, five or six I mean, how many hands like that have we seen so far today? A five big blind stack, double to 10. An eight big blind stack, double to 16. It's usually more than a double, given how small their stacks are to begin with. Yeah, absolutely. Nice little setup there for uh, for Flushy. Sure he got all in and with better cards than I did. <laughs> So staying at the secondary feature table. Stay away. So. Ausmus. Jeremy Ausmus. Another one of those players who with a bigger stack, might be less handcuffed, more inclined to boss it. With pocket sevens and fewer than 10 bigs. Yeah, I think you know what you gotta do here, bud. All in. That's it, he's all in. That's how it works. Sam Grafton folds the button. Flushy will be in the small blind. With jack nine. Just won those chips. Let's not get carried away. Man, flushy patched up like a NASCAR <laughs> driver, and I'm here for it. 7-6 suited for Joris. Now, against this particular hand, ugh. But against ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, 7-6 suited, not looking too bad. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think it's probably way too much. Those chips are way too valuable at this stage in the tournament, you guys. Don't forget, pay jumps are ginormous here. Absolutely massive. But so much of his stack's already invested, Nick. He started the hand with 500k. 200k of that's already in the middle. I think you hit the nail on the head there. I feel like he is committed now, James. He's just too short to let it go. 6-7 seated performs so well at this point. Look at how much is dead in the middle. How can you let it go? Yep. Yep. Calls all in and is so unlucky to be up against sevens. Bruce. The Bruce is not on fire. <laughs> Just had the right pot odds to call. He runs into one of the worst possible combos you can find here, but I think he's done the right thing regardless. Right move at the wrong time, and there is a very strong chance that we will be losing Joris Roos. He'll take a chop. He'll take the kind of pot that everyone loves. Especially Tonka. <laughs> okay, Juppy, put him out of his misery. Show us the flop. Seven, oh, eight, wait, six. Wow. Wait, what? <laughs> Imagine the that. The it's the always coming home. seven. You flop two pair and you're less than one percent. <laughs> Nine's reasonable for a sweat. You're not asking for yeah. Yeah. Always yeah. coming case yeah. seven. Jeremy, he's a sporting man. <laughs> it's the year of the six and the you're seven, apparently. Nine of diamonds. 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 <laughs> <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't give anything. Uh, he's like, nah, no sweat. I'm good. I'll just lock it up on the turn, thanks. But it does. Does lock it up. <laughs> Joris Roos is our 22nd place finisher in the PSPC. He receives $123,600. And there is another money jump yeah. pending. Whoever goes out in 21st place gets the same money. And then, if you can make it to the top 20, you've locked up 142 grand. Yeah, GG Joris. At the, at the end of the day, guys, he's just too short. He is committed there. Um, obviously, those chips are super high value, but there's just too much in the middle, and it's such a pretty hand. He's going to have so much equity against so many. Yeah, I mean, look. Six, Not six, sevens. Yeah, exactly. Six, seven suited actually is one of the combos that does best against, like, aces, for example. If you have to be up against monsters, it's one of the best ones to have. So it's just a no-brainer. He's got to go in the middle there. But, uh, yeah, feels bad, man. Five pips, two At a final table? Yeah, five. Like, you were the, sh weren't the, sh you were the shortest? I, 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 yeah, three and a half big blinds, and I still managed to make a very Those are, they're tricky. Yeah. By the way, all the Dutch people correcting us on the pronunciation of his name, you did this. You knocked him out. <laughs> I get it. I think I might have just made one uh, a few hands ago. <laughs> Jeremy Osmus. Jeremy Osmus. Now playing a stack of 1.4 million. Sam Grafton in the cutoff with Jack 10. Opens to 200k. It's not quite the Grafton, is it? It's not quite. Any port in a storm. <clears throat> this is fine. <laughs> Bizarre calls Stop in the it. big blind. Stop it. Oh. And flops top two. Sam Grafton with the open ended straight draw. This could be terrible. Yeah, this could definitely go the wrong way. Nice and small, keeping that C bet nice and small. <laughs> like to see it. So, what's the play, bro? You gonna flat? You gonna check raise? Yeah, I dig it. But obviously, a dangerous thing to do against this specific combination. Yeah, what can you do though? It's not like a raise is gonna get him to fold, would it? A uh, heart that goes a long way here. Obviously, now a lot of straight cards for Sam also represent flush cards for Pizzati. I mean, now you don't raise, right? If you happen to get bet into again, because you just have so much of this locked up, like, what are you really afraid of hitting the river? Mm. The offsuit straight card. 
Sam takes the free card. Four of diamonds, no change. Three pair. I think king queen should always lead this river now. You definitely still want to get paid from some queen x. Sometimes you can get, even get heroed by some like pocket pairs here if, if your opponent puts you on a hand like jack 10, something like that. So he bets 225, K. 225, K. I haven't read the contents yet, but I've just received an email from Maria Ho, the heading of which is, I'm an idiot. Uh oh. I look forward to reading it. Uh oh. She's finally re going to regret turning me down for a date. <laughs> 2011. 2011. <laughs> been playing on her mind ever since, Joe. <laughs> is Sam considering turning his hand into a bluff? He's considering it, yes. I don't know how likely he is to do it, but that's what good players do. Oh, no. <laughs> they consider everything. <laughs> that could have been a disaster, Samuel. And we are going back to the main feature table where there has been an all-in. Jerome Moreau opening to 200,000. A shove from Thomas Aishen. And Moreau has called. <clears throat> and Moreau is the at-risk player here. Ace-jack against fours. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So... <laughs> Aishen did not move all in. He re-raised to 2 million, leaving himself 285k behind. Moreau is now all in, and Aishen has to think about calling here. We referred to the pay jump a short while ago, so I'm guessing he's using his time bank cards to tank, but now... <coughs> He has called it off. And Aishin is the at-risk player with fours. So they announced a newish rule, James, yeah. earlier in the day, that you have to leave one big blind behind at least so that you can use your time banks. If right. you don't, you cannot tank. Right. Well, in this situation, it is a race, and it's a race that Aishin needs to win. But if he does win... If fours hold, Moreau is going to be left super short with one big blind. Like Scorpion versus Sub-Zero, one of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. Nine, six, five. Mm. What could be fun? Nine, nine is fun. <laughs> super. Nine, six, or five. Super fun. Seven. Oh, nine, seven. <laughs> I'm fine with seven. Turn card. Here's a five, and nine, that does create eight, some eight, counterfeit eight. outs. Moreau can now hit an ace, jack, nine, or six to eliminate Aishen. If he can fade those cards, Thomas Aishen will double up. He gets the double. And that is going to leave Moreau ridiculously short. That's going to leave Moreau morose. Nice. And Moreau has got how many hands until he has to take the big blind? Happens. Two? So still a chance that he can so ladder. Me, you know, after, like, last year, There's like, a chance he could pick up aces in this hand and you know, couldn't topple up. up. The people ask me, how are you doing? And I tell them, I'm alive. <laughs> the most important thing, think about it. You were alive. Yeah, can, can we double check? Words Wait. of wisdom from <laughs> Nacho. <laughs> e Barbaro. Yeah, yeah. I, 285 years, but for, for here, I wanted to check. So I'm guessing that... Just because it's a big question. The word will That's spread good. very soon yeah. that there is a player with just one big blind and that might slow everyone else down and they might just sit back and wait for that money jump. 
Fusion says, missed all of today's action. Is the dealer still in? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, technically, <laughs> yes. Yeah, everyone focus on that pay jump right now, which is worth the better part of $20,000. Snowman Streams asks, how did Tom Parsons finish? That's He's at the bloody feature table. His chip stack is literally Stay bottom left way. as we speak, sir. I mean, I'll tolerate that kind of question when they're not on the main stage, but when we're literally looking at them. Yeah, not ideal. Also, don't be jinxing my boy out there. I didn't show you a snap. I was like, oh. Parsons folding ace three oh. under the gun. Makion is out. 8-7 for Moreau. <laughs> uh, count it. Hold on, this might take a second. Uh, count it again. What was that number again? Oh, he's talking to him. I thought he was kind of like, you know. <laughs> he's giving him the recipe for ratatouille. <laughs> yeah. Fedor Holtz also conscious of the pay jump right now as he contemplates his move with a6 in the small blind i think he's all in guys 900,000 oh almost all in <laughs> effective all in Natural. oh seven deuce off suit for nacho he folds <coughs> and a baccarat yeah, joke to boot right? baccarat <laughs> I admire your luck, Mr. Bond. James Bond. <coughs> <laughs> the ultimate Baccarat scene. I mean, that's right in Dr. No, isn't it? Stars, Correct. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, they're hiring everybody. Anybody, anybody, hiring these anybody days. right yeah. now. So, no, if you lost, like half your age. I was for five years. Bro. They, 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 they kicked me out. Still has too much. Too much one yeah, opportunity. Much Bad influence. Bad influence. Nah, I'm a really good influence. Nah, but they're going to get me back. <laughs> was that Joe Whispringer actually their mm. <laughs> combo? That was real. <laughs> Simple. They need me back more than I need them. <laughs> wow. Le Tank. It's okay, Focus Stars, I forgive you. <laughs> oh, thank Don't God. <laughs> yeah, we were worried. You have been forgiven by Nacho. I forgive you, it's so good. E Barbaro. Send me a please. All right, 4.7 milli here, pocket nines. He's got some chips. 47 big, our current chip leader at this table. Oh, pocket threes for Fedor Holtz. Now, with that pay jump consideration, is this a fold? I think it's a fold for me, James. Yeah, I know he's very, very shallow here, but... It might be a fold even without the pay jump consideration after a raise. Yeah, potentially. I mean, I think probably if you're playing pure chip EV, you're going to shove pretty much any pair. But obviously, we are miles away from that. We are well in the ICM trenches now, guys. 1.1 all right, he's going to commit most of it. Okay. And whatever Fedor says is usually just about right. So Fedor halts with the virtual all in. He's left 20K behind. I think this might cost him. 
Definitely a call. Aishen re-raises, enough to put Fedor all in. Now, he's only got 20k behind. That's not enough to use a time bank. I mean, he's looking at what's happening at the other tables, makes the call, and here we go. Fedor halts at risk with threes against Thomas Aishen's nines, and this is fantastic news for Jerome Moreau, who's looking at a 20k ladder here. Yeah, this is huge for him. I mean, this is Fedor playing for the win, I guess. If he's purely playing to ladder, you really can't do this with threes, I don't think. Not with someone with one big blind. The red triangle of death denoting that Fedor Holtz is at risk here. He is the all-in player. The flop is ace, jack, deuce. Nines are holding. And Fedor has one out. A three has been folded. <coughs> Four on the turn. Picks up a wheel draw. Can hit a five now to make a straight. Four outs for Fedor Holtz. But it's a seven on the river. And Fedor is eliminated in 21st place. That means he cashes for 123 grand and everyone else has locked up 142 grand including the super short stack Jerome Moreau he does not seem tilted disappointed at all <laughs> yeah yeah and I'm Fedor. sure he is slightly sorry Nick I'm sure he's slightly disappointed but man he's not showing it yeah no I mean Fedor is just so experienced he's had so much success I think I think you can blind he's just I think he knows probably you know, the, the shove there is going to give him, they're going to give him a lot of credit. Like running into nines, obviously, oh. somewhat, un, somewhat unlucky. I mean, that's, oh. that's why he look at you. Perhaps oh, playing yeah. for the yeah, win yeah, as opposed to it's like technically soft trying to knit it up for the pay jump. But obviously ball, still yeah. important, regardless yeah. of how successful you've been in the past, you know. I, didn't I think like maybe that one can come under some scrutiny. And uh, a bit of a gift for Moreau. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, because I think Moreau, of course, would have been forced no all in very shortly. Yeah, he would have been forced all in on the next hand, but he's decided to move all in blind under the gun. I guess he's trying to pick up the big blind ante yeah. as well. Yeah. A bit of extra value in that part. Yeah, there's more to win now if he gets it in here. How much? All in. And did, did I hear all in from Nacho? No, he asked how much. Okay. I need to do the just three consistent. And it looks like Nacho's raising. Makes it 325,000. Gets rid of Tom Parsons in the small blind. We've got Esteban Maquillon in the big blind Just also folding. So here we go. Oh. Oh, not even a blackjack hand. Two live cards. 40%. That's a lot. With seven? With six, seven on the flop. With the club. With the club? I take it. Jerome Moreau at risk and behind, looking for an eight or a five. King seven seven. <laughs> Down to two percent. Six. 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 Nine. Six. Nine. Four. Whoa. That's not enough. It's not enough. But hey, when you're Still alive. <laughs> Two outs. You could have enjoyed that. Two outs for Jerome Moreau, oh, but it's a queen on the river. Oh, and man. the platinum did pass go? winner is eliminated in 20th place. He did get the ladder. $142,100 is what he cashes for. Allez, petit. Allez, c'est ça que we want. To the moon. Congratulations, <laughs> Jerome. And we are down to 19 now. Fedor is going to be outside be like, where's my money? Where's my money? <laughs> Average stack still pretty shallow, even though we've lost a few players. Three million. That's 30 bigs. Yeah, that was a huge score for a Platinum Pass winner, though. All profit, boys. <coughs> 19 remaining, so three more eliminations, which could happen within the next 90 minutes would necessitate another redraw. We don't make the rules, we just follow them. But obviously, as we were discussing earlier on, as 
highlighted with Maria. At this stage in the tournament, it's so important. Seat draw, table dynamics that you have to have those redraws. Stars nuts again in the cutoff. Um, at this stage in the tournament with these two stacks, these are our two feature table chip leaders here, 59 big blinds and 49 big blinds respectively. Nacho with the 49 bigs. I think it definitely can go either way. The three bet or the call here seems good. Does just go for the straight three X from position. Those of you interested in what the widget predicts, running at this kind of pace, we're looking at 17 players at the end of this level. So should get two more eliminations in the next 20 minutes. But might not get down to two tables. Should be at that point by the end of level 29. And of course, sorry, the end of level 28. And we are due to play that level straight after this one concludes. Yes, Ragnar, there are three tables at the moment. Players spread out across three tables. Uh, now, there was just a big hand over at the secondary feature table. And Sam Grafton just got a double up. At least he made you squirm for 40K. <laughs> at least he got that on you. Mate, showed me up for the... Uh, the G-Man. For the wimp I am. How wild is it that he's still in this thing with 19 players left? It's awesome. Yeah, love a Grafton. Pretty ridiculous. To so Sam playing two and a half million right now, it is Philippe Pizzari, who is the table chip leader with four and a half million. Jeremy Osmus, the table shorty with 1.1 million. Andrew Fitch asks, any idea how many Platinum Pass players are left? Yes. Thank you for your question. Pocket aces here for Nacho. Well, I can tell you that right now we have six Platinum Pass winners remaining, but there is a strong chance we will be down to five very soon because Esteban Macchion has run Ace Jack into aces. What did you say? <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, flops an open ender. Good boy. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the poker gods can hear him. <laughs> the Ocho no change of the turn. Queen or a seven required. It's a deuce. And we say goodbye to Esteban Macchion. Another platinum pass okay. winner cashes out for a huge <laughs> amount of money. Are you crazy? Yeah. You're fired. It's for the team. It's, it's actually Macchion will get $142,100. So that means five platinum pass holders still in the field. Wow. Hugo Rodila. Nicholas yeah, Tum, like Tom Parsons, like Max Menzel, like Sam Grafton. Just for you. No, no, no. Now, obviously, Sam Grafton gets a platinum pass yeah, yeah. as a member of Team Pro and is an accomplished live pro. Yeah. <coughs> Are the rest real ones? So, Hugo Rodila yeah. has about 13K in lifetime well, tournament well. earnings. Heck yeah. Flushy. I think it's fair to say, Nick, that Flushy is also, albeit, uh, a member of the poker community and a, and a Twitch streamer, isn't a high-stakes pro. No, absolutely not. Uh, I can say with absolute certainty that this will be the biggest tournament he's ever played for sure, and this will be his biggest score. So Max Menzel is a bit more experienced. 
has a 46k live cash, has more than 100 grand in live earnings, but then you've got Tom Parsons, and you've told the story before, Nick. You brought him into his first ever live tournament. He didn't play live poker till 2019. That's right. Yeah, brought him into his first tournament. He was still at university, I believe, or he was still studying at that point, at least. Uh, didn't have the buy-in. Met him at a meetup there when I was meeting another Platinum Pass winner, Toka, who you had on your Poker in the Years podcast. He, in fact, was your super fan poker, uh, super fan Platinum Pass winner, and I bought them both in. I gave Toka his second bullet, I, and I bought, uh, I bought Tom into his first ever live tournament. Look at him now. Pretty cool. I mean, does he owe me loads of favors? Absolutely. Should he just give me 5% right now? No. It would be uh, highly unethical <laughs> for any of us to have a percentage of someone in this tournament. Only joking. I do not have a percentage of Tom Parsons, but I am really rooting for him. It's great to see him come full circle and to be here in the Bahamas with us. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're excited about all these guys. Yeah. As we see Nacho open under the gun with Jax and Peter Kalev with 9 8 on the button. Lor. Should we wait? Should we cancel the hand? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna play this one. Why has the floor been called? Cool? Be it doesn't table. matter. It was requested by Nacho. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's saying he's saying we should have six people. E Barbaro. Oh, okay. <laughs> We've got someone coming. He's been quite the card rack here, you guys. Picking up a lot of good hands. Getting paid with all of them thus far. <coughs> so Dylan De Stefano has just joined the feature table, but they're not wrong. They are currently playing five-handed, so there is another player incoming. With 18 players remaining, we should have six per table. Once we get down to 16, no. we'll have two eight-handed tables. What? Nine aces, aces and jacks in a row. Oh my god! I feel, I feel so bad. <laughs> no, I feel amazing. It's, it's fucking amazing. Don't feel bad for me. No. Nacho playing 76 one, bigs right now. It's insane. So did I. Yeah, I saw it. Mine was a bit worse. Yeah. <laughs> mine should never happen. That show is running good right now. There he is, the man himself. Tom Parsons, a.k.a. Pred Poker. It wasn't me, it was Nacho! <laughs> this hoodie definitely could give Vogelsang a run for his money. I mean, maybe tense. So many pockets in this table. So he's having a little nap there. Really you're, you're a wizard. Oh my god. And I had four. Oh my god. Why did you fucking freaking wizard? Yeah, a lot of anger. A wizard. Yeah. A wizard. <laughs> Another strong hand. What is going on here? I'm not the poker sure. gods have had enough. Because like everyone wants to get a little bit more TV time. I'm not sure. Wizard. So, Philippe Patari has been balanced. He's moved from the secondary feature oh, table man. to the main no, feature no, table. No, no, no. This is fine. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? A joke for five oh, people. <laughs> my favorite. I love it. <laughs> the ultimate inside joke. <laughs> Come on, it's a good look-alike, right? It's a great look-alike. Come on, see I can give you some money. <laughs> Felipe Pizzari. 45 big blinds hailing from Brasil. I have two pair on the flop and then three pair on the top. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very standard. Sometimes you hit. <laughs> Against you guys, you have to hit. <laughs> it's all about matching the board. <laughs> Thomas Aishan, ace jack <laughs> in the cutoff. <laughs> Man, if there's a tournament to sing in, this is the one. Yeah, some people really have a good time to think. Yeah. Well, this is a simple question to answer from Goldilocks. Hey, James or Joe, can you guys let me become a member of Team Pokestars so I can get free stuff? No. Thank you for your question. Next. 
I, I, I don't think that's happening in this event. I think... Uh, yeah, it was Mustafa. Uh, Mustafa. Classic. There's another high roller being played somewhere in the room. Someone brought him lasagna. That's what he does. Disgruntled Vet asks, can I get free stuff without becoming a member of Team PokerStars? Yes, thank you for your question. <laughs> all the players who qualified for the PCA main oh, event, all the players who won yes. a Platinum Pass, the PSPC, all received goodie bags. <coughs> In fact, I think some non-qualifiers managed to get some merch, Nick. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on the event, but for the most part, if you play your cards right and you know the right people, you can get free stuff, even if you're not one of those uh, qualifiers. However, it's like gold dust. And an event like this, it's extra, extra gold dust. They even told us at the start, we have to make sure that all of our players are sorted before we start to do each other favors. He's all in, you guys. It's only about 12 big blinds. No messing around here, just putting it all in. Definitely can get called by worse. Big blind, his last opportunity to wake up. Jack six of clubs just won't cut it. Even. <laughs> I've no idea what Ethan's on about, but Ed, banhammer him. <laughs> Get him. Yeah. So we've still got 16 minutes until the blinds go up again. 6120 is the next level. A reminder, it will come immediately after this one. There's no break in between 27 and 28. And then at the end of that level is the dinner break question mark? Yeah, that's true. So it doesn't really matter. Dinner break question mark. Oh, let me have a look. Hold on. Oh, I get to stretch my legs while I look. I think you're right. I think you're right, too. Level 28. Dinner break. Oh. Oh, that's a good point. Producer Chris reminded me that if, if we were to get to 16, in the last 30 minutes of the level before the dinner break, we take the break early. Because otherwise you get redraw break, then you get dinner break. Too many breaks. Too many breaks. Guys, 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 guys. What's sourdough, happening? sourdough, sourdough, sourdough alert. <laughs> you think he's going to push with it? If, do you guys know how sourdough works or not? There's a lot of shoving with Sourdough. Oh, there it is. Sourdough gets him every time. Well, Sourdough's going to get called here, surely. Aishen is not going to pass a hand as strong as tens, even though Barbaro just folded sevens. Sourdough, more like Showerdough. Oh, nines for DJ Kalev. Uh-oh, DJ Kalev. Boy, 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 boy. Oh, man. This is really, really tough for the nines here, honestly. I think he could just about pass this one. Yeah, feels like it. I mean, obviously, I'm influenced by my ability to see all the hold cards, but... Oh, we're so short-handed, though. The fact he's UTG is, is, is somewhat deceptive yeah. here. Yeah, I understand. I think that's totally reasonable, given the circumstances, but... Oh, boy. Does he ever convince tens to fold, given yeah, the fact it's a cold Yeah, that's what I was format? about to say. Yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. Oh, tens is in such a tough spot now. I don't think for one second Aishem was folding to the shove from De Stefano, but I think now that Caleb has reshoved. Yeah. I said two million, I have to. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, because they have a weird rule now. Minimum race is. Uh, oh, whatever. It's a really good point. Two million. And Flashback to earlier when Fedor folded two jacks in a similar yeah. spot and had the best of it. Doesn't matter. It was yeah, against it nines and matter. tens. It's okay, don't worry, don't worry. It's, it's up to him. So you're going in. Okay. Yeah, whatever. 
It is an all-in from Kalev, and I, I think that Aishen's probably going to fold, even though he's got the best hand. Yeah, it's just the way the hand played out. I mean, we can't say for sure, obviously, but it just looks so strong, the cold four bat. You want him to have nines, yeah. but he'll just have jacks and queens and kings and ace-king here, and it's for a lot of your chips. Obviously, slightly ahead of the ace-king, but you're not really loving life. Best case scenario, he has nines. I think he probably just folds eights. So here we go. De Stefano is the at-risk player with ace-5. Kalev has him covered and has the better hand. Of course, if De, Stef if De Stefano gets lucky, Kalev will be left with <laughs> six bigs. I hope he saves me money because I was ahead. You had 10? Let me use my one card. <laughs> One time deployed by De Stefano. Guys, somebody write that down. This is the official one time. He only gets one. Correct. And that's one in life, by the way, not in this tournament. Red and black. Bless you. The flop is Jack, Trey, Deuce, Diamonds, De Stefano. Did you say bless you to give him the one time? Are you the guy that controls it? Oi. Stefano has picked up a wheel draw in addition to having live aces. And oh, there is an ace wow. on the turn. One time granted. Just has to fade a nine on the river. That is a double oh. for Dylan De Stefano. Oh man, that is savage. What an inspired fold yeah, with tens. Felt it. Saved him some money there indeed. So still 18 remaining, and Peter Kalev down to six well. big blinds. I was thinking, but I'm pretty sure it fold, easy fold, I guess. This is another money jump, by the way. So if you finish in 18th no, place, you are going to get 142 grand. <laughs> Make Not it to value. 17th, and you get 165 grand, 165,600. <laughs> Laddering is a thing. Un <laughs> calor. Hand number 93, guys. 18 remain in the PSPC 2023 main event. Barbero wakes up with ace. Does this guy never not have a hand? This is unbelievable. You're talking about Nacho. Nacho. Lots of folding. Y Barbero. <laughs> y Barbero. So many <laughs> premium hands during this level. And What's Flushy doing? Thomas Aishen with King Jack. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Six players at the table, guys. King Jack, I think you're always going to play it here, minimum as a call. Definitely don't want to go crazy with it, especially with the fact you actually have a decent stack. That's yep. And also, you're up against Nacho. <laughs> uh, Six, five, well, deuce. Ace high holding. Like everyone with this table then is. <laughs> Sorry, Joe, I'm not going to do your bit. Oh, well, actually, no. I was, I got moved there, but then table broke. And then... It only works if all three of us do it or one of us. <laughs> <laughs> this came up and then I got moved. <laughs> one of those situations where it just uh, makes me know. think yeah, that will come on to door and how sad I am that Probably. he's no longer with us. <laughs> <laughs> 300,000 the bet from Barbero on the flop, a fold from Aishen, and on to the next hand. Barbero moving over the 80 big blind mark now. Uh, Joe, are you taking requests from our viewers on YouTube? Uh, I'll list, I'll hear it. Dry V says, stop the Nacho thing, cringe. No. Oh, no, certainly not that one. Yeah, we're not taking... No, that, that's not a note that we'll accept. Wait, 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 hold on, just so I'm clear. Just so I'm clear. 
Casi me he wants me to perdido. stop doing nacho. Sorry, Hubbard. I know. Y Barbara. <laughs> the timing on that is perfect. Bro, you ban. Get out of here. No, I'm not going to stop doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not like a like, biggest score by a while. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could tell you guys what really happened to El Camontador, but I can't. <laughs> DJ Caliv. Quick, quick, queen check. Queen, queen, queen check. So this is a virtual all in from Caliv. 550,000, leaving himself 70k behind. Gets a fold from the small blind. Dylan De Stefano in the big blind also folds. Seven minutes on the clock until the blinds go up. Still relatively shallow. 33 big blind average. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're all good, by the way. Yeah, there's not much room. When they stuck up, stuff us all in here. Yeah, that's what I The problem is like the, it's the way we are, which, but I'm yeah. not going to change it. But yeah, yeah, it, it should be the chips on the right. Mm -hmm. Everybody should yeah, 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 right. right? I always yeah. those chips on the left. No, no, I know, but in this, like, look. On this table. Open seat. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It makes, it, uh, it makes us more, be more space. Tom sitting there with about 39 bigs. I'm sure he's been loving all this action, guys. Loving to see others at risk for when there's uh, when there's a pay jump to come. The Zari is opened with Ace 10 suited. Aishan folds the button. 10 9 for Di Stefano. Round to Barbero in the big. King eight off. Great to see everyone still showing their solidarity with Steve O'Dwyer wearing those white wristbands. Some took it a step further and wore the white t-shirt too. <laughs> Jack, Jack, four, two diamonds. Pizzari, better than a nine-to-one favorite here. I think you can go either way here. Honestly, ace, ten of diamonds is so strong on this flop. I wouldn't mind mixing in some checking here. Betting, obviously, totally fine as well, though. Like, in situations where you don't always want to bet, be betting your flush draw, <laughs> right? If Because some of the time you don't want to be betting your flush draw, it can be cool to be checking in situations where the ace high is just going to get to shit on and be the best hand, too. Really, either way is fine. You can't make too many mistakes with this combination on this flop. King high does call. Kind of diamonds in the turn. That's the nut flush. Heck yeah. I love a, a good draw. Coming in. In diamonds. On the turn. Feed the drummer says, sorry, missed the headline. What are the wristbands and what's it to do with Steve O'Dwyer? Um, if you're watching our coverage of the PCA main event, you may have heard Steve <coughs> talking frequently about the problems he had getting here and the fact that an airline lost his luggage. The only item of clothing he had with him in the Bahamas was a white T-shirt. And the poker community, because Steve is so beloved, are showing their solidarity with for his lack of clothing by wearing white wristbands representing the only item of clothing he has with him, the white T-shirt. <laughs> Mine's going up imminently. I'm doing it. I'm wearing a white t-shirt and nothing else. I've got my white wristband on. Do it for Steve. Oh, sorry. Okay, Pizzotti keeping it tight there. Really appreciate the adjustment as we get to the later stages here. Ace-5 suited probably still could be a play there if you wanted to, but 
just keeping it on the tighter side given the nature of the pay jumps to come. I think probably from the cutoff you're being way too tight if you're folding ace five suited there though. So I think this is going to be a player. So 53 bigs to start the hand. Opening up to the minimum. 200,000 to go. Mr. Parsons, queen three suited. I think he probably will defend this one. Does make the call. Two of those white chips. Richie Robb in the background. A couple other team pro members. Some of our platinum pass winners as well is on the rail just now. No help for Tom on the flop here. Sourdough suited, gets it done again. Love that artisanal quality goodness. Dom6097 asks, how is Tom sponsored by two companies repping both PokerStars and Paddy Power, which are part of the <coughs> same corporate family and are the co-sponsors of the Irish Open, which will be taking place Easter this year. There is a chance Joe and I might be there. Oh, I'm so down. And there's even slimmer of a chance, but a chance that we'll be there and James will be playing the Irish Open. That's my goal. First goal, get him GPI Broadcaster of the Year, then get him to play the Irish Open. PR manager campaign manager, hype man, Joe Stapleton. Yeah, I mean... James know. has been in my corner for a long time, and it's now time to pay the piper. Seeing James Hardigan actually playing poker is like, it's like, is like capturing a snow leopard <laughs> in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> That's a solid analogy, Nick. He's, a, he's the ghost cat. And then once I get him into the Irish Open... My next goal, get him on the feature table. Little taste of his own medicine. Oh, hold on, what is this? Hold on. Seven, seven nine, ten, Jack. Is that something? How, do they, how does no one have a straight here? Pizarri has a pair of tens. Guess that's good. Pizarri does have a straight draw. And Pizarri is facing a bet from Tom Parsons of 250,000. Deuce on the turn. This is going to be the last hand of the level, by the way. Parsons. How big is this bluff going to be? Big enough, I think. Wow. So now it's up to Pizarri to make a hero call with just a pair of tens. Let's go, Brad. Yes, mate. 1.7 million into a pot of 800,000. Let's get that, Brad. Bro, absolute devastation on these tables. He can't call. He can't. I really... Yeah. Let's go. go. <laughs> what a play. Okay, so we are now into level 28 of the PSPC. Blinds are now 60,000, 120,000 with a 120k big blind ante. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. Nacho still leading at this table with 63 bigs. Aishan in second with 47. Pizarri, 36. Parsons.
just behind him. De Stefano, 24 bigs, and Pitar Kalev, DJ Kalev, just five big blinds. Still 18 players remain, guys. Average stack currently 3.38 million. Blinds are still 60K, 120K. Or I should, rather, I should say they've just gone up to 60K, 120K, of course, with the 120K ante. So stacks are looking thinner than they were just a moment ago. Bazzari makes it 250,000 with queen six off suit. Kalev, pocket six is in the big blind. This is the one, my babies. Yeah, no chance he's folding this. It's got to go in the middle every time. 725. 725 is more chips than he has? No, it's 760. Okay. Wait, what? Huh? Hmm? 625. And gets a fold. It looks like we're swinging around to the <laughs> secondary feature table. Table Grafton. Table Del Grosso. Table Awesome Us. Gonna hang out here for a minute. us with 1.1 million that is a similar stack to Caleb just a few big blinds my guess is we're here on awesome us death watch tomb on the button tends to take a second Makes the fold. Mendoza with ace do suited in the small blind. We know any amount of regression here at all is likely to get graft in the fold. I mean, you can't give him a ridiculously good price, but. Right, exactly. Standard three bet would get the job done here. Yeah, I think you can go either way here. I think calling a three betting is totally fine. A lot of these suited ace combos. Okay. I mean, it's under. I, I think it's understandable. Sorry, guys. Excuse me. He was in the small blind. Um, I think three betting was how you were going to play it. I think probably flatting there from the small blind, not advisable. Uh, to to take not it back. Yeah. Yeah. Thought he was in the big blind. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you see it's it? like I feel like something's going to happen. Is, is, <laughs> well, something is going to happen. The deck set against me. Like going to bust. Something now. is going to happen, man. <laughs> Something is going to happen well, eventually. You've got cars this, that cost this level of buying, you know? You've got spare cars in the driveway, park, and no one's driven them for months. <laughs> Not true. Super, do, do you, super car, I was going to say, cool. Do you see it or do you feel it? <laughs> like, do you feel its <laughs> actual <laughs> shaking or do you feel the oh, aura of the shaking, excitement? Yeah, yeah. But it's quite sweet because every hand you play, you don't shake. But then I'm playing a hand, and you're like super worried, you know. 
That's very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Paul. <clears throat> Crafton with a legit hand here. Ace Jack. Nine deuce for Tomb. Del Grosso in the small with ace four. Also a not very good stack for <clears throat> Del Grosso. Yeah, facing Sam's open from UTG plus one. I think it's a pretty easy fold. Big blind got a lot of garbage, 10-5 off. Not great. Fold for Radia I in called. the big blind. No, I, w I wouldn't have been excited. <laughs> You're winning. Yeah, I mean, I know you don't fall day speed, so I can I know you fancy this deck. You feel like, oh, I got a little bit of a what's going to happen, you know? <clears throat> True. Everybody just hanging around, waiting for these short stacks. Kalev and Ausmus. Back to the main stage. like the big blinds coming around to Kalev in the next hand. Nope, two hands. Pizarri first. <coughs> Takes a peek at his cards, lets us have a peek, passes them. Kalev, pocket fives. Time to grip it and rip it. Presto Changeo. Eight big blinds has some fold equity. Big blinds on an auto call. Sure. Absolutely. One million. Uh, makes it one million, leaving himself 60K behind. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot more of this from him until he starts Dublin. The effective all in, of course. And that was not a call from Parsons. That was him throwing his big blind into the middle. So I guess the rail's developing for Pred. Is that why we've got a lot of recognizable faces out there? Yep. GJ Reggie. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I mean. You know, Tom has been part of the community, the Twitch community in particular, for pretty much as long as I have, Joe. Um, when I started streaming for Poker Stars back in 2019, um, he was just kicking off his sort of streaming endeavors as well. That's actually the reason why we met in Dublin, uh, <coughs> where I bought him into his first poker tournament, because I was there with Stars, taking Toka, a.k.a. Aries Fatura in the chat. I think he's probably listening right now to his first live poker turka, tournament turka, turka. in preparation for his 25K in 2019, where I was his plus one. <coughs> so he's been around for ages. Actually spent a lot of time with him in the last couple of months leading up to um, the Bahamas this year as well, because we were in Ireland together for the Irish Poker Tour in Killarney. 
And then also we met at a meetup game in Dublin in anticipation of this year's festivities. Well, I don't like that everyone knows this dude, and I don't. I feel pretty left out, and I'm, I'm irritated, honestly. I'm sure he'd love to meet you, Joe. Diez, Diez. Oh, my days. Nacho. He's always got the combos. E. Barbaro. So he three bet nines earlier. I think he might lean towards three betting tens as well. Seems to prefer three betting these sort of middling pairs at this stage in the tournament, which I approve of. There's just so much money to be won pre-flop. Huh? So much. And with the average stack decreasing, those pickups become ever, ever more important. I mean, it's easy when you got the hands. Lime Ricky in the chat. Shout out, first of all, to the one and only. <coughs> Toka's follower alert in his stream is you commenting commentating on his play at the first PSPC. That's true. Good shout. And number 104, guys. Starts with a fold. Stefano out. <laughs> and once again, <laughs> pocket hacks. As El Camontador used to say, rest in peace. Did not make it through 2020, unfortunately. All right, wakes up with another one. What a time to go on a hot streak, Joe. He actually died while hacking quite a bit. Just the water. Hack, hack for Nacho. Caliv does decide defend it to defend the big blind with the trade deuce suited. Ibarbaro. I mean, he's not very deep, you guys. But uh oh. There is a commotion. Something's got Jeremy Ausmus's attention. Looks like there was a double up here. At the <laughs> table, secondary feature table double up. And it looks like that's what was causing the commotion. Nadia Magnus Busto out in 18th place. Man, Nadia is a strong contender for who loves it more. Said she was going to take some time off from poker this year, not play as full of a schedule, but how do you miss this? If you're going to play anything, you're playing the PSPC. So we're down to 17. All players now guaranteed $165,000. I look younger when I got a haircut. I haven't had a haircut. I've been here for two weeks trapped. Imagine coming 17th and you still get 165 G's, Joe. That's a lot of dollars. And of course, Nadia and I have a really long history. Nadia was one of the first contestants on the big game. Oh, wow. I mean, maybe not the first contestants, but uh, was a contestant. I think it was on season two of the big game. So I've known Nadia a very, very long time. I still remember where she's from because I heard it so much in those recordings. Nadia Magnus from Palatine, Illinois. Jeremy Ausmus, or Jeremy Awesomus, as I've begun calling him, all in with Queen Seven suited. Around eight big blinds. Grafton with King Jack suited. How much you have? 8.15 8, or 8.5? Um, 2.3K, 2.3 million. 
Sam reshoves from the button. Definitely does not want to get a call after doing this. Both blinds fold. Wow, Mendoza folded ace 10. Obviously, that action you probably can't get involved, but still interesting to see a better hand out there. Sure. Get your squids in the chat, guys. Team Squid all the way. Best of luck to the Grafton himself. Once more, I'm not really Again? Alcimus tends to run pretty good. No, if, you made a flush, um, if you make a flush. In these spots. You're asking if you want to go. Ten, eight, six, one heart, king high, out in front. Al Smith picks up outs, though. And the seven is always coming. I don't want to doink him by saying it, but man, does this guy run good wow. in all ins. It's always coming seven. Double up for Awesomeus. <laughs> Unlucky Sam. Very good at all ends. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they stack up at the secondary feature table. Grafton still leading despite doubling up Jeremy Osmus. <sighs> Sammy Brenz on YouTube asks, buy-in? Yes, there was a buy-in. Thank you for your question. That's how we make the prize pool. For four, you're right. For 418 players, there was no buy-in. True. But I mean, Poker Stars bought them in because the money's still in the prize pool. True. They're free rolling, but that money's still in there. Anyway, yes is the answer to your question. Oh, that hurt. I felt that one, Sam. But uh, still a playable stack. Sam, Sam is still around the 20 big blind mark, so doing better than some in this tournament still, even after taking a beat. Alan Musavi says, a punt out shoot crap at the wall. Um, no? Thank you for your question, comment? I'm not sure. Statement. You're the man, I need a little. Thank you for your words. Thank you for your oh nonsense. Boy. Oh boy. So Doom here with the opportunity to do something, decides just to leave it alone. I approve of that. Definitely don't want to mess around at this stage in the tournament with a hand that's outside range, given that stack. Mendoza in the small, facing no action. What's up? That's 45 minutes. Doug Rosso has also got something, what, like 11 big blinds? Do you just shove on the 11 big blinds here? Is this too, is your stack too small? Uh, I think you still do it. Just a raise. Wow, interesting. And this is an interesting size. You're really starting to commit too much here, in my opinion. I mean, as an ICM adjustment, maybe you can still, like, raise to three and then still consider a fold, because yeah. your opponent's going to be really wicked strong once you've done that. So actually it might be a cool opportunity to use an alternate sizing there. I think more conventionally it would be closer just to just, like, a 2X, maybe slightly over 2X, given how short the big blind was there. I mean, if you open queen nine to three X, your big, your big blind's not going to go be going crazy there. But then they could also shove hands like fives and sixes and sevens, and you're probably still supposed to call once you put in three. So I, honestly, I'm not sure. Um, it can 100% be a push, though, and it, the push will be profitable. So I think maybe I default to that, and I don't give myself the tough decision of whether or not I should be calling because he'll still have those pocket pairs where I'm still flipping. We have time, 45 minutes. How long do we have for dinner? 45. No way. 45 yeah. minutes? What? That's what the, it says next break, 45 minutes. Can't be right. You would yeah. think it wouldn't be right, but it that's is. what it says. 
That is right. What time is it? Seven or something? Gooby says, damn, the dealers are machines. That's right. Best dealers in the world at our events. Most of these dealers are regulars on the European Poker Tour. Regulars at the Hippodrome, Dust Till Dawn. Some of the best card rooms in Europe. Grafton raising, Jack eight suited. Radia has to fold queen seven. The grad's asking, so the dealers travel with the tournament? Absolutely. Best dealers in the world. I mean, they go in, they go home in between. <laughs> we pack them up on the shipping. It's not like a circus, right. We put them in a shipping container, ship them across the ocean. Box of Ritz, Ritz crackers, bottle of vodka. Bundle them in there. See you guys in a few months. I just best dealers in the world. Yes, they do. Uh, they do look after us on the tour. A lot of people uh, always ask how much the dealers make. Honestly, I don't know. And if I did, I probably wouldn't say. Let's ask ask a dealer. I would say it's up to them to tell you. Thum now, queen eight suited. 2.28 million here. I think keeping it tight is totally fine. Queen eight suited, playable there for sure. But I think with that chip sack, you just kind of play it cool. Still a lot, plenty of opportunities to ladder, but you know, such a thing as risk premium, you know? You want to, uh, there are certain scenarios where you want to be a little bit on the tighter side, not take too many risks. And I think this is one of those moments this close to um, some serious pay jumps. So gross, so jamming from the button. Queen seven suited. Oh boy. Del Grosso getting looked up for sure. Will be behind and is covered. Yep. <laughs> he is all in. Ace King is going to try and isolate. Big blind quick fold. And that's a folded queen. Joe, queen seven of diamonds still feels very live to me. The live cards have fared quite well, I want to say, over the last couple of levels. <laughs> So Ace King out in front, but uh, still 29% of the time we're going to see the Queen Seven of Diamonds win this pot. Verdia, the big favorite. Queen High Flop. Wow. King of Clubs does give him a little bit more equity, though, Joe. Blockers aren't real. Rodia now behind. Flush draws are, though. Turn card is a nine. There goes the flush draw. If you haven't used your one time, this is this is a good moment. Del Grosso needs a fade, an ace or a king, and does double up Del Grosso. No justice. Live cards win again. Ah, uh, you hate to see it, but uh, nice run there for the Queen Seven suited. Trip Hop says the computer hand is unbeatable. <laughs> queen Seven is the computer hand. It's the hand used by the computer. I'm gonna talk like a computer. I'm a computer. Binary solo. Zero zero one zero 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 one. Rodia now the shortest stack at the table. Yeah, despite the fact that Sam took a hit here, 2.79 million, he is still our second feature table chip leader. And we're headed back to the main stage. Sometimes when this happens, there's cards on their backs and an all in triangle out there. Uh, there are some chips in play, but it looks like just the blinds for now. Yeah. 
Jack seven off for Nacho. Yeah, guys, I mean, this is about the weakest hand we've seen. Barbero. I call. E Barbero. E Barbero. This is about the weakest one we've seen him get oh, dealt, but he's still going to play it strong, <laughs> and I respect that. Jack seven off, definitely really wide, but obviously using that big stack to his advantage. 8.75 million. He's looking really good to go deep in this tournament so far and does flop best. That Jack, way good for now. Bizarre with a gut shot can also catch the king. <coughs> Deuce of spades on the turn gives Barbaro the only flush draw as well. Yeah, I think on the turn, there's still an opportunity to go for some value here. You can still get value from some spades. You can get value from some 10x, maybe even some deuce x once in a while, depending on their interpretation of your play thus far. Some king x. Yeah, does get some action from the from the gutter ball. River card is a jack. That's trips for Barbaro. So even though he started with a medium holding and a less than stellar holding, just makes trips. Yeah, I mean, he didn't start with a strong one, but he finished with a strong one, and that's uh, that's how you do it. Oh, hello. Oh, and Pizarri attempting to lead here. It's a blocker bet, though. Yeah, he's just trying to slow down the action. Doesn't want to get punished on this river. Thinks he might be ahead of some of the spades that missed. Never getting a fold. Maybe we'll accomplish the task of having a cheaper river bet than Barbara would have put him to. I, I'm just interested to see if we actually see a value raise on this river given the spade. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Maybe yeah. we'll yeah. get away yeah. with this. <laughs> like, is your opponent really going to take this line if they have uh, if they have a made flush? Like, if they have like eight nine of spades here? Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Barbara calls. Pizarri says, "You're good." And that's another big pot for Nacho E. Barbaro. Yeah, absolutely. The Dylan says, he's clearly bluffing, not betting for value. Yeah, I know. I meant the raise, the potential for the trip jacks to raise going for value, not the King X. Come on, the Dylan. Come take, on, bro. Take it easy. Come on, bro. Everyone's so quick to try to point out someone else's mistakes. Let's just hang out. Let's just have a good time. Cards on their backs here. There was this guy streaming seven all the time. Need him now. Uh oh, is Flushy it in? It is Tomb on. versus Rodia. Rodia at risk, but ahead. Significant chance of a chop. King, six, deuce. Six and the deuce aren't going to help the chop opportunities. Right. If you're not going to hit the seven, you want the chop opportunities, don't you, Joe? You sure do. A 10 oh. on the turn, and it's a club. <laughs> That's a great card. Ten outs now for Tomb. Chop outs Six. still live. Come on, buddy. River card oh! is an eight, but it's a club. Let's go, Flushy. Flushy flushes. LFG. Suck out City. Knocking out Rodia. Oh, my days. I am over the moon for Flushy. Love to see my bros going deep here. Flush. Flush. Oh, my God. Oh, did Rodia oh, not we didn't see, see it? GG's. Yeah, four, four clubs. Four clubs. Four clubs. I got to tell you, I completely understand that. Out in 17th place for 165.6. I mean, yeah. it must be so difficult to yeah. process yeah. any sort of information at this stage if you have not played here. Absolutely, you've been playing for days, but all of the, uh, it's a super stressful moment, right, Joe? You you kind of go blind, don't you? Anyway, that means that we're at a redraw, and we're gonna take the dinner break early. Yes, forty-five minute dinner break. We're not leaving right this second, but that's what you can expect during the break. We'll replay key hands from today, and there were a lot of them. Sixteen players. The final two tables. Still a pretty low average stack. We're still playing a 
38 big blind. Sorry, less than that, because the blinds are 61.20 when we get back. So it's kind of like a 32 or 33 big blind average, yeah, I think. Yeah, but then, I guess I'm not maybe the only one, so it doesn't matter, but whatever you think, that's what you think. That's oh, yeah, that's true. And when we get back, we're, our goal is to play down to six. So oh, that's cool. yeah, yeah. no hard number of levels today. That's why we're taking the dinner break now. Just outside. What do you want to do? Just about 7 o'clock at night when this happened. 7.30 at night local time now. And you can see preparations being made for the redraw. That means we're going to have a feature table and secondary feature table, and that's it. No more field. No more outer table action. We're going to catch everything. There will be another redraw at nine, but yeah, dinner break now. Nacho Barbero crushing his table. Pitar Kalev still short. Dylan Stefano also short. We're taking a 45 minute dinner break. Key hands from the day's action. More from the PSPC when we return. Shamas. Okay, so this is incredibly interesting. We were talking about their last clash, right? Mm -hmm. Joe, with the cutoff and the button, these exact positions. And I was talking about how I think Chamas is trying to represent aces or kings because he would flat with those hands in this situation. And the very next rotation gets that opportunity. And uh, this, is, this is such a cool dynamic between these two players. And Lopez has flopped a gut shot. Now, do you think Lopez thinks that Barriuzzi is going to be flatting aces there? Uh, I think that he, he probably... The previous hand I think or that this yeah, hand. I think that he's going to be aware that Chamas is going to have a stronger range. A bit more short stock Chamas is now as well. Um, so I think it's going to be a stronger range, and it's going to be all over this board texture, right? It's whether it is, the, you know, I think maybe 9, 10 suiteds and stuff probably get folded at this stack depth. But, you know, all the king jack suited, the queen jack suited, um, you know, I think ace jack would, would shove preflop and, and maybe some of those, you know, king queens and stuff would have been maybe shoved preflop. You still got to play it as a check call because you have this gutter and it, of course because of the sizing. But I think Lopez Turn is going to play Lady Luck. Another Lady Luck. Lady Luck straightenizing card on the turn. Lopez with a lock on it. Aces drawing deed. And Lopez has more than twice the chips. Very astute check back. Going to ensure <clears throat> that he doesn't bust in this hand. You know, only 380 out there, 570 back. And now Lopez is in a bit of a strange What good are spot. aces if you can't fast play them on every street? Yeah. You got to play him cautious. It's just one pair, right, Griffin? Because Lopez is going to anticipate that, you know, if, if Chalmers, Chalmers is going to have, yeah, it goes pretty chunky with that check back, is going to expect Chalmers to, you know, have some have some queens sometimes something like king queen i mean if you're checking back aces here you're going to check back some king queens as well those single pair hands that don't want to go broke on this turn because lopez can have hands like this hands like queen jack hands like queen nine suited by the way we did lose a player during this hand christian dressler yeah too high up in your range with the aces ace of hearts as well and Barry Uzi getting buried in the first level of the day today. Ran Shamas down to eight big blinds. I see a triangle. Fedor. Oh, wow. Time bank wow. chips in front wow. of him. Of course. Wow. But he, hasn't, is... he hasn't called yet, though. He's in oh. the tank. 
my I mean, gosh. this is, I don't know what the action was, but Jack's in these multi-way all-in situations. Yeah. It's really tough. You can uh, definitely I don't know if he's doing it for you. find folds here, I mean, but I um, mean. Trans million I chips is a lot of chips for this stage of the tournament, right? Yeah, now. I wow, think so Fedor's, like concerned about, Fedor's concerned about the strength of this overcall from the small blind. And if you feel like you're behind this, and you think Tran shoving, what, over, like, 27 big blinds? Is well, it looks so like often Tran Ace opened King. under the gun, plus one, and Fedor three bet in the cutoff, and Violo put it in in the small blind, and then Tran has re-isoed all in for I his don't, 22 bigs. I don't think so. I think this is may maybe... No, that's definitely what happened. Maybe a flat from holes, or no? No, because he's put out 225k. He Why would Tran put in the nines? Very surprising. And that, yeah, you're right. That, and that has what that is what has strengthened both of their ranges so much, is the fact that Holtz played this is a three bet. Like I am getting this in no matter what, and then they I think both he's, went with it. I don't think he's very concerned about the small blind put in because that's going to have pocket nines and ace king and ace queen in it still. So I don't really think he's concerned about that at all. But he's definitely concerned that perceivably Tran probably doesn't have nines in Fedor's eyes here. I would I would guess, if I had to guess, uh, oh, maybe nines is, is you know, I, I guess that's what he's trying to figure out. Does, does Tran have nines and tens here? Because if he knows Tran has holding. nines and tens, then of course he puts it in. Fedor has burned through three time bank it looks like, already. Looks like he has none left there. I don't see any more. Yeah, three on this hand, I should say. Looks like he's got five seconds left to make this decision. Kind of looks like James Franco to me for some reason. He said fold. Fedor wow. Folds is not going to love what he sees oh, immediately no. here. Tens and oh, nines. Oh, no, he's not pleased. Oh, well. Tens ahead, right, but Violo is the shorter better, stacked though. player, and he is shocked to be ahead in this situation. Wow, what a fold. Fedor is not the only one that was expecting stronger here. I don't know. Tran's been running pretty well in all ins thus far, but has got some work to do on this queen high flop. He's got the backdoor straights here. He can hit the seven or the eight. I love the way you think, Tom. It's a bigger fold than ace king off. Sorry, it wasn't queen high. It was six six five. Thank you. Turn card is a jack. <laughs> Fedor would have spiked the go, boat. Come on, camera. Go to Fedor. On the yeah, Dude, come on. Show us Fedor. Show us Fedor. Come on. River card is a king. Show us Fedor. Show us Fedor. So Violo oh, is going to double up. Yeah, really rough spot there for Fedor, for sure. I, uh, I Personally, in, 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 in game there, I would think that We've immediately got another all-in hand at the oh, main go. feature table. Sorry to cut you off, Tonka. No this, is, this was bound to happen today. You know, I really thought that Fedor Holtz of all people would have sold, <laughs> solved pocket jacks. But there's just no right way to play them. See, the thing is about Fedor there is I feel like he solved how to play all-ins years ago yes you know so like yeah, i don't so really trust know how, why trust your run good what, it just seems what, so why are you deviating because yeah. you lost that ace three ace king yesterday you, everything's changed it just seems so and strange you're just gonna blind out of this thing so strange to, used to be our hero win. the player at risk <laughs> takes the lead here with a pair of queens del pino short stacked it looks like oh no sorry they're going to, be going to be short stacked after yeah. this run out unless a nine hits on the river this board is actually reminding me of it. I gotta tell you guys about a hand. River is not a nine. These flips deep in these main events are so brutal, man. Nine? And Del Pino is gonna be left with 190K, which is four big blinds. Just hold off on the story, Griffin, until we no see problem. if we can not have an all in for a second. Yes. <laughs> we might have a second to breathe here. Three and a half minutes left on the level, but we're going to play straight through to the next one. All right, Griffin, go ahead. Uh, Matt Berkey raises under the gun, playing uh, 22 bigs, probably maybe 18 to 22 bigs to 12K, 3-6. Folded to the button. Uh, Joe Epp, do you know him? You. Yep. Yup, yup. Okay, you fan of Bygard. You'd, you'd, you'd recognize him from one of the most famous folds of all time against Never Scared Me, where he folded mid set on Ace Nine Deuce or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Was he right? 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Never scared me at aces. Wow. It's a really famous hand. What like a genius. Yeah. No, you old, gotta you gotta watch old, his hand. Old, like clip. 15 years ago. Wow. Shit. Incredible. Yeah. Anyways, Yope uh, makes it thirty thousand. So uh -huh. like a pretty small three bet. Comes back to Berkey calls. Uh, Ace Queen Jack all spades. Berkey front shoves for like two like two x pot whatever it was like very good yeah okay. almost two x pot and gets snapped by ace king king spade king of spades and he front shoved queen jack for bottom two pair okay turns a queen okay and rivers and ace why am i telling no this ten story? of spades <laughs> ten of spades nice a royal it was it was awesome to see doesn't just happen on poker stars it also happens live so you can confirm with berkey Got there you go. Busted by a royal. Looks like prayer will go for the deuces raise. Assuming he is the chip leader of the table, right? Or someone has more chips, maybe? Prayer second in chips. Blake Bone okay. is the chip leader for now. Prayer with 50 bigs to start the hand. Makes it 80,000. Ace Webb says, boring poker stories. I roll, lost me. Guess what? You've also lost your chat. You're banned. Thank you for your comment. Shamas folds in a row. Not a hand I think we'll be seeing any action here. There it goes. Talal. Oh man, I hope we see. Yes, BB in the BB. Blake Bone, Jack 10. The two biggest stacks at the table. Let's go. What are you hoping for, like a Jack 10 do swap and see something happen, or uh, what? All I know is that Blake Bone cannot be predicted. Okay. He, he plays by his own. Uh... He's, he's a blaster. Okay. My favorite kind of player. Jack all right. nine five two clubs top pair for Bone. Could see a continuation bet or a check from Pereira, I guess. Lots of straight draws on a Jack 9 5 board. So, not super appealing to funnel money into the pot with an under pair. Lots of straight draws. Jack 9 5. King, Queen, 10, 8, 7, 6. Oh, wow, sure. That's a lot. That is a lot of straight draws. And then everything else that doesn't have a straight draw has managed to slip into a pair, so. One of those boards where when we do go for the continuation bet, we do like to size up and bet a little bit bigger to charge some of those weaker draws as we see Pereira doing right now. But we're not exactly targeting the top pair very often on the flop here. Seven on the turn. And that connects quite a bit with all those hands that Parker just mentioned moments ago. It does indeed, yeah. So. Probably gonna see Pereira slow down here. Usually when you do go for the double barrel here with um, a hand like deuces, which is relatively common for sure, um, and could be used here, you likely wanna have the deuce of clubs though. Because if you do river your set with the deuce, which is obviously gonna prove you to the best hand the vast majority of the time, it's a bit problematic if it's on the deuce of clubs. It's tough to, tough to really extract value and go for it. But I mean, always happy to fire in that shell and see what happens. Doubt it's gonna work against a hand like Jack-10 though. Yeah, turn Top the pair with the well. gutter. Yeah, it's gonna be really tough to get it through. A few more bluffing opportunities with deuces with the club as well. Um, when the club rolls off. I like the heart though, for sure. I mean, Bone is not flinching at all. Like, I like, I like his table presence. And just like that, we've got a big pot after a big bet flop, big bet turn. This is what I was telling oh, you about. It's a juice. deuce of clubs on and the there river. And, there, and, and this will prove your theory about, I mean, so you know. still going to be able to go for value, for surely, sure, but it's but, probably not going to be able to be all in. Whereas but Pereira's if, worried about, you know, ace eight of clubs, ace six of clubs, ace seven of clubs, you know, the king ten of clubs. All of these combos have now, you know, you'd hate to value yourself by, you know, betting and, and, and losing. 
but you kind of have to, of course, because you're up against all those Jack X type hands as well. It's a very awkward, uh, it's not, it, it feels more awkward than I think it should be. Wow, and he checks it back. Yeah. See, this is kind of exactly what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's per, yeah. In terms of barreling the deuces, it's pretty funny that it actually came to fruition. Like, you need That's to be barreling the bone. deuces on the club there because you you can value the river. <laughs> <laughs> Bad to the bone. Comes Tony Tran with Ace Jack on the button. Going for the raise. Not, no immediate fold here. Oh. Esteban Maculon with the snowmen's. This nom, is an nom. interesting spot here. Very interesting, in my opinion. I mean, he's got about two million chips, right? So he's 40 big blinds effective with the big blind. Feels kind of just dangerous, reckless, kind of wild just to go all in. It does. Kind of feels like a little bit dicey to like three bet call, 20 big blinds with eights, although I definitely would not fault the man and might yeah. do it myself, but maybe you just throw a call in there, you know? Really? Yeah, I think I'd probably just be continuing with the call. I mean, it's pretty rough to just, at this point in the tournament, 30 players left to three bet, get it in with pocket mm -hmm. eights here, you know? It's not like your opponent's going to be pumping it in with pocket fives every single time. Right. So, right. like, maybe they get it in with, like, sevens and then, you know, all better pairs and you're flipping. Maybe six. So is the rationale that the three bet will get the same folds from the button that the all in will? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we can just three bet and then fold to the big blind when we when we get unfortunately put in against it, you know? Okay. Wait. Seems like Yeah, it's just kinda of, this is like all these went all in. So uh, the three bet got shoved on. And eight's call. So we're flipping here. Didn't happen exactly the way it would happen all the time, but like EPT Paris versus EPT <laughs> Cyprus. Here we go. One of these two hands has a slight mathematical advantage. And apparently the way those chips got shoved in was a little sloppy, we'll call it. We're gonna reconstruct those stacks before we deal it out, I guess. That would be so funny. You just think you're being cool and you push it all and they're like, oh, all right, well, it's like now 10 we gotta, minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Stack them all up before we can deal this hand, which I've never seen before, but sure, why not? It's like uh, it's smashing a champagne glass, and everyone's like, well, what are you doing? And then we gotta clean that up. All right, I think we're almost about ready to deal these cards. There we go. Wow. Jack, eight, nine. So a couple of hearts, couple of hearts. Yeah, a set of eight for Maculon. Two hearts for Tran. He's looking for an ace, jack, nine, heart, or ten, I guess. Mm -hmm. Turn is a Lap. king. The king of diamonds uh, is dead. No outs for Tran. So it probably wouldn't have mattered what happened there. If he would have flatted right. in the small blind with the eights, probably would have gone for the check raise and they get it all in on the flop there, you know, but. And that's going to be the end of Tony Tran. Another one bites the dust. Twenty-nine players remain. Twenty-eight and twenty-nine both make ninety-three thousand five hundred. But there's a not a huge pay jump coming up after that, but a significant one mentally because if you make it to twenty-seventh, that's when we hit six figures, my babies. I Chen, Queen Ten off. Min Reyes, Parsons, King, Queen on the button.
An ace queen for Menzel. Oh, wow. What a string of hands for Menzel. Jeepers. Is that the wickedly talented Adela Dezim? It is the wickedly talented Adela Dezim who's had a huge level. Doesn't go for the squeeze, though. Ooh. A little surprising. Seems like such a good spot with a late position open and a flatter. Queen, Jack, nine. My goodness. Wow. <laughs> Just hits everyone. Action, Jackson, flop. My goodness. Sometimes these action flops don't have as much action as you would expect, even though they smash everyone. Two players have checked so far. Checked around and really nice brick on the turn I'm expecting to see. Know, a hand like top top try to find some protection and now the betting starts 235 into 480 Okay, Maria, come on, talk to me here. I mean, Aishan <laughs> just wants to be able to realize the straight equity, right? So right. calling is the best way to do that. Certainly, you're not trying to raise and either get blown off the draw or have to somehow call more to see the river. You're hoping that maybe your top pair could be good at showdown, but of course, it would feel a lot more comfortable if you made your straight, especially now that Parsons is coming in with the overcall. Well, this is getting spicy. Three players still going to the river, which is the ace of hearts. Nearly 1.2 million in the middle, and it's top two on the river for Menzel. Yeah, Menzel just can do no wrong so far. And the deck really cooperating there, fading a lot of outs, even though Aishen and Parsons were sharing some outs. I love that expression. I don't think I've ever heard it before. The deck cooperating. Cooperating, yeah. We sat down, we had a conference, and the deck has agreed to cooperate. <laughs> Barry Greenstein will make an appearance in your hand as Menzel goes for value on the river. 160,000 enticing enough to potentially get a call from one or both of a shen and parsons super milky not to <laughs> mention the fact that menzel betting into two players here so when he led the turn he got called in two spots so this just never feels like a hand that queen 10 can beat or king queen can beat even though the price is so nice Time bank card being played by Aishen. A reminder that the shot clock was brought into play at the start of day four. 30 seconds per decision unless you use a time bank card to extend your thinking time. By the way, this hand has everything. Cooperative decks and milky bets. I've got nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? Lovely. The only thing milky, that, milky. <laughs> the only thing that Aishen could be thinking about is perhaps turning his hand into a bluff. Granted, he does have the 10... That's a key card, but oop, <laughs> gets away. Good fold, but does Tom Parsons pay this off? Aishan seemed really frustrated by having to fold there, and uh, Parsons not going to be the sucker. Feels like Jack Nine. Andre Bogian folding the cutoff, which means Chris Mormon on the button 
will decide what to do with King Queen, and he's obviously looking at how many chips Sam Grafton has in the bag. Yeah, it's not going to get much better for Mormon than King Queen on the button off of 17 big blinds, and Sam Grafton in the big as well, shorter than Chris's stack. So Mormon moves all in. And Sam is going to call all in with kings. Wow. What a hand to pick up in the big blind as Mormon shoves on him. And this is an awesome spot for Sam Grafton to double up. And it is going to leave Chris Mormon with two big blinds. Virtues against me, I think. Sam, a nine to one favorite as we go to the flop, which is 10, eight, seven. Take a nine. Take a six. No, a nine's good. Uh, take a chop. A nine. <laughs> <laughs> Against Chris Mormon, Grafton will settle for a chop. Ace on the turn, giving Mormon a gut shot straight draw. Sam Grafton is going to have to fade a jack on the river to survive. He does. Kings hold. Grafton back in the game. Now playing more than 30 bigs. Chris Mormon down to two big blinds. We don't, we don't clap again. Uh, you know, fell out. No, no celebrations. It's like when you uh, play your old football team, you know, no celebration. You just keep your hands down yeah. and acknowledge the crowd. Okay. Battle of the blinds here. Both players with very healthy stacks. Number one and two at the table. Pretty suited Broadway combination for Parsons in the small. <laughs> Menzel sharing suits. Ace, king, six on the flop. And we've got the seven of hearts on the turn. Yeah, it's really big draw for Parsons now with the flush draw and the straight draw. 92% equity against Menzel's hand. I almost missed, Maria, that we have just ticked down to 27. Tommy Wynn out in 28th place. The Canadian cashing for 93 and a half K. So Tommy Wynn is out. We are at 27 right now. And it looks like Menzel is going to bet this turn. Yeah, Menzel went for a min bet and immediately gets check raised by Parsons, combo draw. Menzel obviously doesn't know that they have an inferior flush draw, but I think feeling like they have decent equity will continue. Brick on the river, thankfully for Menzel. A brick in the sense that he would have had the worst flush had the heart come in. But now <coughs> as played, it'll be interesting to see if Parsons wants to bluff considering they showed up at the river with queen high, not knowing again that it is still the best hand actually. Love him with the best hand, Tom. Um, Together we hold him, Tom, yeah. <laughs> Menzel continuing to have a lot of playable hands. Was not too long ago that they were all in for their tournament life for about 1.8 million chips. And now up to four and a half million.
for Deuce Deuce on the flop. That's right, Fresh Legs. We're all citizens of the world. Je sans frontier. That's what we've got here in the Bahamas. Aishan coming with a continuation bet. I can see the allure of having two overs to this board and less than two bigs to call, so why not come along? Checked again on the turn to Aishen. When Menzel calls out of the small blind, though, certainly you have to put some other pairs in their range that are better than four. So you see the check back. And Menzel ends up rivering the king with the free card. But you really can't blame Aishen for checking back that turn again. Menzel could easily have a lot of fives, sixes, sevens, eights, etc. And those would not have likely folded to a second barrel, so better to try to get to showdown as Aishen with the fours and deuces. But now I would imagine Menzel's going to find some value. I think Aishan's a little bit curious because, again, some of those hands that I did mention, fives through nines, would not likely bet this river card. So you're kind of giving Menzel a lot of credit if you just fold that they've rivered a king somehow, and that's why you see Aishan make the call on the river. Osmus has opened with ace five of hearts. And Osmus has been in poker for quite a long while and was primarily for a while a cash game player, you know, has kids, has a family, liked, I think, the stability and the routine of a cash game lifestyle. But lately, just been on a tournament tear in the last two years, really putting up some incredible results to add to an already, already impressive resume. Two calls, and that means three players going to the flop. And that flop is ace four three. So Osmus with top pair and a wheel draw. Mendoza with a pair of fours. And Joris could have. Well, we don't know what Joris has. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a little unlikely that he has ace-queen. Um, I would imagine that off of that stack, he would have elected to perhaps shove 20 bigs pre with ace-queen. And same with queens, of course. I'm more leaning towards, you know, some other suited Broadway-type combinations. I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility that he will flat with ace-queen, of course. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, I, I just, I don't think off of that stack. But it looks like he's going to get out of the way and back to Mendoza, who does have backdoor hearts that we can see would not be good. Well, Mendoza is going to call one straight and reassess on the turn. The turn card is 
the eight of spades, and that is going to give Mendoza two pair. It gives him the advantage. Dirty, dirty. Trying to go for the check raise. Osmus with a weak kicker. Could be interested in exercising some pot control here. Looks like he's gonna go for a smallish bet around a third <laughs> pot with that additional wheel equity. Yes, you did in fact turn to pair Mendoza. Got very lucky. Now with 1.13 million back facing this 300K bet. Yeah, feels like a really good check shove <laughs> sizing. And Mendoza certainly can have quite a few two pair combos defending from the big blind. You know, you would assume that they're gonna defend ace three, ace four suited and a lot of off suit as well. Perhaps four three suited is gonna defend the big blind. You know, we see eight four suited defend the big blind. So it's a pretty tough spot for Osmus. Mendoza could also have sets, you know, you could see threes and fours and even eights just defending. That's a call. Mendoza gets it in good, but will have a lot of cards to fade. Aces, fives, trays, deuces, working for Jeremy Osmus. If any of those cards hit the river, we are gonna be down to 23. Yeah, still pretty vulnerable up against Osmus's exact hand. Osmus having 31% equity. King on the river, and Mendoza holds. Eights and fours are good, he doubles up. So that's gonna leave Jeremy Osmus with 665K. That's what, around seven big blinds? Oh, for the next three minutes, yes. forgot to mention. <laughs> blinds are going up in three minutes. One who was, says James, the Pokestars VR MPT stop three starts today. Wish us good luck on winning a bracelet. Good, good luck. luck us on winning a bracelet. Mm. Assuming it's a virtual bracelet. <clears throat> Hugo Rodila with ace 10 under the gun. Folds. Jeremy Osmus folds 10-3. Sam Grafton is out. Looks like it's round to Juris Roos. No. Toom. Nicholas Toom. Flushy. Now it's on Juris. And now it's on Philippe Pizzari. I've only seen one of the Brazilian's cards. He's got the six of diamonds. He's raised the button. Blake Bones in the big blind. He's all in with ace jack. Pizarri wants a count. Yeah, Bone finds a nice hand to shove with. And we can't see Pizarri's other card, but I assume he's not posturing. Yeah. Looks like he had a decision and he went with it. I'm it's, guessing it's we're bad. racing here. Assume that Pizarri has sixes. <clears throat> Gotta live and die by these flips late in tournaments. Suffice to say, this is a hand that Blake Bone needs to win. He's the at-risk player here.
King, Queen, eight. Additional outs now for Blake Bone. Still a fair fight. Looking for a 10, an ace, ten outs, right? a jack. Just 10 outs, right? Uh, we've seen folded cards. It's actually seven outs. Ooh, now more. <clears throat> Count of it outs now. Aces, queens, jacks, tens, eights. Fair the board. Nick, knack, paddy, whack. Give the dog a bone. Oh, it's a nine. So sixes hold, and we lose Blake Bone in 24th place. He's the first player eliminated post redraw. And Blake is the last player to receive $107,500, a money jump for the remaining players. Everyone's now locked up more than 123 grand. So action folded to Jerome Moreau after the under the gun raise from Tom Parsons, ace eight suited. And that looks like raise and take it. No, we've still got Barbero. Nacho's in the big blind, and he's going to defend. But Tom with the advantage as they go heads up to the flop. I am ridiculously excited for my boy, Tom, down to the final 23. Barbero does check. Now has the best hand, 71% on the flop. Because it is always coming seven. I think Tom has a really natural C bet here, guys. Um, although he um, doesn't have a made hand right now, obviously plenty of nice turns for him. Maybe like the nine of clubs. For example, plus of course you can get, you know, hands that have equity to fold. Hands like four or five might be tempted just to give up on the flop. For the most part, if you're going to size down, they're going to continue with gut shots. In fact, that's not the worst check raise combo. But every once in a while, you can deny some equity, and that's important. So, Tom Parsons' continuation bet of 350,000. Called by Nacho Barbero. The turn card is the Jack of Spades. Does give Tom a <laughs> gut shot straight draw. Yeah, and I mean, Nacho checks to him. Sorry, James, I was going to say, also, he is, of course, blocking 8-9, which is important. That's a combination your opponent might have here. So you can apply a lot of pressure to 7x, 3x, some of those gut shots I mentioned on the flop as well, 4, 5, 5, 6, that kind of a thing. I think you continue here pretty liberally. But uh, the check is also fine, of course. You're going to be beating some of those hands as well, going to the river. You don't necessarily need to turn your hand into a bluff. And Nacho Rivers' two pair here, Nick, is the strategy now for him to lead, or does he hope that Parsons fires a bet on the river no i think he absolutely has to lead here because there's just too many there's too many 10x combos that might slow on the turn there's some 7x combos that still might hero call there's you know even some ace highs if they're getting if they're feeling really really uh you know sticky in this situation i think checking is giving your opponent way too many ways to get off light you got to go ahead and bet some amount here and a snap fold i think tom plays his hand just fine here though Question from TB on Twitch. Where is the Daniel and Helmuth? Assuming he's referring to Daniel Negrano. Number one, neither player made the trip to the Bahamas. But number two, with 23 remaining of 1,014, there'll be no guarantee that they would still be in. Jerome Moreau opening to 200,000. A shove from Thomas Aishan. And Moreau has called. <coughs> And Moreau is the at-risk player here. Ace, jack against fours. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So <laughs> Aishen did not move all in. He re-raised to two million, leaving himself 285K behind. Moreau is now all in. And Aishen has to think about calling here. We referred to the pay jump a short while ago, so I'm guessing he's using his time bank cards to tank, but now <coughs> he has called it off. And Aishin is the at-risk player with fours. So they announced a newish rule, James, 
earlier in the day that you have to leave one big blind behind at least so that you can use your time banks. If right. you don't, you cannot tank. Right. Well, in this situation, it is a race, and it's a race that Aisha well, needs to win. But if he does win, one. if fours hold, Moreau is going to be left super short with one big blind. Like Scorpion versus Sub-Zero, one of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. Nine, six, five. Mm. Nine, nine is fine. Nine, six or five. Seven. Oh, nine, seven. <laughs> I'm fine with seven. Turn card. Here's a five, and nine, that does create three, some counterfeit eight. outs. Moreau can now hit an ace, jack, nine, or six to eliminate Aishen. If he can fade those cards, Thomas Aishen will double up. He gets the double, and that is going to leave Moreau ridiculously short. That's going to leave Moreau morose. Nice. Well, Moreau went out shortly after that, and then we got down to 16, which necessitated a redraw. We come back from the dinner break with the final two tables, continuing to play down to a single table on the penultimate day of the PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. So, we can see the stacks of all 16 remaining players. These are the shorties, no one shorter than Andre Bogian, who's playing eight big blinds. Pretty shallow on this half of the table. Sam Grafton nursing a 20 big blind stack right now. We are continuing at the 61-20 blind level. Still have 34 minutes to run on these blinds before the price of poker goes up. And these are the chip leaders as we return from break. Again, pretty shallow. The only player who has more than 50 big blinds right now is Nacho Barbero. He's got a stack of 10 million. He's playing 84 bigs. Max Menzel sitting inside the top five. Tom Parsons, another Platinum Pass winner in the top five right now. It's James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Scott Baumstein. Hey, guys. Great to be back. Scott, I'm sure you remember this day from 2019, the race to the final table. You secured yourself a seat at that FT. You came back for the final day, eventually finishing in fourth place. This is going to be a long day to get down to six and I guess from these players perspectives you've got to play the patience game yeah absolutely I mean I'm really excited to be here I remember what it felt like four years ago uh, I think it's going to take a little while we have some depth here um, amongst the top eight stacks but really important to position yourself to have some chips go into that final table I was the chip leader around this period of time but it's shallow enough that you know, Nacho is not going to want to take any big chances. If he loses it all into any one of these guys, he's just sort of one of the guys at that point. That, then he'd be in the middle of the pack. So he's going to be pretty wise uh, and picking his spots to leverage that stack. He's a great player. He's been around for, for a long time. And Nacho is going to be at the main feature table along with Platinum Pass winners Max Manzel, Tom Parsons, and Nicholas Toom, a.k.a. Flushy. Jeremy Osmus, awesome the shortest stack at this table with 13 bigs. A lot more chips on this table than the other table. Yeah, we've got several of the, the bigger stacks here. And Nacho is really in a great position here, having virtually double the next biggest stack. You know, these guys, these, you know, these 48 and 43 big blind stacks yeah. can't really afford to play back at him. So he's going to be able to exert a lot of pressure as these guys are jockeying to make this final table right now. Everyone's locked up 165 grand. And again, the money jumps are real. That's another thing which handcuffs the play right now. Obviously, once we get down to 10, there is a money jump with every single elimination. And when we get to tomorrow, we're looking at six-figure scores for everyone. Sorry, seven-figure scores for the top six. Let's get it the right way around. With four million up top and the trophy and the title, make sure you watch the final table tomorrow from 1 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central European time. Looks like the players have returned from the dinner break. 
And this is going to be a slightly longer session because we've got the end of level 28 to play, then we'll roll straight to level 29, then straight to level 30. So two and a half hours of potentially uninterrupted poker. To be honest, there should be an interruption during that time. I'd be very disappointed if we got through two and a half hours and didn't get to nine for the final redraw. Yep. Uh, we should certainly be close to it at a minimum. I mean, this is very exciting. I remember what it felt like four years ago. Truly, truly an honor to be part of it again. Would you rather have 84 big blinds at the table where all the chips are or 50 big blinds at the table full of short stacks? I guess I'd rather have 84 big blinds. Would you rather have 40 big blinds at the table where all the chips are, or 40 big blinds at the table where all the short stacks are. You probably, you'd, you'd rather be with the short stacks because if you're for, if you have 40 big blinds on this feature table here with Nacho, you're in the middle of the pack and you can't really do anything. But if you have the biggest stack with 40 big blinds, you can make these guys night pretty miserable. Well, I plan on making everyone's night miserable anyway. <laughs> if there's one thing we've seen from Nacho Barbero, uh, player with a lot of live results, especially on the LAPT, he knows how to wield that big stack. And certainly we saw him bullying on the bubble. And I imagine he will continue to do that as we play down to the final table here on the penultimate day. Yeah, we saw a big hand with him and Sam Grafton uh, was able to uh, maneuver really well. The fact that Sam is still in it here really is a testament to, to what a great player he is. He put in the... Uh, I think the five bet with uh, the ace three suited against yes. against Nacho's king king, and uh, five bet folded in a spot where, you know, very few are going to take or people are going to shove. But he, you know, was able to maneuver. He had the right hand. I talked to him at correctly. breakfast about that today, and he's like, "I had to do it. I would do it again." Yeah, he couldn't control himself. He had the right hand in the right spot. Nacho yeah. had him out chipped on the bubble. Is going to he's going to be you know pushing him around a lot there. He just happened to have it. So here we go, action has resumed. Sam is at the other table. Nacho on the feature table. Blinds are 60,000, 120,000 with a 120k big blind ante. And the action has been folded around to Flushy. Nicholas Toom, a platinum pass winner from Germany. If you're going to have a mustache like that and like dwell up, you know, just take a little time. You got to twist your mustache. Twist that tash. Probably goes through a lot of wax. Right? Ten breath says, here we go. Deliberate slow rolling. What? I don't think they know what slow rolling means. Anyway, onto the small blind. Tom Parsons in the small completes with king six of spades. Sounds fair. Max Menzel. See, they're going to check his option. Playing very cautious here. King six suited, small to big. In normal Ooh. poker tournament situations is oftentimes going to be a raise. But here we're going to be playing this as a call a lot because we don't want to bloat these pots, especially out of position. King Trey Deuce. So top pair for Tom, bottom pair for Max. Yeah, we're going to bet one big blind here and get a call from Menzel. Even though it's bottom pair, when you flop a pair, blind versus blind, heads up, and you're only seeing one big blind bet, way too strong to fold. We're going to have to see a turn. Nine of diamonds, not changed things. Parsons now an 88% favorite. 350. That's 350, so more than half pot on the turn. That's gonna be enough to take it down. Now with just bottom pair on the turn, with no draw facing a relatively big bet. You know what I've been really impressed about is that no one has, you know, everyone's been playing relatively snug, relatively cautious, getting blinded down. No one's done that thing where they play really cautious for a while and then just, like, lose their minds in a spot like that. Like, just jam bottom pair. Yeah. Because that makes me sad. 
when that yeah. happens. I mean, the punt is, uh, or le punt, as there, they call it in France. There has not <laughs> been a lot of le punts. Speaking of punts, I guess uh, Nacho won the first ever France poker series. This is actually quite incredible. So we know him from the LAPT, right? And he won two Latin American poker to the titles. He won them back to back. So Punta del Este in February of 2010 and Lima in June of 2010. In the middle, he goes over to France and wins a France poker series event in May of that year. I mean, what a ludicrous string of results. I didn't win my uh, pandemic two tables sit and go twice in a year. The heater is real. A lot of this stuff ends up coming in bunches. To be clear, you didn't win it once, right? I went a whole year without winning it, yes. But I won it once and then a year without. See, Nacho just gets to open from plus two with queen 10 off here. Um, because he has all the chips. So people are just like not going to. They're not going to be finding a lot of a lot of bluffs versus him. They're going to play pretty passively, and some of the hands that they might otherwise three better are going to be calls. Mm -hmm. He's got that look in his eyes, like like he wants to play this one though. Alexander Shilko facing a raise from Nacho Ibarbero as a king at least, but has folded. So Tom Parsons passes. Max Menzel with jack five, folds. Jeremy, Jeremy Osmus in the big blind with seven deuce offsuit. Yeah, do something with that, Osmus. All you can do is fold it. Thank you to Hushi for reminding me. We were talking about Nadia Magnus on the big game. Obviously, Nacho also played on the Poker Stars big game way back in the day. Yeah, I was sorry to see Nadia go outside of the t final two tables. Same. Sebastian Huber yeah. among the people watching our Platinum Pass winners on the rail. Somebody, uh, somebody that's, that's so I think I'm right in saying that it was in the Dare to Stream competition. Sebastian Huber was the winner and got the Team Pro contract. Yes. And then Flushy was the community winner and got the Platinum Pass. Yeah, which I guess community winner is just the guy they like raised up on the chair above their heads, like the people's champion. I don't expect people to be getting particularly out of line here. I think we're gonna see a lot of just like, people sort of playing what they're dealt. So Tom Parsons in the cutoff, 10-9 offsuit. Now when it folds to him here, he has the biggest stack. You know, once you get Nacho out of the way, some of these other bigger stacks can start to play a little, a little bit of poker. Osmus in the small with Jack Four. And Eduardo Pereira in the big blind with Queen Nine. Is it a good one? I didn't try it like Philia or something like this, maybe. That looks like a defend from Pereira, which will take us to the flop. Teddy, uh, raising 9-10 off is not getting out of line. It, that is a little bit out of line. It is out of line, sorry. <laughs> not extremely. I think he, yeah, he did have everyone covered behind him, so he is the, you know, effective biggest stack at that point once it, once it folds to him in the cutoff. So that makes it pretty reasonable. Away. 
Yes, Justin. Poker News has all the results so far, but Say if so. you post any of them in here that we haven't covered yet, good. you I will get banned. would be very surprised if Poker News were not now reporting in line with our delay. Doesn't doesn't matter, right? Don't You don't need it. Keep it out of the chat. Or else, or else we're going to take the ban hammer. That's right. Yeah, can confirm that Poker News are now reporting in line with our 30 minute integrity delay. So you won't find spoilers in their live updates. But a reminder that we currently don't have the functionality in the PokerStars live app to delay the info there. So if you try it looking at chip counts or players in the app, you may be exposed to spoilers. And again, to repeat what Joe just said, keep it out of our chat. Delay is approximately 30 minutes on the stream. <laughs> I think as the second biggest stack in the table here, we're going to see that open from Ace 8 offsuit. Actually, might be close to 35 minutes today. What's five minutes between friends? Really good spot for Alexander Shilko to just to be on uh, Nacho's left. So when Nacho folds hands, He's able to open hands like the ace-eight offsuit from early position. Pereira. Ace-deuce. And we're going to have to let this one go here in other spots. You know, when we're not uh, uh, nearing this final table, this is a hand we could consider, you know, Putting in some three bets here, maybe, but I, I, this is not going to be this is not going to be strong enough in this spot. Ben, we've asked on YouTube if cell phones are banned at the table. Yes, if you're at the feature table, or for that matter, the secondary table now, where we have the RFID technology, any electronic device, be it a smartphone, a tablet, headphones, a smartwatch, will be surrendered for the time you are playing at the table. James, try to take a dude's pacemaker. I can neither confirm nor deny <laughs> that story. <laughs> Kalima. <laughs> Anyone upset that we're missing the other 25k? question <laughs> mark. Yes, that is an electronic device. Thank you for your question. <laughs> I think there's a hundred you can jump in. That's true. Over, right? see it's over, right? No, there's a hundred. Like on this hand, I don't expect there to be a light open into well, yeah, Nacho's big blind here. No one open. Uh, two. Two. Someone opens, they're going to have a good hand here, especially the under the gun razor. Yeah. Uh, Sounds like the perfect time to light open if no one's expecting it. Yeah, they got like quite a few for that. So I, I bet they the old that. switcheroo. Yeah. If they haven't announced anything now, they'll probably keep it as a 100. Like, they probably have the interest, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I mean, HN's yeah, made it 250,000. thinking they're going to play, you know, certain people. They're, they're for sure going to play 100K. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> Not you. <laughs> um, I, sometimes, maybe. Tom in the small blind, 10 deuce of diamonds. And now Nacho in the big blind. Pocket eights. Ocho, ocho, por. I think we have a pretty easy defend here from the end of the gun open. If he has some weaker hands, he could like make it a million and make, uh, make each end's life pretty miserable. Nacho. But he gets to defend all sorts of things because he gets to push his opponents around a ton on later streets. Ibadra. So king high flop. Check, small bet, probably. Nacho has to take one off here. Gotti says they should take their watches too, their electronic devices. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> no. 
A mechanical watch has no electronic parts. Plus, James likes them. I did see another white dial Daytona at this feature table, as rocked by our PCA main event champion, Michelle Dutani. Is there a night Tona? No. <laughs> Two pair now. The only way Chen is going to make any more chips in this hand, maybe, is by checking back here. That's going to be pretty hard to do here in game. Would keep in some of Nacho's pocket pairs, some of his 7x. Distraction Chicken says a mechanical watch will still have a battery and is therefore somewhat electronic. Oh, God. No, a mechanical watch specifically does not have a battery. A quartz watch does have a battery. Thank you for your comment. A mechanical watch is either needs to be wound or is self-winding, an automatic watch, courtesy of the rotor. Anyone else want to try and be a know-it-all? Whoa, we. Nacho. Nacho used a time bank? Yeah. I thought he was folding his cards. I think we we got to let this one go here, Nacho, against the under the gun open. The king and the queen both hit your opponent very well here. It's going to be hard to hold on to another barrel in the river with a pair of eights. He's going to have some better hands here to call the king himself. Wow. wow. This is very liberal. Your opponent raised here under the gun into the chip leader. Bet twice. But he is not a believer. If you're a Shen, are you worried in any way about getting called twice? You should not. I mean, you're worried because you're out chipped and <laughs> don't want to bust in 16th. But he's just not, never losing. He's only losing to 7-7 seven, seven and 3-3. Three, three, and if Nacho's got it, he's got it. Because the only other hands that beat him are kings and queens, and we would have seen. Yeah, sorry, I just look at this up. from the perspective of a guy that didn't win a two table sit and go for over a year. 1.5. You also have, like, from Nacho's perspective, like, the chance that your opponent is bluffing you here right now right. is very low. We're at the final two tables, and it's against the, the only guy that can break him. Gotta let this one go here. Yeah, I mean, Nacho's gonna have to change his read, though. This board certainly didn't get any worse on the river. So is Nacho thinking of what sorts of hands ace jack ace 10 sixes 10 jack suited maybe you know the, the, there there aren't very many hands but yes those those are two good ones i think the main bluffs here that we get to the river that he barrels big on the turn are like yeah ace jack ace 10 10 jack suited i guess some suited hearts that fired again on the turn Like just his under the gun opening range to begin with into Nacho's big blind. Like I was saying before. It might not even card. contain an, an, yeah. like an ace 10 off, right? Right. Oh, I mean, probably contains an ace 10 off, but it's not going to contain like a lot of these really bad hands that, that might, well, might not contain jack nine suited, for example, which would be one of the other possible. Right, so hands. it's only the hands we just right. mentioned. Exactly. I mean, that's about it. Exactly. And like, like you said, sixes that he's turning into to a bluff here, that also pretty unlikely. There are not very many bluff hands. And even if he has one of those hands, I think he's oftentimes going to shut down into the chip leader here once he's called you twice. 
because he loses this 1.5, this extra 1.5 million, it puts him in a really bad position for the rest of the. There we go. Rest of the tournament. So Nacho spent a couple of time bank cards there making that decision, but reached the correct decision, which was to fold the eights. Three, really? <clears throat> I think you need to announce like the second time ten as well. No? 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 Well, we're going over to the secondary feature table. Kalev, all in with ace-king, called by Marcello Del Grosso with ace-deuce, but it is a domination situation in Kalev's favor, and he is a big favorite here to double up. DJ Kalev. So if Ace-King holds, Kalev survives. And there is now a very, very, very strong chance that that happens. He told us in his interview that he was going to zone out, go to the gym, eat breakfast, and then crush his opponents. Oh, and that will oh, see Del Grosso drawing dead on the turn. So Kalev hey? gets the sweat, double up, hey? crushed. And that will leave Marcello Del Grosso with less than 800k, so he becomes a short stack over at the other table. <coughs> this secondary feature table where all of these short stacks are. Del Grosso now super short. As we return to the main stage where there has been an under-the-gun raise from Alexander Shilko. He's made it 240K. Tom Parsons has re-raised to 375K. Oh! It's aces versus queens. Shilko with the aces, the platinum pass winner with the queens. And we see a queen folded behind him. But these are the kind of spots we're going to have to see in order to get some of the, you know, medium, bigger stacks to, to commit all their chips here. This is horrible news for Tom. How much is it? This? Especially since there's only one queen left in the deck. We've got a question being asked here. Implying that Aishin has a hand as well. King Jack. Oh, uh, come on. <laughs> yeah, we're not thinking about that here. I mean, uh, he might not have looked at his hand yet, so I, I guess better to ask the question first. Know where you're at. That's a fault. So action back on Shilko. Any well, chance we that he just calls here, Scott? I mean, this raise was pretty ridiculously small. It went 240 to 375. It, he raised to two big blinds and got re-raised an additional big blind here. <laughs> so that in and of itself potentially saves him. It makes the pot smaller and it's super fishy. Like when you go to, <laughs> when, you, when you're wow. literally clicked raise here, could potentially just peel and take one off and save himself if it was a, like a normal sized raise. Well, we are going to see a full bet from Shilko. Oh, I was thinking they were the, the, th the I was thinking the, it was the opposite. I was thinking the aces was the one who re-raised. That's all right. We've all done it. 1.3 million is the re-raise from Shilko. This is a bigger raise. Yeah. And now the fact that his raise was so small with the queens, it also makes it a little bit more complicated of the situation. Just a call. Well, at least he does that. So we've got to hope for like an ace or a king on the flop. Otherwise, Tom Parsons is going to get the rest in on the flop and it's going to be way, way, way behind. If we're rooting for Tom Parsons, we could also hope for a queen. The case queen. Correct. At least he just calls here, which I like. In that format. When you have I two mean, queens here, I don't think your opponent has two jacks making that huge raise. Yeah. So you're beating bluffs and you're losing to those aces and kings and and uh, there's some ace-king in there. I don't know, Scott. I kind of feel there's no escape now. It's going to be very difficult to escape now because you are now beating ace-king and you're thinking in the back of your mind, you're beating jacks and you're beating some of his bluffs, the ace-four, the ace-five, the ace-three. 
you're still only losing to those aces and kings that you were losing to pre-flop. It's going to be very difficult for Parsons to get away from this here. I mean, Shulko doesn't have to think that hard about a size that's going to get them all in by the river. <laughs> question is sort of to go big and target what Parsons has and target those jacks, queens, and kings, or to I was going to say a third of the pot is, is sufficient, probably. Yep. Like that. 800,000. Well, let's see how Tom Parsons responds to this continuation bet of 800,000. A pot of 3.7 million. I mean... You can't ever just get away from this. For I, I don't see him bet. folding for 800000 here, so his, his options are to, to call. I don't like going all in either. I mean, because if, if you go all in and get called, you are... Oh, no. all in and... He's ace never folding here. Yet. A call. And so Tom Parsons <laughs> is the at-risk <laughs> player. Tom Parsons is behind. And as you highlighted, Scott, Tom Parsons has one out. A queen was folded pre. He's got running hearts and some running straight chops. This is the biggest pot of the PSPC, 11.34 million red is sizing in the middle. As well, so I like min it as well. Yeah, we'll have a new chip, chip leader after this hand. That chip leader likely to be Alexander Shilko. He's an 85% favorite. Man, look at the look on Parsons' face. One time. It would be nice. Richie Robb invoking the one time. I think most of the rail is going to have to give Tom their one time if they want to spike the case queen. Or just the queen. Six of hearts. He'll take a heart on the turn. Give him the backdoor draw. Turn card is the five of spades, so no additional outs. Only one card saves this Platinum Pass winner. Tom Parsons needs the case queen on the river. Such a terrible feeling. It's an eight. Tom Parsons is eliminated. We are down to 15 players. He played a good game, and Tom Parsons has cash for $165,600 for an investment of $0. Shilko, open. giving him some consolation with the words, sick cooler. Yeah. Pretty unfortunate for him there to mm. run those queens into aces. Nothing. I think we probably should be just calling there on the flop, but I think he oftentimes gets stacked there by the river anyway. Yeah. I think once he jams on the flop, he's only getting called by those aces in king's hands that, that uh, Alexander was representing anyway. It stings right now, <laughs> but... Hopefully, in a few hours, maybe a couple of days, what he's accomplished will sink in. To make the last two tables of this huge 25K event to cash out for a huge sum of money. I don't think it stings. I think it kills. I think it's devastating. I think it's a miracle he's upright right now. All right. We got to laugh. We got to smile. Hopefully somebody just reminded him how much money he won on a free roll. It's hard. Once that money's banked, you're looking, you keep looking up, you're looking at that four million. Okay, so how many platinum pass winners remain? We've got Max Menzel and Nicholas Toom at the feature table. We've got Sam Grafton at the other table. Is that it? Just the three of them? So the Where were we at this point last time? We have more. Yeah. It was first and third place were platinum pass winners last time. I believe two made the final table, and as you highlighted, Scott, those Ramon, two ended up first and third. Ramon and Mark in third. Yes, but 
at this stage, I think we had more than just two Platinum Pass winners, or more than three still in the field. I'd have to go back and check. But crucially, the dream is still alive for those three players. So let's mm. focus on that. Let's focus on the positive as Pereira opens here with Queen-9 to run into the ace-king of Nacho Barbero. Not fair. Nacho on the button with real hand here. He's obviously going to come in for a three bet that's going to commit himself. I, I think Pereira's getting... This is a little out of line with 20 big blinds when you're the second shortest stack on the table from the hijack. With Queen nine suited. Well, he's going to get punished for it. Everybody, everybody can pressure him behind him. I can't tell you how many monster pre-flop hands Nacho has had in the last two hours of play. Ace king, ace jack, ace ten, pocket tens, pocket jacks, ace king, ace queen, just nuts. Pereira knows that Nacho could be light here. I don't think it matters. This has got to be his worst opening hand. He's going to have to let this one go. Um, the bet was 240. Ten bucks. Yeah. There was a ladder, by the way, with Tom Parsons going out in 16th. Everyone is now guaranteed <laughs> almost $200,000. The exact amount, 198800 I'm going to round it. I'm going to call it nearly 200K. Oh. Del Grasso all in and at risk. And behind, excuse me. Yeah. Marcello Del Grosso has run, run sixes into Queens. And he is a huge underdog. It's been a while since we've seen a brutal, brutal suck out. see the other folded hands. The flop has hey! a six on it. Wow. Mendoza outflops. Del Grosso takes the lead. Nine to one favorite. And again, we find ourselves in a situation where a player needs a queen. And there is a brutal, brutal suck out. Jack on the turn, two outs for Mendoza. Ace on the river, Barry Greenstein makes an appearance and Marcello Del Grosso doubles up. Better be lucky than be good. That old chestnut. Wait, what, is, what was that? It's better to be lucky than be good? That's incredible. It's a reasonable holding. <laughs> Anybody fold a six just to make it extra exciting? I'm going to write All that right. one down. It's right up there with, oh, you play that garbage when you have the same hand? <laughs> I do like that one. How we all chuckled. I thought we were going to make a run at a, at a mini bust-up bonanza that put a stop to things. I just felt like the suck out was coming. Del Grosso is running really well in his all ins. And he's been all in a bunch. We'll stay at the other table for the next hand. Zari opening with Jack 10. Del Grosso's out. Folded to Sam Grafton. 6 3 for the squid. He passes. Where's Noah? Three hit the 
There are so many more chips on the main main feature yeah. than on this one. The fact that I was looking at this, I'm like, wow, he's got to be one of the shorter stacks. I think he's second in chips with three and a half million here, and he would be like sixth on the, on the main table. <coughs> Raise and take it for Philippe Pizzari. One minute left on the clock before we go to the 100,000, 150,000 blind level. You can see uh, the nerves starting to get to people. They got to stand up in between hands. Stretch. Stretch and obviously crane their necks toward that other table. Well, look, yesterday was a really long day and a very emotional and mentally draining day as we played through the bubble. And even more stress today as we play down to the final table and we look at pay jumps for ludicrous sums of money. Del Grosso, Queen Four. Some folks with some nice words to say about Scott Baumstein here in the booth with us. Scott Baumstein has nice knees. Ooh. Someone said, is that a typo or is it Scott Blumstein? Okay. Neither. It's Scott Baumstein, the king of South Florida <laughs> poker. Don't you forget it. Needs to, get to take, need, need to take down some major MTTs in the north of the state so you can be the king of all Florida poker, Scott. We're gonna have a little break. I don't want to leave my uh, geographical run good zone. <laughs> We're inside that Bermuda Triangle over here in the Bahamas. <laughs> Is it wild that both the Marqueshas made it so deep in this event? Especially as they're not even related. They just share the same name. That's so insane. Um, Scott, you should better handle this question from Chucky Jones. How is this four million for first when the WPT Championship had three thousand six hundred nine entries and first was four point two milli? Well, uh, that was a ten k. Thank you. <laughs> it's amazing how an important component of the prize pool is the entry fee. Oh, are we, are we calling up? It's almost directly proportional. So yes, this being a 25K. As we check on the prize money, total prize pool in this event of nearly $25 million and 15.6 of that is still in play. Six figure scores right now, but when we get to six, we're looking at seven figure scores. From a million all the way up to four million for the winner, plus the trophy and the title that will be presented tomorrow. A reminder, Cards Up coverage of the final table starts at 1 p.m. ET. Friday being the 10th day of our stream schedule from here in the Bahamas. Five days of the PCA main event, five days of the PSPC. Can't believe, Joe, that it's almost at an end. Ah, uh, that's pretty optimistic. <laughs> Of course, once we are done in the Bahamas, we will be kicking off the 2023 season of the European Poker Tour. And in case you missed the announcement at the tail end of last year, all stops for EPG 2023 have been confirmed. Paris, Monte Carlo, Barcelona, Cyprus, and Prague, two of those brand new destinations. Never been to Paris before, first time in Cyprus, all the details, the full schedule at PokerStarsLive.com. Plus, of course, you'll find details about our regional tours as well. 
And yes, Paris is just a couple of weeks away. We hardly have any time off, any time to prepare before we go to the first EPT of the year. And we are going to be streaming five days of the main event. So our live coverage from Paris starts February the 20th, runs till February the 26th, cards up coverage of the EPT main event on Twitch and YouTube. And of course, last year we were able to provide you with live coverage from every single EPT. We're going to do the same in 2023. If you do enjoy our streams, if you've enjoyed our coverage from here in the Bahamas, but more importantly, if you enjoyed our coverage of EPT events in 2022, we would like you to consider voting for EPT Live as your fave live stream. Globalpokerindex.com slash awards. That's where you can vote in all of the fans' awards, the People's Choice Awards at the Global Poker Awards, Joe. Like, if you want to vote for Scott Baumstein for favorite poker personality, you can write his name in there. I don't think I win, but I think somebody I know was nominated for uh, best commentator. Best broadcaster, that's right, sitting directly to Scott's right in mind, James Hardigan. You can't vote for me. That is by a voting panel. Yes. But you can vote for the stream. I think you can also vote for trophies and photographs. And yes. Personality. Globalpokerindex.com slash awards if you want to have your say. And uh, I, I've reiterated that a vote for EPT Live is not just a vote for the commentators, obviously. It's a vote for everything you see in front of you. Everyone who participates in putting this together from the folks who put the tables together to the people who design that beautiful stage to put it together, to transporting it here. Something I haven't mentioned up until this point, the dealers, the floor staff, that's all a part of our production. It all works because of the team. Now, there's a couple of things I want to mention here. The first is that the clock is currently paused because they're just coloring up. So we're about to start level 29. In the meantime, check out what's happening to the front here, all these tables in action. This is a special event just for the Platinum Pass winners. So, sorry, Scott, you're missing out. You could be playing in this right now. I didn't even know this was happening. This first is the first time <laughs> hearing about it. This is the Nikhil Segal Invitational. Nikhil, of course, was a Platinum Pass winner in 2019, was given a second pass for 2023 because he's done such awesome work building a community of past winners and was providing a lot of tips and advice to the class of 2023. So he's back in the Bahamas. This event has been organized in his name. And hopefully these guys are enjoying themselves playing this low stakes tournament with some prizes added. The most important thing, Scott, is you're there at the party tomorrow night. I'll be there. Is it still a, a dress code suggested party? Um, I've forgotten about that because we are at the end of our stay here in the Bahamas. And, you know, clothing options are now running thin. Clothing is optional? No, I was just going to say the only shirt I have which is still clean is black. And I believe the dress code tomorrow is white. So I am going to be a contrarian and show up to a white-themed party in a black shirt. I saved my white linen shirt the entire week. And you know... You know that most of my white linen shirts have mustard on them from hot dogs. I should also highlight that there is a chance we don't get to go to the party. If I'm the used final to it. Table comes goes with the, the territory. So now we only have two chips in play. We've colored up the blues. We've got the green 25Ks, the white 100Ks. And we are now playing 100,000, 150,000 blinds. So we have a big small blind out there. It's two thirds of a big blind. It means there's a little bit extra to go after in these levels. It also means this is a level you can sort of never fold to your small blind if it's folded to you. I mean, I don't think they're going to turn people away, Joe, if they're not dressed in white. And that's why I said suggested. Yeah. H. Cohen asks, is James commenting from Brazil or did he travel to the Caribbean? I don't know why those are the only two options. I mean, I did travel to the Caribbean, but not from Brazil.
I've never been to Brazil. I'd like to go. Wow, quick call. Must be a king under there. Wow. So Pereira. I'm, I'm going to guess Nacho has a king. King of diamonds. Um, I'm trying to work out. I think I think Nacho may have actually. No, he has just called. You're right, Scott. I wondered if he'd actually re-raised to get Pereira all in. But we are going to go to the flop. I think he made a mistake. I mean, I think he meant to go all in, but that's not how it worked sorry, out for him. Sorry, sorry, well, sorry. now the chips are going in, surely. Anyway, two, there's no pay jump. In two more, yeah, there's no pay jump. There's no pay jump. Well, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I was, I saw that. You yeah, Nacho put his chips out in one motion, so it had to be just a call because he didn't put in enough for the raise. Now Pereira is all in, called by Nacho, and we fear that Pereira might be behind here. Nacho uh, could have him out kicked, and sure wow. enough, what he tables ace king. And again, we have an all-in player needing a queen. I can see why Barbero won three tournaments in a row, if this is typical for him. This is the worst hand he's opening, ace king, ace king suited. This is the big, uh, he said like near committing. Yeah, yeah, yeah especially were, against Nacho's were, open under the gun or not. No, Nacho's opening a ton. They, and you look at ace queen and you only have like, you have like yeah, yeah, 15 yeah, big exactly. lines or something. Exactly. Definitely yeah. unfortunate for Pereira. No, it's, yeah, I mean, nothing. Nacho running hotter and thicker down. than Nacho's. Yeah, and he has only a queen left. Eduardo Pereira is going to need a queen on the river, or we are down to 14 in the PSPC. The river card is an eight. Barbero holds, and Pereira is eliminated. So Pereira cashes out for nearly two hundred thousand dollars. I mean, people do that all the time. Fourteenth place will get the same. The guys at the table referencing no money jump. But Eduardo Pereira will exit the arena. And I think. We're going to need to bring a player from the other table to the main stage to keep the two tables balanced. But we have an all-in over here. Maybe that won't be necessary. Not unless there is another brutal, brutal suck out. John Stefano, all in with nines against the Jacks of James Mendoza. It is another domination situation. Mendoza. Looking for his jacks to hold. Di Stefano looking for a nine. Mendoza, the one that just lost with the pocket queens, right? Yes. The flop is ace eight tray. Running hearts would work for Di Stefano. Right now is immediate outs of the nine of spades and the nine of clubs. Ooh. Okay, picks up the flush draw. On the turn, a heart or a nine would see him survive. The river is the three of clubs. <laughs> and just like that, we are down to 13. <laughs> James... Sorry, John Di Stefano cashing out for $198,800. Another money jump. The player's now guaranteed the better part of a quarter of a million. <laughs> We're getting into it. We don't need to balance the tables because of that elimination. Correct. We have a table of seven and a table of six with 13 players left in the PSPC. When we get down to nine, we'll have the final redraw of the tournament and we will be down to nine. Special delivery. Ah, table. You got it, buddy. I'm not defending 8-3 off. You can take that out of my range of the defending. I would defend 8-3 right Don't so tell him, Nacho. Wow, it's crazy. How it's down to 13 and 25 gave me this. D25. I love it. D25. D25. Not just the 25 That's right. I mean, I gotta say, the fact that 
Jeremy Osmus is still in here is just wild. This guy is on the run of runs, but for several years now, he's he's been deep in everything. I mean, you can actually win this last turn. The, the main you event, can actually <laughs> win this. No, the main event, 9,000 players. What are the odds of you winning it? Yeah, yeah. And what that's what they're talking about, the fact that Jeremy yeah, Osmus cool. also made the final five table five of the World Series of Poker main event. Cool this one is it. Yeah, it's a cool concept, 500 qualifiers. Yeah, it's, it's I'm surprised good. they didn't do it at the beginning, like the last time. I think it's, it's like better. a main event for uh, some people who sat. What? I did the sat, so it's like a main event for me. If I win it, in terms of number of players to beat, you know? If you yeah. come from a sat, or whatever. Wow. What, what do you beat on the sat? What was your sat? You know, there was the steps, like 600 to 2700 yeah. to 25k. Oh, you did 600? And there was overlay on it, that's why we were all playing this. Like there was three pass offers on top. Queen three. The Jeremy Osmus. I mean, it's just anyway. done a magical job of laddering up. I would have played it anyway. Been sub 10 big blinds, what feels like hours. Now he's got five big blinds. <sighs> Flushy on the button playing a 16 big blind stack. We have a pay jump in two players for about $62,000. Flushy keeping that platinum pass dream alive. Oh, yes. It's 20 stack. Yeah. Yeah. I am looking for an exact count here as he's looking at his cards. I think in that case, you should look at your cards first. What in? Aichen shoving on Nicholas Tum. It's all into call. Tum's open was to 300,000. He's got ace four on the button. He's been shoved on by ace five. <laughs> This, I mean, he, he's not going to call with ace four here. Um, this is one of those spots he could have just shoved himself with the ace four, and ace, ace five would have folded. But you open yourself up to that when you when you min raise with the ace four, and, and you're going to get some of those similar types of hands to shove on you, which would fold if you shoved yourself. How is Marsh doing? He suck out, Peter. He suck out. Good time to suck out. He suck out again with king seven, queen seven against ace king. Yeah, and Osmus is going to need to pick up something here basically until his big blind. So he has yeah. three hands or two hands until his big blind. I think he's plus one here. He doesn't look as stressed or frustrated as I would look. I mean, he's pretty happy about the situation. He hasn't had chips in a while, and people are busting out around him. He's made 100,000 since I've been in the booth without playing a hand. Yeah, exactly. Young Martin Landau, look-alike Max Menzel has folded. Jeremy Osmus with king eight of hearts. Yeah, no, no question about it. Got to go. We have a, a slam dunk all in for his five big blinds here. And Jeremy's run really well in his all-ins also. It's not that he had a huge stack that blinded down this far. He's doubled up multiple times. Osmus all in for 875,000. Platinum pass winner, Nicholas Tum. Four deuce offsuit. So what does Nacho have? Tens, nines, jacks, queens. If Nacho's on the button, you know he's got a premium. It's it's almost like written into the rules of poker. Thumb's got a tough decision here with his four deuce offsuit. <laughs> oh. oh wow! The big blind here is going to have to be calling with it. Well. Oh, it what about the small blind? There's no question here. He's going with it, but now he's thinking if he should just call or raise to make sure the big blind folds. Well, I mean, Shilko has a shot covered. Exactly, I like just calling there for that reason. I think we should- Oh wow. my goodness. Shilko wakes up with ace king in the big blind. What? I think I in mean, the actual- Shilko is definitely going to raise here, which is a, does a huge favor for Osmus. And then I have no idea how each end is gonna react. 
Because it's, it's too deep for him just to rip it. I think you just fold, right, after Shilko raises depends and let Asmus go broke? Depends how much he makes it. And there's no question we're going to see a raise here. He's, he's just going jams. Yeah. Triangle time, and now it's all into call. It's gross. There's no way he's calling for nines in this spot. There's no way. Even though his nines are very strong here. Oh, what a hard No way he's calling, you're saying, but should he be calling? No, I mean, yeah. probably not. I think, you know, Shilko sort of has the hand where you expect him to have here, the ace-kings, the ace-queens, and you're just sort of flipping a lot. I would ask myself, is he doing this with two eights? No. No, I don't think Shilko would, would just rip here with two eights. Probably is he, just is he ripping with the hands that have nines crushed? Maybe some tens and jacks, maybe. Sure. Not aces and kings. So nines fold, and now Jeremy Osmus finds himself all in and dominated. King eight against ace king. Shilko got Tom Parsons. Looks like he's about to get Jeremy Osmus. Well, now Jeremy gets to triple if he gets there. Also, if they both called him, he couldn't have won with an eight or a king. So now his eight is live, and he's getting the triple up if he does get lucky here. That is the power of positive thinking, Scott Baumstein. I mean, Osmus runs pretty good in general. So he finds himself in the best case, worst case scenario. Yeah, he got the extra trips from the call. He got another hand that was also dominating him to fold in this spot. At least each end didn't raise isolate. If each end could have like min raised to 10 big blinds and it still would have gotten jammed on. So he could have lost more there. The flop is 10, six, deuce. This might finally be it. Yeah, Jeremy's going to need an eight or running straight cards. <laughs> and the nines are dead, so that's unlikely. Seven on the turn. Interesting card. He's going to need an eight or one of those two remaining nines. Not a club. Only one nine left in the deck, and only the eight of spades is live. So two cards, two outs. He doesn't hit. Again. And Jeremy Osmus is eliminated in 13th place. And the nines would have won there. But I think even if uh, Aichen had seen the ace-king, he still probably doesn't take the spot here. He doesn't want to flip at this stage of the tournament if he can help it. So Jeremy Osmus cashes for $238,700. 12th place pays the same. Then there is a jump to 300k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't feel like and we are the, now uh, I I meant to bring a player from the other table because we have five on the main stage and seven at the other table, and we should be playing two tables of six. Unless... <laughs> oh, no, don't. It seems like every time we come over here, they're just going tit for tat. I don't see any triangles right now. I do see Sam Grafton in the cutoff with eight, seven of spades. So they're going to hold the deal at the other table? Till There's a triangle. Come on. Sam Grafton <laughs> all in. There's nine big blinds here from the cutoff. A6. Nope. The Pedro Marques. He folds. Andre Bogian in the big blind. Uh -oh. Wants a count. No. Bogian's got, he's well. He's got another four under there if he's thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not a conventional flip, but it's probably a race. It's ace four, ace four of clubs. It's ace four for Bogian. Ace four of clubs, and at least Sam's got life cards here. It may be the time that all of the people who've been running hot and they're all ends, the time may have run out. Grafton's been all in, and I guess he's behind, but a statistical. I mean, yeah, when you jam like eight favorite. high and get called, this is a good spot. Because of the folded cards, Sam has the slight mathematical advantage right now. Boggy and officially ahead with ace high. Right, the we, saw, we saw an ace folded. Oh boy. Has a four on it, and Sam's Sam. going to be in the, in the lead now. Has the open ended straight draw. He's got jacks, eights, sevens, and sixes working for him. Again, 57%. A spade would be really sweaty. It's a three. So same outs for Sam, 13 of them. Jacks, eights, sevens, sixes. He needs to hit on the river. The five of spades is not enough. 
And Sam Grafton, having made a deep run in the PCA main event, finishes in 12th place in the PSPC. Ah, oh, you can hear it in his voice. The squid did Crushed. himself and Team Pokerstars Pro proud. $238,700. Yeah, we've had a stream of the bust outs of the high rollers who've been busting out lately. Lately, lately Fedor, Osmus, and now Grafton. They were all super short for a long, long time. Certainly feeling for our colleague, Sam Grafton, but this tournament always has been about the amateurs. And I don't know how many amateurs are left, but there are certainly plenty of lesser known people still alive. Well, there are certainly no novice poker players left, that's for sure, whether or not they are amateurs. So, Markish, <laughs> the top stack here, which is about 40 big blinds. That'll be good for third at the other table. And uh, once again, we do not have to balance. Yeah, the last four bust outs came in, in groups of twos at the same hand. Very strange. So two platinum pass holders remain. Both of them at the main feature table. Max Menzel and Nicholas Toom. Someone should let Squid know that he can jump in the platinum pass free roll right now. <laughs> I think he's going to see if registration's open in any of the high roller events that are running. I mean, he was a little bit knocked to miss out on the 250K from what I can understand. Asking, sorry if it's been asked, but it's the final six tomorrow. That is the plan. We do want to try and get down to six tonight. 1.34, 1 1.6, 1 1.3. And because of that flurry of eliminations, we are now playing slightly deeper than before. Well, this is right around when I said that I thought things would grind. Yeah, we halt. Worked our way up to a mighty 37 big blind average. Right, now we're getting deep again. Right. After that flurry of bust outs. 37 big blind average is deep? Deep relative to, to what it's been uh, all day, yeah. I guess I mean, everything's relative. Deep enough that people can start to lock it up again, that's all. I, th I think we got Nicholas Toom with 12 bigs. It's probably the shortest in the whole tournament. Yeah. Again, we highlight that 11th and 10th pay the same, so we're not on a money jump right now. Mendoza opening here with Jax. Jason Asher says, now we are in. And we're getting it in here. Changing oh, boy. Oh, yes. No, wow, the conservative just See? call. See, this is what we're talking about. They don't want to have to get it in here. Right, and they, they're not forced to. Yeah, he certainly could. I mean, the standard play would be to three-bet the ace-king suited there, and they would have gotten it in. Both players are better off not to have to do that here. By the way, someone on Twitch said uh, just because people are known doesn't mean they aren't crushers, and that's absolutely true, by the way. Look at Ramon from wow. last year. They still might get it in here. Yes, this is a <laughs> post-flop flip. Two overs and a flush draw versus the pair. The over pair specifically. And with the action check to him, James Mendoza. I still don't think they're going to get it in here. Continues for 300K. Pizarri could just call here. Actually, you yeah. are supposed to sort of just call here because his ace, his ace king high could be good independently of the fact that he has a flush draw. So we can call here and check and, and call most turns. 
But he's or he can the check raise. Given the way he just played it pre-flop, I probably would have played this as a check call on the flop. How much you have total guy? How much you playing? I think we're just going to call here in position with the two jacks. It's way too strong to fold, but if you get it in and get called, you're not going to be in good shape. Twenty-seven behind. I think I like just calling here and seeing a turn. Given his call from the small blind, I'd be concerned I was up against six six or three three. Oh, so there we go. In. Not too concerned. Yeah. All in and a call. And it is a post-flop flip. And Mendoza we... has got Pizzari covered. Pizzari is the at-risk player, and he's the player who needs to hit to survive. And when you jam and get called there, you're happy to see Ace-King of Diamonds. It could be a lot worse for Mendoza. Things are getting dramatic on the penultimate day of the PSPC as we play down to this final table. This is so huge. King on the turn. Pizzari takes the lead and now Mendoza is drawing to one out. The Jack of Hearts is his only life card. It's the three of spades on the river, and Pizzari doubles up, leaving Mendoza short with 565k. So, I think Doom no longer the shortest player in the tournament anymore. <laughs> yeah, another cooler, unfortunate. So That's what we've been seeing for these bust outs. As we see that double up for Pizzari, we do head back to the main feature table. I'm going to pick up the action in this hand. So it started with a raise from Alexander Shilko, called by Max Menzel on the button and by Nacho Barbero, in the big blind. Wow. Shilko continued flop, got a call from Menzel, Barbero folded. Shilko barreled the turn, Menzel called. We get to the river and Shilko has checked. Menzel with the best hand. Yeah, it looks like Shilko has just given up here on the river, especially since I know we have another ace king that just decided to just call pre-flop. This is exactly what we mentioned before when we, when we started this level. That we're going to see very conservative play. Even the ace kings don't want to come in for three bets. Everyone's playing very cautiously trying to make this final table. I think Menzo has a bet here, but it's not going to matter. Shilko is going to fold here. He's going to have to try to get value out of weaker aces because he has a very disguised ace king because he chose to just call pre flop. King high. King high. Wow, that's a very conservative check back here with ace king. <laughs> They're playing very cautiously. You know, Shilko could have had ace-queen or ace-jack or ace-nine, and ace-king would have been able to get value out of those hands, but he doesn't want to risk it here, risk getting check-raised. Psycho. A lot of comments out there about people being afraid to play, and I'm not going to freak out. I'm not going to feed the trolls that much, but I would like to reiterate just to have these players back so that you can't possibly know what it's like for playing for this much money for just about everyone still in this tournament, except for maybe Markish and Barbero. Well, back at the secondary feature table, it's triangle time once again. We did see James Mendoza lose a huge all-in, and now he's at risk, way behind. He's all-in with queen three, and Pedro Marques has got aces. And 
He's got his suits covered. Mendoza's getting unlucky. Give him a sweat at least. Not very likely. So this could all be over on the turn. Mendoza down to 2% now. And that will have him drawing dead on the turn. James Mendoza eliminated in 11th place and 10 players remain in the PSPC. Mendoza cashes for just over $300,000. Tenth place pays the same, but now there is a jump in prize money with every single elimination. Here we go, this is it. This is what we've all been waiting for this entire tournament. We're there. We are there, this is it. Top 10 payouts on the bubble of making the last table in this tournament. We'll have the redraw at nine. Every remaining player will take their seats around this table. We'll continue to play down to six tonight, and then the final six return tomorrow. Hopefully not in the dark. And we have a big pay jump here, like as Oh, a big pay jump and a big fat cooler. Uh, six. I mean, with this, okay. Shilko uh, you have like nine millions. has opened with Kings. And Menzel has three bet with Ace King. And this, uh, he's probably the only guy at the table. Him or Nacho is, is a guy who would not have three bet with the Ace King. You do not want to get in big confrontations when there are several way shorter stacks than you. Even with two Kings in this spot, I'm not going to be enthusiastic about getting it in here. Wow, what are you going to do now? You're in position. I think because we're in position, we can we can play this as a call here. Shilko has re-raised to 2.3 million. It's a sizable four bet. And I heard the word call from Max Menzel, which means we are going to the flop. Menzel does have the advantage of position, but he doesn't have the betting lead, and he doesn't have the best hand right now. Scott, talk to me. Are you calling here with the intention of getting away from it if you don't like the flop? Yes, you're basically calling here in position, trying to flop an ace or a king. Five million in the middle right now. Queen, Jack, four. So it is a gut shot for Menzel. If you're Shilko, you don't love this flop either because some of the hands you were worried about your opponent having are Queen, Queen, and Jack, Jack, or a or trapped aces, all of which now beat you. You're only beating Ace, King, which you block with two kings. You don't even think Ace, Queen gets here like this? Maybe Ace, Queen suited. Ace, Queen offsuit probably folds. Wow, yeah, he's Menzel's going to get a free card. He's worried about that. There is a world where he could bet him off of this. I don't know, with like a jam here, might not do it, but bet jam. But I think they're going to be happy <laughs> to see some turns. Five of diamonds on the turn. Shilko wasn't checking there as a trap. He's legitimately concerned that he does not have the best hand here. I mean, we've seen cooler after cooler. Who wouldn't be? One of the hands he's worried about is two aces that would have potentially just called as well. I, I can't remember the last time I saw this many coolers. This is insane. Can Shilko... I think we go... You have really to bet something bet. here, right? I think right? we go small bet here. I'd bet... Well, that's small. I, I would have bet... <laughs> I think I would have bet a million. Yeah, betting nothing is certainly small. I'm going to take... Uh, if, if I'm in his spot in position, I'm going to take this free card and try to get to showdown, try to hit a 10. Menzel does check behind. The board pairs on the river. Queen of Diamonds. Now he's losing to Ace Queen as well, but though Queen Queen is now less likely. Five million in the middle. No betting since before the flop. Might go check check again. Yeah, 
at this point, I wouldn't be worried about up against Jack-Jack or Queen-Queen. These hands probably would have bet the turn in position. And now Queen-Queen is very unlikely, given that we have the second queen out there. I think he did check. Or, he, oh no, he used a time extension. I don't see him bluffing this ace-king here. He's going to chop here sometimes against ace-king. Kings. Kings. Kings are good. Kings are good. Wrong hot, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Understatement of the day. Alexander Shilko <laughs> up over 13 and a half million playing 90 big blinds. He has to be all confused. That's the biggest number of big blinds we've seen in a while. Meanwhile, this is what Flushy was doing while that hand was playing out. Bit of exercise on the sidelines for Nicholas Toom. Seven push-ups, a new record. I'm a bit confused. By the way, guys, it's 10 left. So play really tight, OK? Because uh, one more is fine and say what you don't want to meet the final. Is it 10 already? All right, not sure. <laughs> So we have a big pay jump here from 300 to 450,000. It's a 50 percent increase in your pay, which is a huge jump proportionally from 11 to 10 or 10 to nine, rather. I'm I'm pretty face up, right? I mean, uh, ace king. When, when there's no showdown, I don't know. Any or ace deal? jack. Ace king or ace jack, right? Ace jack. I don't. One, one of those. <laughs> no, no way. If you have ace jack. You guess. You guess. Jack, Both you lose. No you way. You win 100% the river if you have ace jack there. What? You bet 100% the river if you have ace jack there. Yeah, We're going over to the secondary right? table. Going over to the other table. Yeah, and to the super net. He'll never put it in. He'll never put it in. Bomb, right? Again, immediately looking for that triangle. No one all in yet. Wow. But we have had the under the gun raise from Pizari, flattered by Marquesh in the small blind with eights. And it looks like these two players are going heads up to the flop. Respectful. Are both from Brazil? No. Nine, six, five. Well, they're going to check it down from here. No, the, 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 eights, the eights caught too much of a piece of that <laughs> to ever fold here for one bet. He has two eights, which is effectively second pair and could be good on its own. He also has a gut shot straight draw. How many blinds or how many do you know? Croaks, one of our mods on Twitch, says, I met Shilko in Prague. He was insanely nice, and I am now rooting for him. He does seem nice. I think this would have been a good spot for a lead with the two eights. It would have frozen your opponent even if they had over pair. Oh, he does get there on the river, makes a set of eights. And even though there's a four liner to a straight and a backdoor flush, I think we've got to go for some value here. Your opponent, Pizari, opening under the gun, unlikely to have a seven. And he's going to bet his turn flush draw there some, sometimes. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to lead something reasonable here. You could have a lot of missed draws yourself here. You could have missed clubs. It's a quick call. Glowingbird asks, how much is it for ninth? And Scott just referenced 300k for the next player out, 450k for ninth. As Pedro Marques wins this pot. Bosnian Bomber says another Portuguese champion <laughs> about to happen. Yeah, I mean, there's no possibility of anyone going back to back, but certainly there is the possibility of Portugal going back to back with Michel Dutani winning the PCA main event and Pedro Marques in a decent position with 10 players remaining in the PSPC. We've got a fun representation of countries.
So at the secondary feature table, we've got <coughs> Bulgaria, Brazil, Portugal, Austria, and I guess Marcello Del Grosso is representing two countries, right? He has an Italian passport, but he's kind of Canadian. And the USA, which had the biggest representation in this tournament, has no representatives left. That is very true. On the main stage, you've got a couple of Germans, an Argentinian, a Frenchman, and a player from Belarus. Boy, the Americans really showed it to the Euros, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Something, something, something variance. Did you say something, something, something arrogance? Variance. Oh, sorry. So I think we were almost 30% of the field. Didn't get anybody into the final table. Folds around to Pedro Marcus. Three Sharp says, if I remember earlier today, Marcus was all in and behind and got through. My guess is that lots of the people who are still alive in this event were all in and behind at some point. Right. To, to make a final table of a tournament in general, much less one that has over a thousand people in it, you're going to have to get pretty lucky along the way somewhere. Seeing the, the three bet from the ace head off in the small blind. Ace queen on the button. Has him well covered. I think we're just going to dunk it in. Dunk it in right here. Shut it down. Ace queen so strong. Dunk it like you would a McVitie's rich tea into a nice cup of brew. Oh my God. I, I mean, of all the dunk references you could make. from Marques and Bogian will give it up. I like that they're all around though. Ace eight offsuit. Pretty good pretty good hand to three bet from the small blind versus a button open. Sort of hard to play if we play it as a call, but it has good value. So we make that one of our three bet hands. Stephen A says, Stapes, can you shout out New Jersey? No. No, no, actually, I'm curious about this. I'm curious. About so a shout out. It's been a while since we've done a, a PCA, a PSPC. So a shout out would be like, yo, I want to I wanna give a shout out to all my friends in the state of New Jersey. Love the pizza, beautiful beaches, AC in the house. Trenton, what up? Hoboken, Jersey City, most populous state, densely populated state. Yeah, New Jersey, like that. I, I think that's a fair approximation of a shout out, yes. Oh yeah, no, I, I don't do that. I I remember you used to make that your home at one point. I did live in New Jersey briefly and I loved it. Jersey City. Right. right on the Jersey City Hoboken border. It was, it was perfect. There's a lot of hooping and hollering going on. That'll be the Platinum Pass when it's event. It's always the caddy swim that makes the most noise. Correct. Baseball was not invented in Hoboken, Grindosaurus Rex. <laughs> 
and now we are seeing some of these these tanks uh, as we are on this final table bubble. It is a hundred and fifty thousand dollar bubble here, so these guys sort of are benefited to take a little bit of extra time, hoping that somebody busts from the other table. I don't think he has any intention of calling here, even with ace three to a min raise in the big blind, but he's taking his time. A lot of people asking about hand-for-hand -hand play. Generally speaking, at this stage, the tournament run what they call soft hand-for-hand, -hand, which is that the TD is keeping an eye on the pace of play at both tables and is just making sure that they're both running at a relatively similar pace. And if there is, let's say, stalling at one table and the other table's playing more hands, they will stop play at the other table to allow it to catch up. It's a tight fold under the gun, five-handed with pocket fours there with, all, with chip, chip lead. I mean, he had all the chips. We're only five-handed. I think we can be opening virtually, I mean, like a lot of hands. Fours definitely well in there. This is going to be good enough to continue here, probably as a defend. Versus a button open. All right, how do you say that, Flapjack? Nine, seven, four, two clubs, pair of sevens per Pizarro, backdoor clubs. Yeah, Pizarro hit this flop pretty well. Pizarre, all in with the Spraggy. I think when you go all in here, you're just getting called by a nine. Sorry, just getting a question here from uh, Arnold Palmer <laughs> on the floor. This is James, we have a kid wanting to make a 350k bet on the double zero. You good with that? Give me the nod. <laughs> you got the nod. Casino manager approves. <laughs> Yeah, I was with you there, Scott. That kind of so felt like a... Right. The all-in hands that we're going to take, I mean, the hands like 10-jack overcards with a gut shot, maybe some flush draws that aren't necessarily the best hand there. But ace seven, middle pair with the top kicker. If you bet small, you might actually get some hands that you could beat to shove on you. When you just go all in like that, you probably fold out bottom pair, and you're just getting called by top pair. in full.
back. Staying with the action at the outer table right now. Bizarre out. Del Grosso won't be shoving this one. And looks like everything is back to normal. Apologies for the break in transmission. Would love to tell you what happened there, but internet in it. Even the encoding hated the chat pro comments. I'll try and channel my inner Mr. Futterman. <laughs> Gremlin. <laughs> Over to the blinds. I think we're going to play this as a raise because we have in the big blind this sort of a more middling stack on this table. We get to put a lot of pressure on them. Get him to fold more often than he would at other stages of the tournament. So I think we can just make this three big blinds here and and get the big blind to fold here a ton. Middling stack in a not middling hand. But no raise. Raise would have got it done, huh? Yeah, I mean, it would have gotten it done for against this hand, but it forces your opponent to, like, jam on you if they want to continue there a fair amount of the time, and they're just kind of a really tight jamming range. Boggy and flops a pair. Not a great one. But he's sort of wrapped around the three of hearts with a backdoor straight flush draw. So he's going to bet one big blind, hope to pick up some outs on the turn. <laughs> I like your optimism. He might just get it through here for one big blind. The, the bottom pair is not going to want to hold on here a lot of, very often. Uh, but I think Marquez is going to bet again if he picks up any sort of equity here. Might bet again even if he doesn't. Wow, we're not going to find out what happens if he doesn't. Yeah, that's definitely one of the cards that he does. Uh, Marquez has more aces in his range than ba Bagian does because Bagian closing the action pre-flop would have been more inclined to raise whereas Marquez is going to trap some of his aces pre-flop from the small blind. He also has more sets, more King Jack. He has a very big range advantage on this board because of the fact that he just limped in from the small blind versus the check back in the big blind. He has all the strong hands here. King Jack, Ace, Ace, Queen, Queen, 10, 10, Ace, 10, Ace, Queen. And Bogian doesn't have any of those hands. Cha-ching. Would have made him fold a 10 there as well. Markish picks not only picks up the pot, but does more damage to Bogian. I think it's time for us to return to the main feature table and check on what's happening there. Alexander Shilko appears to still have the chip lead, 95 big blinds. Nacho Barbero playing a very healthy 80 big blinds. The short stack is flushy. Platinum pass winner, Nicholas Toom playing 14 bigs, and the blinds going up inside of nine minutes. Is there some sort of implied strategy that can take place right now between Shilko and Barbero just sort of well, taking turn, no one say taking turns raising, but when one of them folds, the other one raises. Well, Shilko is in a much better seat because he has position on Nacho. So when not Nacho's now going to have to tone it down a little bit because he has someone covering him on his left. So it's just Shilko then, except for the few times that Barbero is going to be in position. Yeah, but they're five-handed, so the uh, position isn't that extreme. So uh, Shilko has it position three hands versus two hands, so sixty percent of the time. But they're also 
not better off to play big pots against each other. Neither of them right. are, are better off for that. Because if Nacho beats Shilko in one decent sized pot, he flips into being the chip lead. Bear Totem has just realized the current payout. Holy shite, 300K? Yep. <laughs> For 10th, by the way. Yeah, I think Nacho gets to bet here all the time. And like 9, 10, your gut shot is sometimes going to be a hand you get check raised with, but not here. I think he's just going to let this go. No heart in his hand. I think we're just going to fold to the tiny bet. Nope. We are going to see a turn. Take us to that turn, which <laughs> is the jack of clubs. Menzel with the straight. Picks up the nut straight. Nacho also has an eye in his hand, so Nacho picks up a draw. Gut shot here on the turn. Would chop the pot with a 10. The wickedly talented Adela Dezim. It's not going to be a good board for Nacho to barrel again. Because he was either up against a queen, an eight, or that jack hit his opponent in some way <laughs> to either make a straight or a pair of jacks a lot of the time. Does go with the small lead here. I think that's going to be the end of the hand for Nacho. Nacho likes to make you think it's not going to be the end of the hand. But that is Nacho Ibarro. And Zell adds 650k to his stack, hovering around the 45 big blind mark. Until the blinds go up in just over five minutes, we will roll straight into level 30, 100k, 200k. Mm. And that will put us at around a 30 big blind average once again. Action starts with Nacho Barbera. Yeah, no problem, Kings under the gun. Oh, <laughs> nice hand. It's easy. <laughs> They'll probably run into queens or something. When you are nacho. Oh, oh my god. Again, kings to ace king. Shilko on the not so great end of it this time. You, you don't want to be getting into massive hands against nacho here. I'd love to see just a, a just call in position here. Oh, no, we want an unnecessarily bloated yeah. pot. We want a pre-flop raising war, Scott. Give the people what they want. Big stack versus big stack carnage. You're in position. He Maybe if Bitcoin was doing better, James, we'd see a little bit more gambling here, but... He also disguises the strength of his hand by just calling. What does Adela Dezim do here? That's the fault. Okay. To him in the big blind with 6-4. I mean, and this just generally is not going to punish Shilko now unless the case king comes out. Thumb's going to think about it for 25 seconds and then fold. Lashé. Okay, so we are going heads up to the flop. You start like 10, 11? 11.5. 11.5? Thank you. <coughs> yeah. Low board, 9.74. Kings, 85% favorite. Well, we are going to see a turn here. I expect Nacho to bet, and Shilko's going to have to call at least one street. His ace king is going to be ahead of a lot of the hands that Nacho could have here. I think 
we have a clear just call here on the turn. I don't think we have any other option. I mean, on the flop. We go to the turn, which is the four of spades, pairs the board. It's going to be tough for Shilko to get away from this again, depending on what Nacho bets. Nacho could also play this as a check. Flushy's like, I folded 6 4. That's karma for stalling. <laughs> Just kidding. Goes for half pot here, 850,000. We all want to see Flushy Ladder. We all want to see him go deeper, make it to the final table, make it to the final six. I could potentially see another call here. Neither one of these guys has very many fours. His ace king for half pot certainly could be the best hand here. And he's underrepresented his hand pre-flop, and he's very aware of that. Meaning he's sort of stronger range-wise than he believes his opponent expects him to be. I think now on that jack of clubs in the river, we're not going to be calling another bet here. I expect Nacho to bet here, and, and I don't think Ace King can now call it. A lot of his bluff hands contained a jack. Also, now he's getting to the river as with one of his weaker holdings. Yeah, and this will go check, check. It does, in fact, go check, check. And another three million plus pot Thanks. shipped to Nacho. <laughs> he, he might have what? What, he, what he should have? What if he has backdoor stage but he has nothing? Ibarro. Oh, Chat pros like at the table. The He's calling range there. He has nine sevens. Shacks. He's shooting. Yeah. He's <coughs> expecting flop. <laughs> what are they oh, doing? Okay, sorry, I, I mean, he could have jacks there what if he, 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 he just called with Ace King. He could have just called with jacks as well. Know. You're right. You're right. He also lets his opponent, uh, you know, bluff some miss spades. You think he's gonna call he three millions with Ace Nine? I mean, I don't think he would have called anyway there with Ace King. Well, this lies with the last hand of the level. No break. Straight into level thirty. Ten eight got there too. He has to call ten eight suited. Right, you're right. I, I know. Didn't follow the action, so I shouldn't comment. I shouldn't comment. This deep he did he called he solver calls there ten eight suited. You don't gotta explain yourself, Nacho. I rather like check check all the bed fall the puke. The C. Wow, you are getting called. <laughs> what a life. What a wizard you are. You played the $20 tournament. You're a, you're a wizard. You're a, you're a <laughs> crazy wizard. You're playing great, man. That's nice. We do love the camaraderie. Thank you. Thank you. No, come back. <laughs> come back. No, my lucky dealer. No, don't. I'll go. Go back. How long? How long? I fall. I fall. Level 30 <laughs> has begun. Blinds are now 100,000, 200,000 with a 200k big blind ante. And that means Flushy's got fewer than 10 bigs now. An eight big blind stack. I believe you. Toma Ishan also pretty short with 15 big blinds. Yeah. Me, it's uh, the same but opposite. 8 3, 10 4. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <coughs> and Zell with pocket fives. Into Nacho. 
this is trickier than it than it appears to be. I would not be shocked if he's supposed to fold this hand. In fact, I think he probably is as interesting as that is. This is a limp. He goes for the he goes for the cutoff limp. Flushy smirking, and I can see why. Because of this ICM pressure and opening into Nacho's big stack in the small blind. Middle pairs underperform at final tables and in spots like this. Ooh. Very hard to realize. And we have not seen many opportunities to take a free flop. And Nacho gets to complete out of the small blind with the basically the worst hand in the deck with 3-2 offsuit. And the reason why is because he gets to over-realize on streets, meaning because he, he gets to leverage his stack on later streets and get these guys to fold a lot of hands and gets to win pots that he shouldn't. I want to thank BB on YouTube for explaining how the live chat works. If you say or ask something decent enough, they will say your name and answer your question or repeat what you said type thing. Yeah, and if you say something mean or arrogant, uh, you get banned. There is Alina and Cole, I think. For you, the shortcut. All okay. in and a call at the other table? I mean, it might be uh, all the cameras. I know. Well, if that is the case, we'll get over there. I want to see what happens here with this up and down draw. He's thinking he doesn't want to get raised. He doesn't want to put himself into a spot to bet and get blown off of this hand with big equity. So he does just decide to check because he can check and call. He's covered. I expect him to just call here. Try to make his hand, see a turn. Good. When he misses here, I think it's a good spot to lead a lot of turns. I think it's, this is a good spot to lead a lot of turns in general because he can't call big turn bets himself, but he does make the nuts here. Second nuts, effective wow. nuts. Fun times. He's not going to get really any action out of two fives here. I mean, in game, he probably decides to check and flow, and, and I, I imagine two fives is going to check back. But it is a pretty good spot to lead because your opponent is going to check back here a lot because that jack hits his sort of call flop calling range pretty well. Hits queen 10, 10 jack, 10 seven. It'll be pretty tough to get any value from pocket fives. Not from this exact holding. It's hard on that run out to get value from like a lot of the hands he could have had, like an eight. But we're have to we're gonna have to go for a bet here. We're only really losing to some backdoor spades. Bets the river four hundred thousand into one point two million. More love for Scott Baumstein in chat. It's not just his knees they like, also his ears. I like him for his brain. All of his physical attributes and mental attributes. You got a you got a compliment from Athanasios Polychronopoulos. 
watch, watching at home in the chat. Universally beloved player. Tom Polly. The wickedly talented Adela Dezim with pocket queens. By the way, I think Nacho is wrong. I don't think there was an all-in at the other table. <laughs> he was just messing with everybody. I mean, just because the cameras are at the table doesn't mean there's an all-in. We're filming that table the whole time. I think he just wanted everybody to fold that hand. He's like, fold, and you make the final table. There's an all-in over there. I mean, that's an angle I haven't really heard of before. Kilko, A7 suited in the bag. Probably just going to see a call, but and he could mix in some raises here. Oh, I know this one. Jason Slice says, what is Bruce Buffer's favorite drink garnish? It's mint. Oh, uh, incorrect, but at least you won't get sued. Queen nine six, top set for Menzel. He may have hit this flop a little bit too hard because I'm not sure how he gets value out of Shilko. But I now see. now I think something is happening at the other table. Yeah, I see some heads turning. Yeah, it's triangle time. And it looks like it's Marcello Del Grosso who's all in. <coughs> all in with 10-7. And called by Pedro Marquez, who's got Queen Jack. Yeah, he only had three big blinds here. Man, folding down the three big blinds and figuring that 10 high is the best you're going to get. <laughs> He's live. He is indeed. 35% is 35%. Ace, eight, three. Tens and sevens still working for Marcello Del Grosso. Not. Well, they only dropped by 10%. Four on the turn. Queen high is the best hand right now. Marcello Del Grosso needs to hit the river. Needs a 10 or a 7. The river is a deuce. And we're down to 9. Marcello Del Grosso is 10th place finisher in the PSPC. He receives $300,100. Everyone else gets the money jump. Now locks up at least 450 k But crucially, they make it to the final table. They're going to come to the main stage after the final redraw of the tournament. And the last semi-North American has been dispatched. Huge, huge moment for all these players. Now, that is not the end of play today. Remember, post the redraw. Once they've all taken their seats on the main stage, we will continue tonight playing down to six. We still have three more eliminations to go before day four is done. And the play will get a little faster. There's no more incentive to, to tank. I'm not sure how much faster just based on, you know, ICM. I, I know what Scott's saying, though. We did see a lot of taking the full <laughs> taking 30 the seconds to, to fold because sure. you're waiting the, for the action the, the folding time. will happen sooner absolutely i guess real decisions will not slow down at all right but we'll see more hands in the same amount of time and we won't keep having to go back and forth between tables that's right all the players will be at a single table they'll all be on the main stage playing under the lights watched on by the spectators on the rail yeah, yeah, yeah. And they will be assigned their seats very shortly. By the way, that hand at the feature table, Menzel 
continued the flop, got a fold from Shilko. So we still have two platinum pass winners, Max Manzel and Nicholas Toom, AKA Flushy. Flushy is short, he has eight big blinds. He may be one of, if not the shortest stack right now. Obviously we'll try and get chip counts of all the players as soon as possible. And what's been great to see, and I hopefully it'll be even better tomorrow, we are starting to see people on the rail watching the action. We are starting to see friends, family of some of these players come out to support them. I think the rail tomorrow is going to be pretty thick. Yeah, there isn't, there isn't a lot of places to sit up there. Sitting is killing us, Scott. Standing <laughs> is good. Is good for the body. So, Flushy is now guaranteed four hundred forty-nine thousand seven hundred dollars. He is one of the players who free rolled into this via a platinum pass. He's chatting on the rail with Mason Pie. The streamer who awarded him his platinum pass, or at least announced that he'd won. Mason, of course, made the money in the PSPC himself. Pretty cool. It's a nice moment. Just breathe for a couple of minutes. Of course, GJ Reggie was the other host of the Dare to Stream competition. I think I saw Georgina on the rail as well. Georgina had a win this week. Yeah, took down the uh, ladies event. One thing, just enjoy ladies it. event, the PCA. No worries, mate. All right, you deserve it. You deserve it. Can you believe this? Just, just for being a kind person. You got it. What a, what a really nice moment. Flushy is back. Flushy is, is here. Flushy's going to take his seat on the main stage in just a moment. wanted to paint them from 70 to 80k so badly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to overfold a ton. But also, um, with strong hands, I, I jammed a spin suited that one hand I got through. Yeah. And that's like, it's a good hand, but I see him. It's fine, I guess, but there were so many shorties on the other table, and here I was the only short stack with four big stacks that's like. So these are the stacks of the final nine. Note how we have two. Very short stacks. Peter Kalev with five big blinds and Flushy with eight big blinds. Nacho Barbero, the chip leader, with a 66 big blind stack, and we are still at the 100,000, 200,000 blind level. Still got 49 minutes on the clock. Going to take a five minute break for the redraw. Back soon with nine handed action from the PSPC. Mine's now 150,000, 300,000. He's gonna pass. Man. Round to Benny Spindler in the small blind. He's got Morning. Queen Jack. He shoves. I'm enjoying these Spindler Nazari battles, but it looks like they might be over. And called Nazari with Ace Jack. Spindler dominated. I think when he makes a face like that, his tell is that he doesn't like his hand. Not just a human calculator. Queen of diamonds, jack of hearts. <laughs> Korea has ace jack, ace of spades, jack of diamonds. Benny is the player at risk. Korea has him covered. And Korea's in the lead with ace of spades, jack of diamonds, over queen of diamonds, jack of hearts. Let's see the flop, please. Domination nation. King three, four, all spades. All spades, and Nazari has the ace of spades. Spindler now drawing super thin. Korea's in the lead. 
He's also the only player with a spade in his hand. He's got the ace of spades. Benny's looking for a non-spade queen at this point in time. Let's see in this case, card. you just hope you miss all together, right? You don't want to hit like the Turn is the 10. It's going to make things a little more interesting on the river. 10 of diamonds. Benny now is open-ended. It's always sweat. He's looking sweat. for a non-spade nine, an ace, or a non-spade queen. River card. The river card is a king pairing the board, and Benny Spindler is out in third place. Officially, Benny Spindler receives $1.1 million, or as it's listed on Hendon Mob, unknown player. <laughs> Rio's going to go first. I thought they'd done a good job of coloring up the chips, but oh man, what a chip lead, huh? Yeah, Nazari is stacks McNasty right now. And we're going to go to the first flop of heads up. Ace five for Nazari, Jack Deuce for Tony Gregg, and a king eight seven flop. King of diamonds. Tony's first. He's going to check. Seems like a pretty good board to bet with the ace of diamonds in your hand. Might have the best hand already. Lots of fun backdoor cards. You can also set up a double barrel if you whiff entirely. He's going to pass. Puri is going to take the pot. Jack Deuce to fold. You're getting there. There we go. See, look, you inspired them. There you go. He wants a sugar in Come on, Tony. You already won a million dollars. Tony's first. They both locked up 1.7 million, 3 million for the winner. He's going to raise, he's going to make it 650,000. 350,000 chip raised. As Nazari picks up ace 10. Maria is going to re-raise the two million straight. All in. All in. Tony Gray Whoa. shoving with queen seven. It's about eight point something, right? Two, seven four, point five, eight. Six, seven. Including the bet in front of him, it's very close to eight. Yeah, I call. Call. Ace 10 for Korea, Queen 7 for Tony. Tony feeling like it was time to take a stand. Will he double up or will it be G R E G G? Korea has him covered with the Ace of Clubs and the Ten of Diamonds. Dealer, let's see that flop, please. It's five, six, ten. Ten high flop. The five of clubs and the six of Nazari clubs. now an 84% favorite to win the PCA main event. Tony's going to be looking for a queen or some straight cards here. Let's see the turn. Turns the three of spades. Tony's picked up a gut shot straight draw to a four. Korea is still in the lead with the tens. Tony's oh, going to need man. a four or a queen in order to double through here. Unless there's a queen or a four on the river, this is over. The river card is a nine, and Puriat Nazari is a PCA champion. Takes down the event from January 2009. Tony Gregg the runner-up. And Tony Gregg will return to this final table. We will see him in later years on the tour, and particularly at this event. Porian Azari will now disappear forever. Exciting times in the Bahamas at the PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. Day four, the penultimate day continues.
We're down to a single table. We're down to nine. We play on until we're down to six. Still need three more eliminations. That might not take long. Look at the stacks. Kalev, five big blinds. Tum, eight big blinds. Aishen and Bogian bunched around the 20 big blind mark. And then we've got the bigger stacks of Barbero, Shilko, Markesh, and to a certain degree, Menzel playing 35 big blinds. We're at the 100K, 200K blind level right now with 49 minutes still remaining on this level and still remaining in the booth. It's me, James Hartigan, him, Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Scott Baumstein. Good to be here. And just talking to our colleagues, at the French station, our French commentators, Benny and you. The story about Thomas Aichen is that he's undertaken a challenge, which he started last year, to turn 10 euros into a million euros. Ha! Ah! And obviously... He ain't far off. He is close to achieving that objective. Apparently, he's already up to 400K. So if he makes it... To eighth place. Eighth or better, he's done it. Obviously, he could exceed that goal. No, he has margin. to hit a million even, or he loses. He <laughs> it's has not to start Brewster's over. millions, Joe. <laughs> yeah, we've got two really short stacks here in Calev and Thumb, so we could get down to seven very quickly if these guys don't win their all-in, and they're going to have to be all-in soon. And obviously we have reached the point where there is a pay jump with every single elimination now. And we are going to see the seat draw. And who's got position on who as it continues to get rowdy out in the Nikhil Segal Invitational, which is a special private game for the Platinum Pass winners. And I believe they've just made the money. It was a $50 buy-in. <laughs> Wasn't on the schedule. No shade. No shade, everybody. It's okay. A cash is a cash. Well, nobody's, nobody's running away with this. We've got the top three stacks. are all pretty even in Marquez, Shilko, and Barbero. And we always comment on this scott they've played an extended amount of time shorthanded and now suddenly you're playing nine-handed again yeah no more leg room <laughs> yeah they're all pretty upset about that i'm sure Getting everybody all squared up. Split the box. So it's going to be Barbero and Aishen in the blinds. Andre Bogien first to act. As we get cards in the air and resume the action here at the PSPC with nine players remaining from the starting field of 1,014. And away we go. It's hand 140 of the day. Bogian has folded under the gun. Max Menzel having a munch. Insanely talented or wickedly talented? Wickedly talented. Wickedly talented. The one. The only. Got all the short stacks behind us. Yeah. Or, and or bigger point. stacks behind us, but Queen Jack suited just a little too strong. Those royal flush hands want to come in for an open here. Tommy asks on Twitch if they're playing a day five. Yes, it is a five day event. So playing down to six tonight. The final six playing down to a winner tomorrow. Live cards up coverage starting at 1 p.m. Eastern at 7 p.m. Central European time. And firsthand, we're going to play somewhat normally, it feels like. Yeah, Menzel opening with the Queen Jack suited. Pizarri flatting in the hijack with Ace Jack suited. Nacho Barbero, the chip leader, 
Four, three of clubs in the small. Nacho. Likes to take his time on some of these trivial decisions. Ibarbara. It's a very surprising call here from the small blind. Does have the chip lead. But he's playing out of position with four high. Hey, get out of that low board coverage. They go high, he goes low. Aishen folds the big, so we go three way to the flop. And that flop is ace, nine, tray. So that is a pair of threes for Nacho, top pair for Pizarri, and the flush draw for Menzel. It hits everybody. Everybody caught a piece of it. And yeah, this is sort of why it's tricky for Nacho here. Nacho caught like a reasonable piece for his hand. Bottom pair, backdoor straight and flush draws. Menzel's going to have to continue here, rep represent having that ace being the early position opener, but he actually has the flush draw. And I think Pizarro is going to just call here. You're not going to want to raise and really just have a lot of the better hands continue against you. He is going for a raise. No, it's just a call. This is fine. So far, we're not off the rails. Nacho's going to have to fold. Watch out for them gum tells. Turns another three. Oh, no. <laughs> Nacho would have gotten oh, there. Oh, no. Punished them both. Nacho. Check, check. Wow. Board pair, board pair. This is a chop, okay. right? <laughs> Just kidding. Mm -hmm. Pizarri, good. I thought it said queen nine. That's oh, why. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I heard it too. Yeah. Yeah. Not queen nine, queen high. <laughs> so don't worry, Philippe. You win the pot, and Pizarri is up to 7.6 million. Just shy of 40 big blinds. is going to start on platinum pass winner Max Menzel. I don't expect any of the guys who aren't necessarily in those top three chip stacks to be getting out of line. I expect them just to be sort of playing what the dealer is giving them here. I mean, just going to play their, their hand strength. Like 4-3 suited. Except, I said except for those top three stacks. <laughs> I thought you said, oh, sorry, I thought you said those top three stacks. No, so the, those top three stacks can afford to put pressure on their opponents. They can afford to three bet light. They can afford to speculate like in spots like that. But the medium to shorter stacks are just going to wait for these good hands. And I don't expect anybody else to be getting particularly out of line. Four point two total with Dante. Nacho with 7-6 suited on the button, checking the stacks of the players in the blind, Aishin in the small, and Bogian in the big. And they have 17 and 18 big blinds. He's thinking, can he just go all in here? And the reason why he can do that with 7 high is because these guys have two tiny stacks behind them, 8 and 5 big blinds, so they can't call unless they have... Oh, oh boy! Did unless they have ace-king suited, that's a hand he can call oh, with. Bogian smiles. Makes the call. Ace-king suited certainly strong enough because Nacho's going to have a lot of the weaker aces and weaker kings. Look how happy Caleb is. <laughs> Five big blinds and he could potentially ladder if 7-6 cracks ace-king. I mean, when you have 7-6 of spades, this is the hand you want to be up against. Is the 7 always coming? For Nacho, it certainly seems that way today. I wouldn't want to be flipping against him. So Bogian is the favorite here. 58% and 
What year is it, Joe? The year of Romania. There's a six. Oh, it's right in the window. One diamond. <laughs> Not yours knows it. I take a five. <laughs> I take a five. Diamond. Diamond. You take a, you take anything. <laughs> Bogey looks crushed. Oh. I can chop oh. with a five now. Oh, He'll take a five. Even the straight is fine. Nacho is willing to concede. He's willing to take the chop. But no, it's two pair for Nacho Barbero, and Andre Bogian is eliminated in ninth place. Exits and cashes for $449,700. And that is a ladder for the two super short stacks. That is a pay jump for Peter Kalev and for Flushy. And the seven is always coming. Nacho Barbero, meanwhile, has extended his chip lead. He's now got more than 17 million. He's playing more than 85 big blinds. Kalev is loving it. Yeah, that really gives Nacho some separation from the pack here. And that's the official final table now. Down to eight players who've all now locked up 621 grand. And Yi Chen made his high watermark, his goal of $1 million. Good point. Ten to a million in a year. Look how easy it is. And Nacho is. I think. I mean, I'm not sure. Really going to want to play this out tonight. I hate to be a pedant, but it's what I do best. The challenge was in euros. Ten euros to a million euros. So actually, he's oh one more ladder. He needs to make seventh place to complete his challenge. Fair enough. Ten plus. Our here is about one to one now. Pretty close to it. So Shilko's opened under After the gun with Queen Ted suited. Kalev the shorty, <laughs> five big blinds he has. One, Ace, not, ten of clubs. I mean, you got to be pretty excited to get it in here. You just made another couple hundred grand. You got a suited big ace. Yeah, you are against an under the gun range. However, that under the gun stack was second in chips, so he could be like on, on the relatively wide side. It was one of the shorter stacks who was opening under the gun. I wouldn't be as thrilled to get in my ace-10 suited here. Well, Shilko has made the call. It is a domination situation. Kalev, near enough a 70% favorite to double up. Now look at Nicholas Toom's face. Flushy. Could potentially ladder if we see a little bit more sickness. Because Ace King, I, I puke if I miss one. <laughs> yeah. you, you too, right? Yeah. When you turn the car, okay, I go trust. It's quite the pose there. Wonder what he's thinking about. I would not snap call for sure. Yeah. Queens, hearts, yeah. really hard to Ace King Jacks. Really, really we're going to deal it out. Kalev at risk, but ahead right now. There's a queen on the flop. How? Domination rotation, and Shilko now a four to one favorite to eliminate EPT Prague finalist Peter Kalev. He has picked up a gut shot on the turn. An ace or a jack will save him. The river card is a four. Another KO. Back to back bust outs. Wow, Bogian out in ninth. Peter Kalev out in eighth. DJ Kalev. <laughs> these short stacks are getting punished, but Flushy is the recipient of all these bust outs. Recipient of some good luck here. Guaranteed $800,000 now. Wow. Kalev cashes for 621,300. We are one away from being down to the final six. One away from paying players. Seven-figure scores. Bam, 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 bam.
The next bust out will draw a line under day four. We will bag and tag. We will reset and come back for the fifth and final day of the PSPC. <laughs> Everything around it, you're just ready, yeah. Show me Flushy. Oh. He's an 800,000 heir. Really? He made a bankroll challenge, $10 to $1 million. He For being pay. a good really? dude on Twitch. Oh, my God. Wow. Guaranteed 800K. But if you can ladder one more spot, you come back for the final day, you're guaranteed a million dollars. You're still in contention for the top prizes. Yeah, if you're flushy here, everything is just gravy. Like, all you're thinking about is not going out next. You're so far the shortest stack. So you're just printing if anybody else does anything, and, and if anybody else gets their money in. So, Scott, I know you're Scott and you're not flushy, but if you're flushy, do you just, like, fold down so you're forced in in the big blind and just hope that there's a, another cooler? No, because these guys are going to be playing so carefully because right. of that stack. They're going to have to be... I mean, you're still trying to win to some extent. But you're going to have to pass on some marginal spots. Yeah, but it's worth... Uh, I was going to bottom time. Underlining what oh, you just I highlighted, say, I, I there is now a big discrepancy oh, because Nicholas Toombs got eight big blinds. The I next really shortest stack, Thomas Eichen, has 17 big over blinds. double him. So yeah. he's, he's going to have to get in his stack. He's got a better yeah. orbit yeah. or so. He's going to have to commit his chip somewhere. And Eichen's got the million Number euros two. now, too, right? Wow. Yes. Pedantry denied. I like the lead, though. It's good. You open again? You're not, you're not the, the blind. No, no, no. Oh, no. Sassi, I thought. You open? This is fine. Pocket queens for Pizarri. I mean, when you're running like Nacho has been, how do you fold anything? Puts the sunglasses on. He's certainly thinking about coming in here for a raise. He's not thinking about calling. So how bad of a spot are you in with queens? With so oh, many he's going for stacks. It. Yeah, he's, and he's <laughs> fourth in chips. This would be a disaster for him to go out next. Yeah. I imagine if I'm in his spot, I'd probably just call planning on going with most flops that don't contain an ace. The reason for that is your opponent's three betting range generally contains an ace in it. She went to the room to get some battery on the phone. They have ace, king, ace, queen for value, and they have some of their, you know, suited wheel aces or wheel aces, ace four, ace five, ace three as their bluffs. I'm all in. I gotta, I gotta respect going for it. I know it's an, could be an ICM blunder. You don't want to get in against Ace King there. You also want to potentially give your opponent the chance to, to bluff off into you. You do sort of give up some value though, right? That's that's the part maybe that I don't love. Right. Certainly let your opponent catch up when you let them see a flop, but. I think, think we generally get away from it when they, like, when that flop comes ace high there. And with that pot, it really bunches together those top four stacks and the bottom three this is going to be a big separation. Arboro oh, has made it 425,000. Ace King for Shilko on the button. I mean, I like how, just calling here. How many of these matchups have we seen? 
he had the same exact spot against Nacho with, with two tables left. And he just called on the button. And he's going to just call again here. Shoko's been pretty impressive. A uh, quick question from Twitty, who's on Twitch. Just came back. Did Nacho seriously call off 40 bigs with 6-7 suited? Or did you read this wrong? No. You read no. it wrong. He shoved on the two blinds. And it was from the like up. 17 big blinds. Yes. Which is totally reasonable, by the way, in his spot, covering both people with shorter stacks behind him. He had ace-king suited, but he would have had to fold ace-jack. So here we go. Pizarri. Oof. How did I know two queens were flopping, wow. though? How did I know? And Pizarri flops the nut flush draw. Yeah, Pizarri was getting a good price in the big blind after Shilko called on the button. Has flopped the nut flush draw. But right now, Nacho Barbero has 70% equity with trips. And Shilko might call one bet here as well after having just called pre-flop with ace-king. Man, poker is bananas. Yeah. I like him getting out of the way because he's in against the big blind as well. Who could have hit a piece of that? And did hit a piece of it. I think we're going to play this as just call at a position here. His ace high could be good in and of itself. Try to make a flush here. We don't want to bloat this pot. Out of position against the chip leader. We've got a bloater. Six of spades on the turn. Double paired board now. Uh, Great for chasing flushes, right? Yeah, double paired board. Means Pizarro is going to be drawing dead here. Bingo. Nacho can, can check back here a lot of the time, putting his opponent on flush draws. They're going to have to fold here to a bet. It's going to be tough for him to continue here in this spot, though, yes. though possible. He's getting out the chips to call, but I still think he's going to think about it. Drawing him a hand that if you get there might not be good anyway. And getting there is also just not that easy. But he's thinking his ace high could be good independently because Nacho can afford to put some pressure on him here. He does not want to make a flush. Best miss of his life, probably. Yeah, and now that he doesn't improve, he's not going to be able to call another bet here on the river. Reason for that is he shows up to the river with all sorts of better hands. Pizarri could have a queen himself. He could have a six. And because we get to the river with sort of our weakest hand at this point, which is our ace high flush draws, it's a very good hand to choose to fold and not try and hero call with. I think Nacho's going to bet pretty reasonable sizing, two-thirds pot, and hope he's up against a six. He's going to bet two and a half million, something in that in that range, something that would that a six would call. That's what he's going to be targeting here. And Pizarri can have a six because he's in the big blind. Nacho's announced his bet size. 4.5. 4 he went very big. Put him in a spot that even if he was up against the six, it would be hard for him to call. That's we cannot call full pot here. Absolutely not. Pizarri folds another massive pot for Nacho E. Barbaro. I got to read this comment from my girlfriend, by the way, who says, you have nachos and pizza at the final table. You, my dream come true. Oh. That's right. If that's what it takes to get you to tune in, various types of hot melted cheese. She probably never watches your work. Very, very rarely. <laughs> uh, let's see what it did to me. <laughs> She's probably trying to. It's just a poker hand, bro. Scope out the winner. <laughs> you just show on me. I didn't say anything. Sorry. Let's...
And Nacho once again reaching for chips. This time opening under the gun with King Jack off. And he just widens that chip lead, that last hand. He's going to keep putting that pressure on. And she'll go once again with a dominating hand. I think we're going to see a just call here again. King Quino dominates a lot of the hands that Nacho is going to be opening. But if he chooses to three bet with it, he's going to fold out a lot of the hands that he's dominating and keep in the hands that are dominating him. So we're going to see him continuing that just call strategy as he has been doing with his ace kings. Shilko did, in fact, just call action on Tomb in the big blind. He's got six big blinds here. He's wondering if he can peel with his hand. Maybe he's got something marginally good enough if he thinks he can shove here. What? I'm not really sure what. He was thinking if he can call here with the 9-7. Okay, I thought he was Some just looking at his cards for the first <laughs> time as they were counting him down. That makes more sense, what you said. And 9-7-0 plays pretty poorly. That's that raising the call. To the like flop, ace, queen, five. Three diamonds now for once. Nacho hasn't flopped the best hand, but you can see he's still a statistical still a favorite. favorite. <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 obviously, I don't know how this tournament's going to end. I don't know how long this is going to continue, but I have not seen something like this in a very long time. Nacho has been running crazy well. He's got a, a hand that's more comfortable than the king queen on this on this kind of board. Right. King queen just has second. The board's pair only going to get worse for king queen <clears throat> most of the time. Right. Nacho can keep barreling with his hand on this board and is going to sort of know where he's at. King queen is just going to sort of be guessing. But I imagine we're going to we're going to call one street here. A little bit too strong with king queen here. She'll go double checking. Still no diamond. Turn is a six. And I imagine Nacho is going to keep that pressure on, given what we've seen from him so far. Seems he's drawn a Broadway, he's drawn to a second nut flush draw. Seems likely. I think if he bets here, he's going to size up and go big. He's going to want to make sure to fold out a queen. An ace is going to be much harder to fold out because the aces that Shoko is calling with are going to be like ace queen. He could have ace king as he's proven, ace jack, ace ten. And I have to make a big bet. Yeah, and I think he was going, he was over betting the turn. He was betting 2.5 million into 2.2 million. So Nacho wins with the best hand. Nacho wins with the worst hand. Nacho, Nacho, Nacho. There's a lot of depth. And now with that pot, that brings Nacho to almost double. Second place in chips, who is Shilko. A lot of depth, almost seven layers. <laughs> that rail, filling in. That, that brings Nacho up to 94 big blinds when Shilko is in second with 59 big blinds. And a fairly silent rail, quite a tense moment right now. Usually the South Americans come in force. Maybe they'll be here tomorrow. That's what I would expect. Pedro Marques. Excuse me, not Pedro. Yes, Pedro Marques. There were two Marqueses in the tournament. We've been going <laughs> 11 hours. Uh, I think we're seeing a little bit of pause. That one. He's oh. definitely going with this one. Goodness. Nicholas Tomb, the only tomb in the tournament. Six big blinds. 
Facing a cutoff open. He's going all in, and, and Marcus is going to have to call. Well, size. actually, Toombs' inexperience slightly getting the better of him there. Yeah, he knows he's getting called either way. I think that that is going to be ruled as a call, though. It did not announce all in. He put in the stack of greens. The two motions, we'll see what the floor says. And obviously better just to stay silent here and let the floor make the ruling it's gonna make. He did like this, and he say all in. And the green, the green stack first. Yes, it was the green stack first. He knows. Yeah, he got a little too excited there. He went up to his rail before he was even all in. I mean, Sorry, but I don't know how many sorry, live tournaments Toombs played, but we've all done something like that sorry, before. And my sure. guess is it's probably sorry, it's probably less than anyone else at this table. Sure, and this might end up costing yeah, yeah, him significantly, this. depending on what this flop is. <laughs> oh, man, Nacho's going to come in, too, now with the A4. Wow, and then Nacho really well, calling wide here sorry, in the big sorry, blind. I mean, I didn't want to accept it. Oh, sorry. <sighs> I hope I don't hit any. King 7 5. <laughs> Ace Jack is ahead, but has missed entirely. Guess with 900k behind, he only has not even two thirds pot. Think we just go for it here. I think it's going to be very difficult for him to commit the rest of those chips having missed this. This is a weird situation. It's quite weird. <laughs> like, it's a little embarrassing. It, you're, you're nervous. You've also represented so much strength pre-flop. So you could like maybe fold out some fives or, you know, he has his ace. Nacho king, can just queens, swipe this pairs. pot for like a buck right now. Yeah, for 200K, he could, he could win this pot. Or for big blind is now, uh, yeah, 200. I don't know if people in chat are still confused at what happened. Two meant to go all in, but he didn't say all in, and he put in a stack of greens, which was not even enough for a call, I don't think. And so it was ruled a call. He tried to do it in two separate motions. Unfortunately, everyone knew what his intention was, but unfortunately, once you make that first motion with the stack of greens, it's going to be ruled a now call. Now he's going for now it. Now he's all in. Okay. 200K hey. board, let's go. <laughs> and Nacho well, now acting like he made a donation in the big blind instead of trying to run him down with eight high. <laughs> right. He got an extra 200K from Nacho, but he potentially cost himself the extra chips that he would have gotten so from, uh, now, from the all in with ace nine. I almost straight. But he didn't have to see a river, at least. There were some chop guards against the ace nine. So, congratulations, Flushy. You have it. You, Took part in a very memorable hand. He basically doubled up there without even having to show to see a river card. <laughs> I'm assuming that's the French on the rail singing for Thomas Echain, who achieved his objective of turning 10 euros into a million euros in less than a year. It does help when you have a massive score in a 25K. I don't know why people are still asking questions about what happened there. I think we covered it pretty succinctly. It happened. Misclicked. We're on to the next hand. And by the way, as I referenced earlier on, I love the fact that we are starting to see more of a rail around this table. I think, Joe, you're 100% right. I think it's going to be much bigger tomorrow. I love the fact that so many prominent members of the Twitch community are gathering to support Flushy. I mean, no offense to Flushy, this is just so unexpected, right? You just expect that maybe you're hoping for a min cash for one of your friends. And here they are, one spot away from becoming a millionaire. I don't think Nacho's going to be folding anything from the small blind in this spot. Tony on YouTube says, that's such a standard ruling, nobody should be confused. Tony, don't bring logic to the stream. I, under, I, think, it, <laughs> I think it is relatively confusing what happened. We've explained it, if, you know, and 
certainly I can understand from Tomb's perspective, we've all done something like that. I'm guessing I've played more live tournaments than Tomb has probably, and I've definitely done that. Potentially. But bless you for trying, Tony. You were not wrong, but I think you were misjudging the situation. We've got Barbero raising small to big and winning another pot. So Nacho's closing in on the 100 big blind mark now, Scott. He's got nearly 20 million chips. And he's going to... more, let's yeah, go, man. He's going to live by the sword and die by it. I think he's going to go for it here on this final table. <laughs> with this chip lead. Yeah, Patty giving the salute to the cameras. I, I'm going to come to your screen. You're fucking wrong. Give me a screen to it. Down to seven in the PSPC, playing to six tonight. They'll return tomorrow. Make sure you're with us from the start of play. We go live at 1 p.m. EST. That is 7 p.m. CET. And you're going to get to see every single hand of the final day, live and cards up on Twitch and YouTube. Nacho chuckling to himself as he just sees another opportunity to make more chips. Yeah, he's going to be opening from the button here with most of his hands, definitely with 10 8. He's, he's counting his stack. Arnold Palmer weighs in. I said, state your name during my wedding vows. We all make stupid mistakes under pressure. Wow, he just rips it. It's in the small binary 15. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Can't, right? Can't even call with ace queen. Well, you can certainly stop and think about it. He had. He was fifth. Yeah. In chips. 25 big blinds. So, because of that, I think we can think about calling with ace queen. Like, if, if we were second in chips or third in chips or maybe fourth in chips, we're not going to want to make that. Yeah, but then you see how Nacho runs. You get superstitious. You think 10 8 gets there, and then look like a dingus, and I've missed out on a million. Um, I think if, if he saw the cards, he probably doesn't want to take it there. If you're yeah. ace queen, you want to be dominating Nacho. You don't, you don't want to even take it there against live cards. And he certainly wants to wait until a player or two bust to ladder up a little bit there. I mean, at this rate, if this continues, Nacho could be coming into the final table tomorrow with a ludicrous advantage over the rest of the table. He's getting his opponents to fold a queen for 25 big blinds on his open shoves when he's doing it with offsuit 10 highs, then yes. Like, do we think Nacho's gonna open the queen 3-0 from the cutoff? I guess. I mean, if he's getting ace yeah. queen to fold, I mean, why, why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? He's just going to make his opponents have it, and ace-queen isn't strong enough. It's going to be strong enough for the short stacks, but not the medium stacks. That show opens in the cutoff. And gets... Menzel had a hand again in the small blind. Just deuces that time, but... Okay. Shilko... With we're going to defend here. Oh, no, it's he made it big. He made it 700,000. Went for 3.5x. So now we can fold here from the big blind. Just assumed he made it two big blinds. I don't, I don't love his open sizing because there's a 15 big blind stack behind him that can just jam on him. And the short stack in, in HN. There we go. Nacho crosses the 20 million mark. Nacho now has 100 bigs. Blinds going up in 14 minutes, by the way. So now, now Nacho has almost second to double what second place has. Can anyone stop Nacho? Ibarbaro. It remains to be seen. Near enough a two to one chip advantage over Alexander Shilko, who sits in second place on the leaderboard. Is there a break after this level? Yeah. I don't want it to break. 
I want this to keep going. Well, it will keep going till we're down to six, but we are going to have a 20 minute break at the end of this session. Why not? 10 8 offsuit. Let's do it again. I don't see him slowing down. How do you just not cackle? How do you just not. <laughs> Every time you do this. That would be an awesome addition. And yeah, this is, oh, small boy. Go on, Scott. I mean, I, I don't know what's going on here, man. I guess we can. You just fold everything. Don't even look. Yeah, this is a tough spot. It's going for a slightly big open two and a half X from the small blind. The only guy that has you covered out of position and he's going to keep pressuring everybody else. I think we can just fold this here. Yeah. Calling is OK, too. And we've got Pedro Marcus in the big blind with ace nine. 300,000 to call. He's closing the action. Decent enough hand, I think. I think we can call here. Uh, I don't blame him. Yeah, I don't blame him either. It's going to be massive amounts of I ICM pressure on later streets. Even if he flops an ace, he could be pushed off of it potentially. The flop is Jack Jack six like this. Not just going to bet, and that'll be the end of the hand, probably. Just surprising. 10 on the turn. Nacho with the best hand right now. Really the perfect card for him. <laughs> Makes the best hand and has a hand, a turn card that gives his opponent a big draw to have outs and continue with. Nacho has an easy just call here in position. Raising wouldn't make any sense. Either his 10 here is good or he's up against a jack and he's drawing dead to it. Three hundred thousand was yeah. the initial bet. Eight hundred, five hundred more. The raise is to 800. And Shilko is like, I know what you're doing. He's probably raising to check back river if he does get called here. I mean, also gets the fold out hands exactly like this one, right? They have like a decent amount of equi equity against him. I'm not. This is a tough spot for Shilko. Oh, wow. I have some I of that now, Joe. I was about to say he has all three options at his disposal here. Doesn't think, he thinks Nacho would have bet the jack on the flop. Now Nacho can't continue, right? Does look bluffy, though, because if, you, if you're in Chilko's shoes and you do have a jack here, a hand like ace jack, I don't raise it back to you. Probably oh just my call. God. Can you imagine if Nacho, like, shoved on him? I mean, Nacho might think he has the best hand for that reason. It looks bluffy. His most like Shilko's most likely jack is ace jack, and he probably would have just called with it. Nice hand, nice hand indeed. Shilko had enough. Yeah, I'd be smiling too, kid. Yes. Ah. What? I know, but like, he tried. You can never blame a guy, a guy from trying. So they say. <laughs> Hopefully, the guys who return tomorrow will like coordinate on the outfit front. The gray hoodie is kind of like, need a bit more variety. Maybe Nacho can go full Fuzzy Dunlop tomorrow. Action folded to Max Menzel in the cutoff. It's 
Pud Smasher uh, echoing something Scott said earlier, and that's why you just call with the 10. Those yeah, I think he had a pretty easy call there in position. I wonder if that'll be a turning point for him to maybe slow down just a little bit. I think things were running so well for Nacho that he just sort of is keeping his, his foot on the gas. Seven Raise and take it from Marcus. Meanwhile, we had the button there, open folded ace nine offsuit. Yeah. Very strong hand to open fold from the button when it folds to you with only 25 big blinds. Ignacio Castiglione on YouTube asked, does anyone know <laughs> Shilko's age? Looks, yeah. Looks pretty young. Someone. <laughs> Thank you for your question. I would guess he's, he looks like he's about 25. 24. Show first to act, nine, four of hearts. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is just rude. <laughs> He's now disrespecting it is the very game. Di it, is, it is very disrespectful to all of his opponents. Nine, four under the gun open. We actually have a policy here where you're not allowed to take all the fully loaded nachos just for yourself. You actually have to, you have to share them. Well, Pizarri is going to call out the small blind. Flushy folds the big blind, so we are heads up to the flop. It is ace, king, seven. Second pair for Pizarri, who's a 93% favorite, playing in flow. Checks to Barbero. He's betting here when the ace and the king flops after his under the gun open. The back door flush draw. You do have to take into account that the small blind calling range against your under the gun open is going to be pretty tight and it's going to have the ace, the king, or pocket pairs. So check, bet, call, 400,000. You have to shut down here if you're Nacho. I think Bizarre, he can have ace-king here. He can have ace-queen. He can have king-queen. He can have some flushes. Certainly, basically all of his ace-high flushes. Well, Pizarri checks a second time, and Nacho does indeed slow down. Checks behind. Deuce on the river. Imagine this goes check-check here as well. Don't like betting here if I'm Bizarre. Don't think you get weaker hands here to call. Bizarre. Up to 9.2 million. Fourth in chips. Hovering around the 45 big blind mark. Nicholas Toom, the platinum pass winner, still the shortest stack with nine bigs. Blinds going up in four and a half minutes. Next hand could be the last hand of the level. What sort of fresh hell will Nacho open this hand? Oh, luckily he's in the big blind. Yeah. So Menzel folds sixes. Snap, fold sixes. And the reason for that, I mean, well, he's, he also folded ace nine on the button. Because Nacho has pre-flop position. If he's going to call with everything and, and punish you a lot of the time. I don't like this call oh, from Bizarre no. on the button. You've got Nacho in the big blind. You've got the other big stack who opened. Nacho's and, just going to squeeze the. Yeah, if anyone squeezes you, you get squeezed right out of it here with eight seven suited. 
So Shilko made it 400k. Pizzari calling with the suited connectors on the button. And Nacho, 9-7 of diamonds in the big. Does he come along for the ride or does he get squeezy? He's not folding. I'll Certainly. tell you that much. Yes, <laughs> yes. that folding. much we know. Have you ever tried to fold a Nacho? It's impossible. He's going to call the 400k and we're going three way to the flop. And wow, those nines are in good, in good shape against these two hands. Oh, Except wow. Nacho Barbero is running Are hotter you kidding me? than a pickled jalapeno. And everybody flops a piece of that. Two nines, with the, pair of nines with the open-ended blocking the straight that Nacho has. Even Pizarri has bottom pair of straight draw, backdoor flush draw. Best hand, best draw. And he's leading, and he's leading right into the field. Ten star hand. What a ridiculous flop. Nacho with the straight, with a street flash draw. Shilko feeling pretty good about nines right now. And I gotta tell you, I love this lead here from Nacho. And that's because a lot, when a lot of his opponents flop a 10 or a jack, they're gonna play pot control and check back because they don't want to play a boat bloated pot. But now Nacho can just lead, lead, lead. Shilko has to at least call here. Pizarri. Has a pair of eights, has a draw of his own. That's only 6%, by the yeah, way. He gets out of the way. It's hard to overcome. Not only does Nacho flop the straight, he's an open-ended straight flush draw Correct. to go along with it. Street flash poker! And we're going to the turn. Deuce of hearts. Oh, my. And Nacho's going to lead again, and it's going to be tough for Shilko to fold to another bet here. Hey, Shen, taking a little nap there. I think the end of this hand might wake him up. And why? Why is it the two biggest stacks? Chances are, when this hand ends, players will be going on a 20-minute break. Yeah, and I think Nacho's going to go relatively big. Hope his opponent is on like a hand like Jack Queen, Jack King, Ace Jack. Yeah, he's betting two million or close to it. 1.8. Looks like 1.8 to me. Not 1.7, 1.8. For 1.7, I call you. This is a tough spot here for two nines. I do think Shilko has a, has like a fair bit of better hands he can call with here. Wow, good, good we. Fold. Very good fold. Well. Looks like we're going to squeeze in one more hand before the break. Barbero back up to 19 and a half million. Yeah, another monster hand for Nacho e Barbero. This hand will end the session. We'll come back from break at the new blind level, continuing to play down to six. Action's going to start on Max Menzel. He folds. Shilko's out. Is the break? Everyone a little bit confused about what's going on in the Platinum Pass Winners Tournament. The $50 tournament. So Pizarri is raising the cutoff to 400,000 with King Jack. Barbero has folded the small. Oh, totally oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Thomas Aishen has king eight in the big blind. Wait, Nacho's out? Yep. He's got about 13 and a half big blinds. I think it's just strong enough here to defend. Aishen does defend. Man, a king is going to be a bad, bad card. We are going heads up to the flop. And it is a king wow. high flop. We might not be coming back from break because it's going to be tough for him to get away from this for only 12 big blinds behind. Quick continuation bet from Pizarri, 400,000. I think we should be just calling here. 
Because if we go all in, we're just going to generally get called by bigger kings. I mean, the last punch of hands, but nacho, 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 pizza. I'd be check calling. I'd be calling here and check calling off on most turns. Allow your opponent to bluff and get in. Oh, that's a check raise. Aishen's just made it a million. I mean, Pizarro cannot be. I mean, I mean, he's mad. I mean, he's going with his hand here. It, this is committing, right, Scott? I mean, Pizarro can now shove, knowing that Aishen will call it off. There is the shove. Pizarro moves all in. Can't imagine Aishen's folding here. I would have just called if I were him and check called turn. All in to call. He did jam very quickly. You've got to be asking yourself, what are the hands he's going to be having here? Most of the hands that Pizarro is going to show up with here are going to be bigger kings than his. And there's some straight draw, some six, seven suited, and that's basically it he just jammed so quickly even if he had like ace three suited ace two suited he would have thought about it a little a little more what a terrible terrible spot for a Shen. he calls it off and here we go i Shen all in and way behind and if king jack holds here we will be done for the day Thomas Aishen will exit in seventh place. We'll have six millionaires, and they'll return for the fifth and final day of the PSPC. Manzel went on break already. He's going to be come back, and everyone's going to be gone. <laughs> we have got two platinum pass winners who are on the verge of becoming millionaires. Man, oh, man. These two cards are worth so much money. Aishen needs an eight. It's a nine on the turn. Only choice. an eight on the river saves him. A ten. It's over. Toma Aishen from France is eliminated in seventh place. He cashes for just over $800,000. Congratulations to the final six. They have all locked up a seven-figure score, and they are coming back tomorrow to play for the PSPC trophy and title and $4 million first prize. Nacho Barbero, millionaire. Philippe Pizarri, millionaire. Alexander Shilko, millionaire. Pedro Marques, millionaire. Max Menzel, millionaire. Nicholas Toom, Millionaire! That's right, our two Platinum Pass winners, Max Menzel, Nicola Toom, have locked up a milli, and they are coming back for the final day. Just like in 2019, there will be two Platinum Pass winners at the final table. Hell yes! <laughs> it was Philippe Pizarre who got us down to six. And that was the last hand of a level. So actually, we're going to be starting with the first hand of level 31 at the new blind level, 125-250. Beautiful. And we are going to have a chip leader with 77 big blinds. Couple of players around the 50 big blind mark. Pedro Marques with 40 bigs. Max Menzel with around 20 bigs. And Flushy, the shorty, with seven big blinds. Yeah, Flushy made a lot of money just by folding the last level or so. Several pay jumps here. He's got to be thrilled to have laddered his way up to a million here. Flushy and his partner Timo celebrate. He has made the final table of the PSPC. He's guaranteed at least a million. <laughs> and now, for the last time, these guys get to bag and tag. 
what a day they've got ahead of them tomorrow. Who is going to follow in Ramon's footsteps and become the champion of the second edition of the PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship? I wonder if Nacho will be able to continue this momentum. Nicholas Toom still making things pretty dangerous for everyone else at the table. Wow. So much excitement, so much drama, so much emotion today. We started with 52 and we're down to six. Action will resume tomorrow, Friday, February 3rd. We are live at 1 p.m. Eastern time. That is 7 p.m. Central European time. Every day. Scott, you're going to be back with us tomorrow. and I am excited to see how all of this turns out, to see how Nacho continues that pressure, to see if that continues to work out for him, or sometimes those things can change in a hurry. Obviously, we'll have Griffin Bencher, Maria Ho and Nick Walsh, part of the broadcast team tomorrow. Sam Grafton, 12th place finisher in the PSPC, should also be stopping by. Okay. One more day of poker. Five more eliminations to go, and we will present that trophy. We will pay someone just over $4 million in prize money. By the way, quick happy birthday to Paul Action Jackson. Hey, happy birthday, Pablo. 43 today. <laughs> Spare a thought for Tomar Ishan missing out on the final table. Obviously, he's $800,000 richer. He completed his challenge. But it's still a tough beat to take right now. Yeah, he just lost $3.2 million. Yeah, it's always hard to, to walk away with all that money up top. Did Menzel but come back? Does he know he's a millionaire? Oh, he hasn't come back yet. Someone get him on the WhatsApps. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the stacks of the players who will return for the fifth and final day. Nacho Barbero, the chip leader, ahead of Alexander Shilko, Philippe Pizzari, and Pedro Marques. Our two Platinum Pass winners come into play tomorrow as the shortest stacks. Max Menzel with 20 big blinds. Nicola Toom, a.k.a. Flushy, just seven big blinds, kicking off the 125 250 blind level. Level 31 will start tomorrow. And this is what they are playing for. Everyone guaranteed a million dollars. Next pay jump, 1.25 million, one and a half million for fourth, nearly two million for third, 2.5 million for the runner up, and four million for the winner. Obviously, you want to know more about the players who've cashed in this event. If you want to know more about the players who will be coming back tomorrow to compete at the final table, you should check out the words of Jack Stanton and Howard Swains on the PokerStars blog. They've got updates and stories from the PSPC and all of PCA 2023. We are back tomorrow for our final day of PSPC live coverage. Join us at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central European Time, for the final table of the PSPC. For now, from Joe Stapleton, Scott Baumstein, Nick Walsh, Griffin Benger, Amaria Ho, I'm James Hartigan saying good night from the Bahamas. My mind can be a thousand shades of grey Spiraling in circles going round, round, round I finally make my body obey I'm charging at my aim is going down, down, down Heart racing I'm breaking